Yeah. No way. You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning and welcome to you. Welcome to Bassmaster Live, a big day, the start of the season 2023 with the Bassmaster Elite Series. And this is the Site One Bassmaster Elite at the Big O Lake Okeechobee, America's original big bass destination. And still it has proven over the last two days to be a big bass destination. Let's take a look at our leaderboard after two days of fishing. It's South Carolina's Brandon Cobb atop the leaderboard. Tyler Rivette a couple of pounds behind him, and those two separated by a good margin from the rest of our top ten today. But things can be volatile here. Things can always change, as they do in every one of our tournaments we cover here. But what a treat to be uh, starting out with much, much, uh, much of the country with a lot of winter piled up ahead of them to come down here and see things like this from the day two way and there's Bill Lowen, the veteran of the Bassmaster Elite Series making a big move. A rookie Cooper Gallant from Canada showing up big time with 21 pounds the first day, 19 on the second day. The famous Gerald Swindle in there. Jake Whitaker also moving up from outside the top 10 into that uh, into that number with a great, great day. Two big ones. Big bass we saw all through the way in and all day long yesterday, Mark Zona. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. And if you looked at that leaderboard over a five pound average, Looking at about, well, call it 55 pounds to lead this tournament yesterday after the weigh-in, which some anglers in the field thought <laughs> over four days it would take that. So Lake Okeechobee, like always, every time the Bassmaster Elite Series comes to Lake Okeechobee, it definitely shows out, and we got to see it explode yesterday afternoon. And, and yesterday afternoon of the weigh-in, they're watching here, we saw Brandon. Cobb take it from 22 pounds, nine ounces on day one, up in the ante to almost 33 pounds on day number two. Just an incredible, incredible performance. What a place, mm -hmm. one of the biggest lakes in North America. You can't see from side to side of this place on the clearest of days, 730 square miles of fishing, including the Kissimmee River, which feeds this place, which is playing into the story, Marzo. Exactly right. We're going to see a lot of that this morning. Looking at a big Lake Okeechobee this time around. Water levels very high, about two to two and a half feet high. And you would think, wow, with it being high, a flat lake, these anglers are going to be able to get away from each other. That is not the case. These bass, these giant bass on Lake Okeechobee in very small, isolated areas where a lot of our anglers right on top of each other. We will see that this morning. Oh, we have got a lot of coverage ahead for you on a very, very, very important day. This is the day you have to move into the top 10 if you want to compete on Championship Sunday. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona, Ronnie Moore, and Mike Such Sukon. And, and Z, I'll tell you what, uh, not everyone prospered big time on day number two. Our one and two to start the day on day number two fell out of the top ten. So there are big peaks and there are also big valleys available with conditions changing. Today. No doubt and we got to talk about that. A lot of these anglers that are fishing on top of each other you could literally be 50 yards from another angler that is catching a giant stringer, 20 to 30 pounds of bass, and you are not getting a single bite. You're kind of just watching yourself go down the leaderboard or can you find that little nugget, that little something where you're away from the field doing something totally different? One angler in our top 10 we're going to watch from Louisiana, Tyler Rivette. He has found that. He has been left alone. The biggest thing, Tyler Rivette has really never come close to winning a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, and he is surrounded by some of the biggest names in bass fishing. So big day for Tyler Rivette. Absolutely. We talk about those expectations, which were beat down to start with. They've raised now, Ronnie, more so. The question I ask you, are we going to reach the century mark? 100 pounds for four days of fishing. Well, one thing that we did do is we almost matched Santee Cooper last year, which broke 100 pounds. The top weight after two days, 56 pounds and change there. We're at 55 pounds and change. Lake Okeechobee, they thought, hey, we're going to see 25, maybe 30 pound bags occasionally. That top weight is going to be in that 45 to 50 range after two days we have broken that the one caution they've worried about 12 pounds 13 pounds for the cut line that's what everyone expected it almost took 15 pounds a day to make the top 50 cut and be just in the top echelon to have a shot to fish today but anyone in 50th 49th 48th they can make a big jump into the top 20 top 15 today maybe even makes championship sunday a lot of ceiling available certainly brandon cobb showed us how much ceiling is available out there yesterday what a guy in this freshman year his uh, rookie season he won twice hey. and 
hit that uh, hit that century mark. So this guy knows how to navigate uh, the the elevated situation like this. Yeah, and this tournament really is a lot like last week's Super Bowl. A lot of scoring all <laughs> day long, and it really wasn't thought to be that this time around on Lake Okeechobee. Going to get out with your leader Brandon Cobb after day number two. A giant bag of fish in this little 40-yard stretch. Brandon Cobb just put on a marvelous show yesterday. It was jaw-dropping, and we'll see highlights from that. That is for sure. A little earlier today, he broke down what got it done for him with our Bass Pro Shops Top Lures. Just had a crazy day two here at Okeechobee. Had 32.15, one of my bigger bags ever. It was uh, just one of those days where yesterday everything went right, today everything went even better. Most of the fish I caught today all day were, today actually was kind of a chatterbait day. It seemed like they won something uh, winding. I was using a chatterbait with a Zoom Super Fluke trailer, Houdini, and uh, yesterday I caught every fish flipping a Zoom Fluke stick. But today it was, I caught, a, I did catch some flipping, but today it seemed like the bigger fish won something moving. So that's what I did most of the day today. Tomorrow might be, who knows what it'll be tomorrow. They might buy a top water tomorrow. You just gotta figure it out as you go. And the uh, main thing that today told me is I caught them better today than I did yesterday in the same area. So that's a good sign. That's uh, always what you want in Florida is from fish to be coming to you. So we'll see uh, if I got any more to chatterbait or flip up tomorrow. Unfortunately, I only got one really good area. I got a few other areas that I haven't even checked because I've been catching fish that might be good, but they probably have a lot of boats in them as well. And uh, so probably can go do a very similar thing. I feel like it's my only chance to catch another big bag and hope some more fish pull in. That's kind of the key out here is fish got to be coming in because there's so many boats fishing. If there's no new fish coming in, they just simply all get caught. So luckily these last two days, some new fish have showed up every couple hours. So. Hopefully tomorrow is no different. We got a little different weather tomorrow, so I don't know if that's going to be good, bad, or maybe not change anything. We'll just have to see as the day goes what's going on. Mm. Back out live to Brandon Cobb. Yeah, so the wind is definitely not ideal for presentation and uh, just like fishing effectively, but pleasantly surprised when I got here. I was a little worried it was going to be blown out and dirty. As of now, I mean, it might later today, but as of now, it's not dirty. The water actually looks cleaner or better than yesterday, in my opinion. But uh, I'm kind of sitting right now. I'm, I'm gonna give it, you know, 30 minutes or so. And this is like this spot where I caught most of them yesterday. But the first day I caught them just kind of scattered all around in this whole general area. And uh, I'm just making sure these fish aren't gonna show back up for a little bit. And then I'm gonna kind of venture out and keep rechecking this specific spot, but kind of fish the whole area. But the water looks really good, kind of, I was a little worried, actually, especially running down here. The wind was a little worse than I thought. It's blowing sort of on it, but I think we got enough of a point up there to where it's keeping it protected. And it should stay protected most of the day, I think. So feel feel good about it so far. The only thing I don't like is it seems like the sun has been helping. I haven't really been catching that much till 9, 10, 11 o'clock. And that's when the sun's getting up at its highest. And I don't think we're gonna get that sun today. So it might be a little bit slower, just kind of grind it out type day to day. I don't know if they're just gonna flood in like they did. But I know there's some fish in here. I've, I've caught one already. Seen a couple get caught by other boats. So I know they're still in here. It's just might be, could be a pick one off here and there type day versus a flurry type day like yesterday. We'll have to see what happens. Well, he bagged about 32 pounds on that exact cast that he's making right there. And the interesting thing yesterday morning, he went through this area, caught one small bass, came back about one hour later and absolutely blow, blew their doors open. And you heard him make the comment, you need to be in an area where they're coming to you, whether they're fish that are just getting done spawning or they're fish coming off the main lake to come in to spawn. The other thing, if you looked at his bass yesterday, compared to a lot of other anglers in these backwater areas, you see a lot of fish that are jet black, very dark, that have been in these backwaters for days, weeks. A lot of Brandon Cobb's fish yesterday, very light. You could tell they were fresh fish just pulling in. The biggest question is, will it reload today? Tommy, very rarely do we uh 
see a guy catch 32-15 on live and say, we've seen that before, but Brandon Cobb's one of the guys who's caught 35, 37 yeah. pounds on Bassmaster Live. So it's Hard to <laughs> emphasize how, how important, how hard that 30-pound mark is to achieve. That's a day of a lifetime. And, and b the absolute other side of that, you look at an angler on the Bassmaster Elite Series that day number two yesterday following Tyler Rivette, he made the comment, that was the biggest stringer he has ever weighed in in his lifetime on camera yesterday. And the great thing about it is a lot of the locals, guys like Scott Martin, who grew up on this lake, said, if you can get out of these crowded backwaters and find something, something oddball to yourself, you could possibly blow this tournament away. And so far, that has been Tyler Rivette. Virtually no competition from other Elite Series anglers. And the, and the great thing watching Tyler Rivette yesterday, he was done at about one o'clock. You know it's a special body of water, Z, when there are people who have won Bassmaster Elite Series events, the ones that have been on the tour for 15 plus years, guys who have won awards like Rookie of the Year, and they all come across the stage yesterday saying, oh, he's this up. is the <laughs> biggest bag of fish I've ever weighed in. That's how you know Okeechobee is a special place. Feeling good, uh, started off with a three, three and a half, and uh, they kind of stopped biting again. They do their normal ritual where they catch one and they stop, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good day. I think it's it's setting up for us, for us, because if you look at the bushes and everything, the water dropped at least a foot, so, I mean, the only place they're gonna go is out, and that's what we're fishing. <laughs> we're fishing out, so. If anything, I think it'll help us more. Uh, I don't want to jinx myself, but I mean, it's just, as the book would go, they would pull out, obviously, and should be able to catch them on that jerk bait. I'm just trying to put a few in the boat right now just to help slow myself down. Should be one on this tree, like 100%. <laughs> should be. Fishing in the Kissimmee River, there's been about three other anglers upriver from Tyler Rivette. The great thing is we were looking at his front facing so sonar all day yesterday. There are so many fish, whether they're crappie or striped, whatever it is, there is just a lot of life coming and going in that river, whether they're fish that are moving in the spawn, moving out that have already gotten done. The biggest thing that you watched yesterday with Tyler Rivette was the flurries that he would go on. It would get dead for about an hour, and then you'd see him catch two, three, four bass in a row. But it was amazing to see how much food, how much bait that was in this river, and how many big bass that would track his lures throughout the day that wouldn't commit, and then they would fire, and you would watch him load the boat. At the end of the day yesterday, I was throwing a swim jig on the bushes and I had like a three pounder come up and it was stuck on the bush. It come up and try to eat it. Not a whole lot of people saw this coming, Z. No, yesterday was one of the biggest days we've had on Bassmaster Live in, in, a, in a long time because it was, it was across the board how many giants got caught. The other thing is, the biggest difference today, Florida bass are like Florida people. They, what? They, they are, no, man. What? They want nice weather. They want oh. light winds, high ceiling, a lot of sun. And the, I think what you'll see a lot more of today, we saw a lot of anglers fishing very slow yesterday, methodical. With that wind, you're going to see a lot more moving baits today, no doubt. Much patience is required, but once they start going, once they start catching some big ones, hang on. Don't leave because you're going to see a bunch caught during these flurries, these special periods of time. When the Florida stream bass get going. All phases of the spawn going on right now. Brandon Cobb still on top. Steve Kennedy. Gotta take a look at him today as well. Had an exciting day yesterday. Caught a bunch of fish, including some giants. So many great things in store for us today. Day two here on Lake Okeechobee. Be right back. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by 
Humminbird. Mercury. Nitro Bugs. And by Bass Pro Shops. We are up and rolling on day number three, semi-final Saturday at the Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee. What an incredible place. Started with 104 anglers. That's the full field. We've cut down to 50 for today, and from out of that 50, you have to be in the top 10 if you want a shot at that vaunted blue trophy on, uh, on the Championship Sunday. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders looking at that TH Marine. Weather watch cloudy today, a lot different from the first two days of this tournament. Did not get too cold, but the key thing, the key thing that is not on that weather watch, north, northeast winds, and it is going to get gassing at about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning. And the other thing is, three of our anglers on camera are fishing on the south end of the lake. Guys like Clark Wendelit, Bill Lowen, Cooper Gallant. Will that north, northeast wind affect those anglers or help them? yet to be seen. They are still running down to their areas to fish. Going to get back out of the water right now. Day two angler, Tyler Rivett. Tyler starting the day in second place remains there. Behind. Tommy, he is not the day two angler. He's actually actually in second place <laughs> after day two. Okay, yeah, well, it's, the, it's the first turn. I know, it's the, the first day. Second trying to day figure school. them out. They're, that water dropped that much. Figured they'd just be sitting off of here. Um, that's a big one. I think if I pick up a spinner bait, they might bite it. This is perfect spinner bait conditions. Got our first limit further up the river from Rivette. Uh, rookie Will Davis has already called. He's mm -hmm. jumped in our top ten. From and Carl Jacobson. Third place, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Jacobson has our big fish, a five pounder. He's just jumped in the tenth place. Will Davis, if he can sneak into the top ten, I'd love to see what he's doing every morning because he has the quickest limit yeah. and into the teens while everyone else is still building one fish here, one fish there. He's he jumps out to our early leader in the top five every single day. Good morning. Not going well. A couple of blow ups. Smaller fish. A lot of different conditions. We're trying to figure out where these fish have moved to and what they're doing. And they seem to be aggressive, but but not a lot of bites. I hope it's just a matter of putting it in front of a big one. Well, there was some footage yesterday with Steve Kennedy. You see those holes in the lily pads? It's where a lot of these fish are spawning. You're trying to visual, even though you're not looking at a spawning bed where these bass are reproducing, you're visualizing the holes in those lily pads. That is a bed, and we got to look at some blow-ups yesterday enormous bass. Day number one, Steve Kennedy said he lost between four and six giant bass. Still weighed in a big limit. Yesterday, it was unbelievable to watch what they did. Now, these are all little bass, but really yesterday afternoon, basically what he would do when he would hook one, go in and retrieve them. And Steve Kennedy, one of the anglers that thought the clouds could help him today. Super consistent, 23 pounds and change each of the first two days for Steve Kennedy, one of the original Bassmaster Elite Series participants. He's been known to fare well in those big weight tournaments, set the all-time record before it was eventually broken out in California. He's got three wins on the Elite Series, like you guys have mentioned. And every time we have a big fish, single hunting giant fish tournament, Steve Kennedy's always somewhere to be found. Got three of them, Ronnie. Three belts. In this area that you're looking at Steve Kennedy in, 
so much pressure. A lot less today. There was a boat in here. Yesterday morning, there was a boat about every 20 yards, and in the afternoon, there was even more. Wow! <laughs> it looks so good. First look at Patrick Walters gained the top 10 after his performance yesterday. Combined with day one for 44-2. Just keep casting. <laughs> it's a different lake in Florida, but we shouldn't be surprised that Patrick Walters is in the top 10 in the first stop of the season in the state of Florida. I think it's every year at the St. John's River he has made the top 10. Started off such a strong way. Yeah, started off with the first his very first elite event, top five. Hey, just getting started, trying to figure things out, starting in a new area this morning. Water looks really good. Um, hadn't had a bite yet, but hey, we're just slowly figuring it out. What we got to do is we got to figure out, hey, where the fish have moved to, what they want to bite, and the speed that they want it at. Um, that's all you got to do every day is just fish the conditions, um, and that's what we're doing. I mean, it got us to, it got us this far, and that's all you can ask for. So, we're just going to keep fishing. See if we can get us a Lake Okeechobee giant here in a minute. Just throwing a bunch of baits right now, throwing a chatter bait, throwing Patrick a spinner Hill. bait, throwing my speed worm, you know, just covering some water until we find a little concentration of them. Um, and then we'll slow down, we'll drag a worm, uh, do some dead sticking if they're kind of locking down. If they're not locking down and they're feeding, I mean, you can't reel your bait fast enough. It won't matter what you're throwing. Um, that's why we're just gonna fish around till we get some good signs. Yeah. Well, yesterday yes. proved the prognosticators wrong. The people who said we couldn't achieve 100 pounds here at Lake Okeechobee. Simple arithmetic, as Dave Mercer says, will tell us that is a possibility here today. And Patrick Walters should feel at home in a situation like that. He has achieved that more than one time. 100 pounds of fish for four days of fishing is famously a great, great effort at Lake Fork in Texas in 2020. Yeah, Patrick Walters always looking for a home run, trying to get away from a lot of the crowd and do things differently. That's what we got to see in that tournament on Lake Fork where even the locals said now this tournament would take about 80 to 85 pounds to win. Absolutely blew that tournament away. Fishing offshore, suspending jerk bait. And really looking what he's done this morning is typical Patrick Walters. He did all of his damage on days one and two down in South Bay, about a 35 mile run. Fishing a lot closer today. He made the comment, I feel like that north wind will trash the southern end of Lake Okeechobee. Patrick Walters, of course, already in the running in early days for Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year because he is perennially near the top on that list. Will this be his year? We'll be watching that story. He's really good on Lake Fork. Yeah, yeah he really is, and we're not going right. here this year, but he's good everywhere else, it seems. That's a no joke. doubt, that growing up in South Carolina, we also seen him have big tournaments in the state of Florida, as Ronnie Moore said. Mm -hmm. Walters, his first four seasons, this is his fifth year on the Elite Series, his first four seasons, a 16th in Angler of the Year, then he got third, then he got fourth, then he got fifth. So not too shabby, he's not gonna be too far from that and well within the classic range every year. Patrick Walters along with our leader Brandon Cobb and Tyler Rivette, all part of that fabulous 2019 rookie class. And what he did at 2020, that first highlight of his win and breaking the Century Club and getting 100 plus pounds at Lake Fork uh, in 2020, he had the largest margin of victory in Bass Master history at that event. Blew it away by 29 pounds, something absolutely incredible. And here's your 2019 Rookie of the Year, Drew Cook.
A little more better. country the one thing with drew cook you saw a lot of bass that size yesterday and then a giant okeechobee fish would show up yeah big females he just says he's got to get a couple of them going to keep him in this thing right there drew cook with a lot of confidence and for good reason semi-final saturday continues here bass master live from lake okeechobee well tonight don't miss the television premiere of back to school with gus johnson this fascinating documentary film chronicles the legendary broadcaster's midlife decision to enroll at Harvard University while continuing to call the biggest games across the country from Fox Sports Films. It's back to school with Gus Johnson tonight, 7 Eastern on Fox. Definitely be checking that out for sure. Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee. It is Saturday. It is semifinal Saturday. You have to be in the top 10 of the 50 anglers who remain. After two days of competition out there today, what a great top ten we have here that we are going to be in the be in the boat with all day with our cameras, including this young man, former college national champion, Jake Whitaker, from UNC Charlotte. Did very well to start his Florida season last year. There we go. Short stream me right at the boat. Let me pop all down. Not a big fish, but I mean, just a healthy fish. Where we're at is just a healthy spot. Clean water, grass, paths, just a perfect spawning place for these fish to set up and come to. And the most important thing is clean water. Two and three quarter. We'll take it. Let's get some water in there. We're coming into this tournament. A limit of those with one big one, a lot of the field thought would blow yes, this thing away. If you could do that every single oh, day, yeah, and it's good. turned into, to win this tournament, they're you good. cannot weigh one in that size. Fish on. Yeah. It's not a big one, but it's a fish. They do exist. <laughs> Get five in the box and then go play. He's going on your side. Oh, this is wait. exactly how yesterday started. A lot of small males and then all of a sudden it would explode. I think it's a two. Come on now. And he said, just get a limit and then go hog hunting. But his bait selection this week is, is already hog hunting. He's throwing a bigger than average stick bait. He's throwing top water frog. Like, Kennedy's targeting him. He just happens to be catching smaller males to start. one seven. But no, I don't think it was zero, right? That's zero. One seven. <laughs> Still going on your side. We're off this morning. <laughs> Let's go to there. I can't catch one. Well, he is already a hot mess this morning. He was <laughs> yesterday yeah. morning. He, he arrived on the property, fired up and ready to go this week. Uh, he's been a, a sight to watch. Steve Kennedy, no one quite like him. And that's a veteran move, paying so much attention to these little tiny fish, just to just keep to make your mind sure. in the game. Yeah. yeah. All right. A lot of our anglers starting to make their way to the south end of Lake Okeechobee. About a 35 to 36 mile run this morning. Interesting to see if that water stays clear, stays stable. Clark Wendell said he caught between 40 and 50 bass yesterday. Well, day three, Bassmaster Elite Series, we just got here. It, it's, it's about 30 miles straight across, but it's an hour the way I went because 
you're just a fool if you go straight across the lake when it's blowing like this. It's a gigantic lake. So, um, but just getting started, just started making, a, I mean, I probably made about five or six casts and the wind is absolutely howling. The only thing I'm really worried about, I, I think the fish should bite. Um, boat control will be just all about power poles because without power poles, we'd have no control out here, but I can, I can put them down and, and just sit here and fish. So, um, you know, as long as it doesn't get muddy, you know, that would be the, the biggest key. You know, somebody's water today in this lake is, is gonna get muddy and, and uh, your water gets muddy and you're done. So, I mean, nothing you can do about that part, but I think it's gonna stay clean. There's a big giant area of grass that's, that's blocking this and um, we'll just see. Clark winner, winning angler of the year a couple of years ago. A lot of history here on Lake Okeechobee. Most of his damage with a swimming worm. Said there was a lot of anglers around him throwing swim jigs, bladed jigs, and just methodically fishing those little reed clumps, those little reed heads. And said, you just like every angler we've covered, you just go through little flurries throughout the day. Clark started with 18.9 on day one, up the game 25.5 yesterday to find his way into the top 10. Now you see land right there on that Google shot yeah. there. It's not. It's water. With the high wa water, it, it is actually covering what used to be a lot of marsh in that area. Yeah, the run, it took us about an hour 15 to get here. The main lake's rocking and rolling. Um, Today we have a completely different day. I mean, overcast. We had some overcast the last two days, um, but it's blowing hard. I feel like I'm on Lake Ontario right now. It's uh, it's blowing, but uh, I don't know. It feels fishy. I feel like they should be chewing in this. It's a little cold. Uh, that worries me a little bit, but we're just gonna keep hucking and winding, cover some water, and. See what happens. Cooper Gallant, 26 year old rookie from Bowmanville, Ontario, on the shores of Lake Ontario. Our colleague Dave Mercer assures us he can catch him anywhere. Oh, yeah. He's sort of started out that way. One thing that's cool is we always talk about the different paths to get to the Elite Series, and with high school and college fishing being so very popular the last five to seven years. Uh, last decade in general is when it's really gained some steam. That's one path to get to the opens, to get to the next level, and Cooper is a part of our high school alumni fishing back in 2015 national championship. Number one. Oh, that is such a Not good a sign one, that they start. will bite in that wind. Pound and a half or one pounder. No doubt, we have covered him in opens. He is the real deal. Tommy, I asked Cooper yesterday. I said, Cooper, you married? You got a girlfriend? Stuff oh, like that? Yeah. No, not looking for one Whoa, either. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Did, and did not hesitate. New and question. then backed it up with, now hold on, backed it up with, well, I mean, I got a couple in different towns. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, he did. Oh, he kids these no, days. He, he did absolutely not. did say that. Mm. His YouTube series, on the road is called the chase, but it's not chasing <laughs> after wind. It's the chasing after fishing trophies. We'll oh, just no. clarify. <laughs> yeah, owns a Bassmaster right, Open Victory and is very close in other ones. He's uh, he's yes. got a full set of credentials. So I got it set out at 40 on foot, but right here, just left of right in there where my bait is right now. There's fish swimming everywhere. A little jumpy. <laughs> There's several swimming here. And I don't think they're tilapia, I think they're bass. I, I think I'm sitting on a bed right here. And I've got those squirrely. But there's a fish right here. There's a fish out there. That's probably a fish over here. 
See this one showing? Depending on how they turn sideways, there's one there, there's one here. They're just a little buck bass sitting on the beds. And you're in, what's your water depth over here? We're in three or four foot. Three feet of water. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Lorentz just came out with a new, uh, a new bracket. So the one I have, I actually bent it myself. Their, their brackets are angled down for a little bit deeper water. So I bent one. See, there's one real obvious right there. See that little spot? I got it zoomed out so I can see across the pond. But, but yeah, there's, they're just sitting there circling around on their little holes. Acting like bass. Wait, waiting for Big Mama to come in. There aren't many big ones, but we have seen a couple. But see, there's a decent one just, just five or 10 feet out here. <laughs> and she's spooky. See how it's circling back and forth? Because I think it wants to get underneath the boat here. Look at that, look at that, that's insane. So yeah, I've been bending my own bracket. Now, Lorentz just came out with a new bracket and they got them here at the tournament for the guys. But I don't see anybody doing this. Gotta be a bass right there. Yeah, that one that one's circling right here. He wants to get right here. There's a bed here, I'll guarantee it. I saw it earlier. That yeah. That's wow. pretty interesting. Yeah. If you haven't yeah. checked in on bass fishing for a few years, yeah. that's uh, one that's of the big developments. Fish. Yeah, that's, that's how they bass fish these days. It's, that's one option. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> They're becoming uh, very, very prominent. Even the old uh, late adopters will tell you, I gotta learn it. It's coming. It's all it's all here. Front facing sonar with Steve Kennedy hanging in there in fourth place. Brandon Cobb hanging on to his lead, though it's only a pound and change now ahead of Tyler Rivette, but those two still a healthy margin ahead of the rest of our top 10 that we're with today. We're gonna take a break and we will be right back to Lake Okeechobee. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. That's a call. <laughs> uh, I kind of wish I would have caught 30, just to say I had a 30 pound bag once, but uh, I'm not worried about that. We're going for the W, so we played it smart. We got go. off of there when we needed to. Uh, made a cool call right at the end that helped us out. So I think we could go there tomorrow and the next day and do the same thing. They're, they're there, they're willing to bite. You just got to be patient. You just got to keep going up and down and waiting for the right That's one. That's what we call it. Tyler Yvette making something different pay. Hey, Z, here's a different look at his oh, yeah. place right here. Absolutely. Heard Tyler Yvette make the comment there's been about a one foot drop, though, yeah. coming into day number three here. Could affect it a little bit. Just for the simple fact, by yesterday, he was already culling. Really good look at the watercolor right there. Beautiful stuff there in the Kissimmee River, Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> Kissimmee River's a storied place for bass fishing, and Tyler Yvette. Getting great results, great outcome here over two days. I'm trying to get a bite. They're still here, just doing what they were doing yesterday early. Kind of chase it around and not commit. Trying to give them something they want to commit to. Guys, I wanted to run over to the Dakota Lithium screen and knowledge uh, to, to break down a little bit. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. The fact of the matter is what we've talked about this week is vegetation and water clarity. And that's one thing that a lot of anglers are keying in on. We saw how nice the water looks in the Kissimmee River, but out in the lake, it's often a lot dirtier than we've seen at Okeechobee in the past. And one reason why, a lot of times water level dictates, uh, you know, how deep places are obviously, but at Lake Okeechobee, it really affects water clarity. When the water's higher, those grass reeds, those other submerged vegetation, it doesn't get to filter the water as much and it really makes it dirty in a lot of areas, which these bass do not want to be feeding in dirty water. They want to find clean water to feed. And the difference is from just eight years ago, 2015, I'm going to show some other years as well. This is a screenshot on Google Earth of an area, a popular area, Harney Pond, Monkey Box region, close to the North Shore. 
of what the grass looked like in 2015 when you have all of these different places to block the wind from making water dirty, to have the vegetation to filter it, and a lot of places to fish. And then we see a couple years later in 2019, four years after that first screenshot was taken, you can see how the grass, the grass points that look like land on the map have changed. These are places that fish can get around, spawn, spread out, and this has made this made Lake Okeechobee fish big, but every year it's kind of gotten a little smaller on where these fish will get and where these anglers will find them. A couple years after that 2019 screenshot, this was 2022, early last year, what the same area looks like and how those that long point of grass that kind of concealed and made these bays really protected from east and north winds are now broken up. So a lot of these places that had premier clear water and the vegetation to grow there with the higher water, less sunlight can penetrate. The grass doesn't grow as strong. We've had a lot of hurricanes as well each year in Florida that affects the water clarity. And if you have other effects that are not natural come into play, it can really reduce the vegetation, which hurts the clarity, which makes Lake Okeechobee, that is the second largest natural lake exclusively in the United United States, it makes this big lake fish very, very small where we're going to have 104 anglers in three or four main areas. So for the viewers on Fox Sports 1, if you see guys fishing around each other, that's normal this week, but it has not been normal at Lake Okeechobee, I would say over the last two decades of fishing that we've seen at, at this legendary body of water. Oh, you nailed that. A lot of those outer grass lines act like walls to protect the wave action from uprooting a lot of the submergent vegetation. Not the case here. Want to see this lake go down moments ago with Big. Gerald Swindle. Lay down. Oh, I missed it. That's one right there. I told you that's where we're going to win it at. That's a four. Yeah. That's one. Right where I found them. All right, so I told you. It's where they are. There you go. That's one on the board. Did you say four pound each? Four pound each. Well, Swindle, two time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year told us the other day he's, he vows he's going to try for a third. Absolutely, that's top of his list for this year of 2023. A good start for Gerald Swindle. Said he thought he found something late yesterday afternoon after we were done with Bassmaster Live. Former angler of the year, Mike Winner, 20. Not very big, but it's a bite. This whole flat really all looks the same. It was an area that was throttled in a tournament here in the last few weeks by hundreds of boats, local boats, competition boats. Clark Wendelin said there's little irregularities, little depressions that a lot of these bigger ones would get in, even though it looks the same from the top, just six inches could make such a different on, difference on Okeechobee. We're going to shoot a couple hundred yards from Clark Wendelin back. Canadian rookie, Cooper Gallant. That was ugly. How'd that feel? Like the are other one, good? are they really destroying it or just, just uh, no, they're they're kind of just there, especially with the wind. You have so much slack in your line. So you kind of just keep reeling and you feel weight. Number two. 1.4. to grow a little bit, but we're getting bites. Shot on the right from the boat of Jake Whitaker. And 
There's Jake, hooked up. Come up in here. Heck yeah. Mm. There we go. Good solid fish right there. Heck yeah, number two is a good one. Good one. I like it. Four and a half. Heck yeah, good fish. Boom. Get this bait put in here. Ronnie Jake makes those fish look small. That? Heck yeah. He really does. Yeah. I thought the same he's got thing. Some, he's got one. some height, and he was. He's, hey, he's a he's a state champion offensive lineman in high school before he took his talent. Uh, so I wouldn't long. mess with him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good one right there for Jake Whitaker, and that's been the one theme in these little small condensed areas. Pretty much out fish the guy fishing next to you. Come on, I think it's a sock away. Yeah, sock away. Wow, right in the cut. Taking a look at that crappie right there. That is the Dinner. reason that Tyler Rivette found this Dinner spot. Bells ringing. <laughs> Came in here on. Monday night of practice to catch dinner. Run up to He's responsible for feeding his roommates. Right? Feeding his roommates, yeah. came in here to crappie fish, and ended up finding this. That's happy circumstance. what it is. He even asked tournament director Lisa Talmadge if he could bring some in on tournament days. And I think it was yeah, a, could he put a big no. What? Number two. Yeah. The second it hit the water. Sit on him. I don't want this. I don't want to even look at them. The only time I want to look at them is when I'm throwing them back. Eight pounds. Oh, wrong fish. Oh, 112 ish. Should put Rivette back in the lead. Ah, get in here. That's the kind we need. Mm -hmm. Say it did not. It did not look that big when he was just trying to get his no. hand in his mouth, and then when he pulls the whole thing out, you're like, that is a solid. No, solid we'll talk about away. that swimming worm a lot more tomorrow here on FS1. Clark did good. not want to talk about it yet. I mean, when you catch one like that, and it's not a giant one, but <laughs> it's a good one. And when you catch one like that, you know you don't have to call that one. If you call that one. You did pretty darn good. Swim worm with a 316 sounds weight, and you do not want him creeping around, no. figuring <laughs> an area out with big ones. As dangerous as he's <laughs> ever been, one of the most celebrated legends of bass fishing that there are. Clark Winlet hanging in there in the top 10. He's going to move up above that ninth spot.
Nice to mark field. Tyler Rivette, that small fish, put him, as you mentioned, Such, uh, back into the lead there. Tyler Rivette spent a lot of yesterday morning in the lead during the course of this tournament. Will Brandon Cobb get it going? Mm, what is on the way here from Lake Okeechobee? We're going to take a quick break and be back with more coverage. Yeah! Hustler! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Master Live, our coverage continues from here on the big O Lake Okeechobee. Hey, everyone's happy. We've got a brand new season, a new beginning for the best of the best anglers in America. As they start their nine, uh, nine venue journey, we should say, through this country and during the course of the next several months. And right now, it's important to get a good start. And 50 of them have started well enough to be fishing on today. Semi-final Saturday, trying to be in the top 10 at the end of the day to fish championship Sunday. Mark Zona, I think we're seeing them all adjust to very different conditions. No sun as we've had the first two days. A lot more wind from a different direction. Exactly right, Tommy. It's kind of gassing out of the north today. You really look at the top end, the north end of the lake right there. Scott Driver Park. A lot of our anglers made that run, Tommy Sanders, about 35 miles south, which we were concerned. Would that wind trash that area so far? That area is playing pretty much better than anywhere else today. And the door has kind of been left open a little bit from Brandon Cobb and Tyler yep. Rivette, who were dominating coming into semifinals. Early Saturday. on, we'll see how it develops right now. Speaking of the C. Scott Driver Park there, let's throw it to our friends, our colleagues, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer and Hall of Famer Davey Height. And those guys are getting ready for their always engrossing, compelling coverage from on site. Guys, we're going to pass it off to you. Well, thank you very much, guys. A brand new season and a brand new set of conditions, Davey. I, I don't feel like I'm in Florida anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to complain because uh, people at home are shoveling snow and stuff like that. But a much cooler day today. How's that going to affect this tournament? Oh, it's already affected us a lot. You can look at the uh, bass track there and see the anglers. That It was so easy for uh, Brandon Cobb yesterday culling four pounders. Uh, we saw 32 pounds, 15 ounces by him yesterday. But what a difference a day makes. It's totally different. The the 15 to 20 mile an hour north wind absolutely changes the Lake Okeechobee. And we got ourselves a, a, a tournament that I think is totally up for grabs. It's going to be very, very critical today for these anglers to slow down and just catch a solid five fish limit to survive, hopefully make the top 10 for tomorrow. And you also got to keep in mind the bottom 25 trying to get in that top 10. We've seen in this tournament you can make a giant charge. Bill Lowen yesterday all the way from 80th place into 10th place. So... Doesn't matter what you went into today, you got a shot. You're in the land of giants. And the guy who's had a very consistent tournament and caught him good both days in a row, Steve Kennedy was literally tying on lures the size of a shoe this morning. <laughs> well, you try to catch big fish, oftentimes you want to use a big bait. And Steve Kennedy caught a lot of those big fish yesterday. A fair amount of them on his top water frog, just like you see him throwing here this morning. But the wind just changes everything. I can't emphasize too much i can't stress too much how much the wind affects the area of the lake if you're on the south end where a lot of those fish were caught yesterday very difficult today with that north wind that big one got it right up on the edge that grass i don't know if you looked at it i, I worked it all the way across the pocket and then when i got right to the edge of the grass it was like it was sitting under that edge just Exploded on it. Oh, you mean on that yes. Take that fish. Like facing the hole. I, yeah, I think he was up under that edge. He came from. I think he came kind of from. The, oh my goodness. Ooh. Hope you got that. <laughs> Cause he knocked it up in the air. <laughs> we'll take that. <laughs> He knocked it straight up in the air and just laid there, and I never had to twitch it again. It's not a big one, but, but that was a cool bite. <laughs> that 
was a very cool bite. He lifted up like a seal. <laughs> yes. Give him a two nine. Don't put him on your side still. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Not bad. Not bad. It was a heck of a. It was a cool bite. Very cool bite. Wasn't my cold whoosh. It was a cool bite. Can't get enough of that. Steve Kennedy, and also one of my favorite people to watch because if it goes into his mind, it comes out of his mouth. It does. Really, really good camera work here. You see that fish explode on that top water frog, and it knocked the frog out of the water. Uh, many, many times I would jerk and miss that fish but he was very patient let that frog sit there and that fish came back and, and got it and he was able to land that fish really cool stuff and great great camera work there Oosh. very very great job by steve kennedy being patient like third or fourth strike From three-time Elite Series champion Steve Kennedy, we go over to Drew Cook, a young career. But if you look at his stats, it doesn't look like it's that young. Took his first Elite Series win last year. And when you get in the Sunshine State, he's always in the mix. Yeah, Drew Cook, a great young fisherman. Especially good around the spawn, and a lot of these fish are spawning. Fourth time's a charm. I let her marinate on that time. That's a limit. I got two something. Cook mentioned fourth time's a charm they are probably saying that was the first fourth time that fish had Persistence hit his face so key. often these fish are just protecting an area not Keep trying going. to feed everybody wants to see one guy I mean, he kind of stole the show at the way. And 32 pounds, 15 ounces yesterday. Your tournament leader, two-time Elite Series champion, Got the C-O-double-B, Brandon Cobb. Not a big one, but keeper. Interesting. Two pounder. Way out here though. Better water out here today. Oh, about to fall in the lake. That was that was awesome. I didn't even have to twitch it, just let it sit there. Is he a long soldier? Luckily, I was watching and saw what happened. There she is. Come on, baby. Keep it coming. Oh, my goodness, what a fish. Come on, baby. Stay on there. Stay on there. Oh no! That's not how you land a fish. <laughs> Come on. Keep it. Oh, I got him. <laughs> Holy smokes! Look at the size of that joke. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest fish. one I've caught all week, I think. That could be a seven and a half, eight. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You the man! That is the biggest one I've caught all week, I think. 
Wow. Things like golf balls eight for and eyeballs. One. <laughs> I hope you got that bike. Eight pounder. That incredible. <laughs> He's going on my side. <laughs> that's gold today. It is any day in a Bassmaster tournament, but today with the conditions we have, that's gold. Holy crap. Eight pounder. Excuse me. I think it should be worth double. More points. I mean, it was on, it was on the top water. Top water. Yeah. Awesome. That means more fun for the viewers, anyways. I'm getting hot now. <laughs> I'm getting hot. Let's do it again. Eight pounds, dude. And you see, he's not all by himself. He's out fishing the other anglers around him. He's done a great job. But what a shot. Explosion on a top water frog. That's what makes this sport so addictive. Like yes. that moment, that's that's the dream. That's that's what anglers <laughs> drive. In the middle of the night to bodies of water all over this country for one thing, all over the world, for one thing to have an experience like that. And for Steve Kendi to have that early in the day, am I wrong yeah, in saying no. you better look out? Yeah, you better look out. And no doubt that, you know, we saw several of those weighed in yesterday. You, you weighed them in. Uh, but today with these conditions, 20 mile an hour north wind, that fish is absolute gold. And it's still very early in the day. Steve Kennedy, uh, a lot of room to grow. Wow, an incredible catch, and we're just getting started. The Sunshine State, but the sun is not shining here today. Sunshine State's in a state of confusion. It's gotten a lot colder and a lot more wind, but the fish continue to bite, and the anglers are always tested. We're only two days into the season, and the conditions continue to change, but you can't start thinking about that right there. The progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race too soon. And we see it every year. We focus on the end of the season and those two days. Well, these two days are just as important. And obviously, our leader is the same leader we have going into today, Brandon Cobb, at the top of that leaderboard. But those points are unofficial until the end of this event, Davey Hyde. Yeah, absolutely. Making the top 50 today means a lot to these anglers because you at least want to make that first cut. But, but like you mentioned, every day is just equally as important. The first day of this season versus the last day, we put more emphasis on it, but really and truly it is that every day is so important. Kind of you can see the difference in Cobb's area. A hungry group. Like that. That's a good one. We'll have to go up there and get him. Wow. He's up pretty good. Oop, wrong button. Better one? Might be on to something that's outside here. Good solid fish. A four pounder, probably. It's bad when you're like, after yesterday, it's like a four pounder, but you know, a four pounder is a good one. <laughs> oh, is it drone so you can see it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of bad when you're disappointed, like, oh, it's only a four pounder, but if I catch four more four pounders, I mean, I'm gonna be pretty happy, to be honest, but. <laughs> I couldn't decide if I wanted to try to go up there and get him or pull him through the pads. It worked out though. Brandon Cobb being real patient, staying in one general area, not running all over the lake. He just had a lot of other fishermen in that area. Did a real good job being able to catch those bigger fish yesterday. Talking about adjusting, saying he's moving out. That That is really the key to Florida, isn't it? It, it, it is, and, and adjusting within that one area that yeah. he stayed in the entire tournament, not adjusting to the other side of the lake. And I have to admit, I, I did that in my careers 
down here at Lake Okeechobee trying to fish different sections of the lake rather than really settling down in one general area and well, dissecting it using different baits. That made a hole to that's what he's done so well this week. <laughs> kind of seals itself back up. Beautiful look there of that general area that he's in. A lot of vegetation. Cleaner water than when he says outside edge, he's not out in the lake where that water is dirty. The, the water, usually the farther back in there you, you go, or the farther you get, it's a cleaner water. But the direction of the wind changing, uh, and it's actually blowing away from the, the, the shoreline that he's at, actually will push that cleaner water out a little bit more because it's almost like a tidal effect. The wind's going to push a lot of the lake water over to the south end of the lake, so it's pulling water off the shoreline out in that vegetation more. Those fish will just follow that clean water. That was my next question. Do the fish move, or is it, are they, it's just more effective to fish in the cleaner water, but the fish are actually moving. The ones that aren't locked in on the bed, yeah. the ones that are, are looking to make beds or, or feed, are just looking to feed, those fish will move with that with that clear water the ones that are locked in on bed they just try to you know deal with it so to speak until it gets to you know where it's unbearable i, I compared real dirty water this water with 100 years a thousand years of decaying vegetation uh, it's almost like a smoky room so to speak it's hard for those fish to to breathe in that water uh, here in south florida it's just really difficult they don't like to be in that real dirty water Let's get over to three-time Elite Series champion, Steve Kennedy. And let's, uh, you know what I can't get enough of? Big bass, especially big bass on top water, which has to be our power pole replay of the day, Davey Height. Yeah, Steve Kennedy did a great job here. Uh, just being real patient. There's a lot on the line, $100,000 to the winner, giving out tomorrow, but, but like we mentioned, anger of the year, making the Bassmaster Classic. Catching this eight pounder this morning is a solid goal for Steve Kennedy and doing a great job being patient, waiting until that fish actually inhaled that bait before he set the hook and then landing it through all this thick vegetation. Steve Kennedy, power pole replay of the day. Uh, <laughs> Let's get back up here. live with Kennedy. No, we're, we're getting a few bites on a frog. Got me a big one, finally. and put her in the boat. He told me this morning that's a big concern a big bite for him. Down here on her been losing a lot of fish. a little one right here. I say it was a little one, I'm not sure. He just kind of sharked it. I like it better when they want it. <laughs> Fishing this frog like he's doing though, that's just, you're gonna have to deal with losing some of the fish. Uh, it just comes along with it. It's like flipping that real thick, heavy vegetation. You're gonna lose some of those fish. You just have to understand it. that's part of it. There's supposed to be a big one over there somewhere. You just hope the big ones aren't the ones you lose like that eight pounder. It's great that he caught that fish. He always has to make it dramatic, though, right at the side of the boat. Oh, yeah. But I, that's why people love watching Steve Kennedy's. Honestly, every time he's on live, we get a lot of feedback because if he thinks it, he says it. I mean, a conversation with Steve Kennedy is an emotional roller coaster. It starts high, and then he's like, but I lost some, but I think I'll get him today. <laughs> yeah, it really does. He, he really is one of the most exciting anglers when he gets a big fish beside the boat because you, you never know what's going to happen. Well, I think there's going to be more of that happen because this day is just starting. And the sun's supposed to come out a little bit. And obviously it's Florida, so it will warm up. But top our leaderboard right now, the same angler that was the top of the leaderboard at the start of today, the C-O-double-B. Brandon Cobb weighed in the BMC Monster bag of the tournament yesterday, 32 pounds, 15 ounces. Now finds himself atop the leaderboard with 64 pounds even. Keep your eye on Tyler Rivette. And as we saw, Steve Kendi and the rest of the crew are going to be charging all day long.
Yeah. A quarter. No way. You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to Okeechobee, Florida. Happens to be the playing field for our very first Bassmaster Elite Series event of the season. The Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee. It is semifinal Saturday. Our field has been cutting down to the top 50 anglers. Top 10 will move on to Championship Sunday. But let's have a look at our playing field with our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. Happens to be the seventh biggest lake in the United States. And Davey Height, you've had a lot of time on this body of water. Break it down for me. Yeah, the second largest lake in the U.S. Approx oh, second largest. Average yeah. depth, only eight feet. That's a big thing that not jumps out to me. Not including the Great Lakes. I know. You're, you're exactly right. I wasn't second guessing you. I, I know it's not including the Great Lakes. You know the Great Lakes. <laughs> 730 square miles. The big thing here, if you've never been on Lake Okeechobee, is the average depth of only eight feet. You ride all the way across there, you never see 20 feet of water. And that's why this lake is so susceptible to the winds. It really stirs it up and gets the water clarity. Not what you want. You want to look for that clear water, and that's what these anglers have done. A lot of our top anglers are fishing on the north end. You see there the north shore has always been an area where a lot of the fish are caught in our bass tournaments. That shallow water vegetation, looking for that clean water. You see Moonshine Bay there, typically Kings, all the way up to Kings Bar, just outside of the takeoff there. That's where Tin House, Horse Island, a lot of the anglers are fishing, including Brandon Cobb. You swing around and go look at the east shore and the south side of the lake where some of the anglers are fishing today. Unfortunately, that wind is going right down there on them. Great stuff, Davey. I, to be clear, I was talking about all the lakes. It's the second biggest exclusively in the U.S. Obviously, the Great Lakes are border lakes. So, yes. So I, uh, you were correct. I knew you were. No doubt. I think we're all correct. But right now, watching Cobb, Kennedy, Rivet, and Cook. All of them look very similar, except for what Tyler Rivet is doing. Yeah. Tyler Rivet. A little surprising today. He's having a slower morning than I thought. I thought he would be the one angler that would be immune to this 20 mile an hour north wind because he is in the Kissimmee River. Uh, and I would think these fish should replenish. Uh, he is using forward facing sonar, a, a variety of baits. Uh, right now, it looks like he's fishing a jerk bait. A lot of fish in the river itself. And he's basically had that to himself for the previous two days. We've talked about making a big comeback in this event, and one of the biggest comebacks was Dollar Bill Lowen. Went all the way from 80th place on day number one with an 11-pound bag to the top 10 in 10th place. Yesterday weighed in 29 pounds. And let's track him down live on the water. Takeoff, he said, the wind is going to make it difficult getting there. Wind was going to, he was worried it would affect his spot. Alright, number one. Not a big one, but it's a start. We ain't gonna zero. <laughs> ain't gonna zero. After such a good day yesterday, it's amazing he would be concerned about that, but you're exactly right. You knew the, the north wind was gonna affect his spot. It's just the tail of this body of water, especially. I mean, Okeechobee just always changes. Yes, it does. Uh, this time of year, we have those cold fronts moving through, but just the fact that it is so large, over 700 miles, square miles of, of water to fish. And when, when you get a, you know, you get a 12 to 15 gust up to 20 mile an hour wind on the Coosa River, it's not a big deal, but Lake Okeechobee, it certainly is. Speaking of a big deal, Gerald Swindle having a great tournament. All right, we live. All right, well, I started in that area where me and Cobb had been fishing, and it just seemed pretty dead to me. I had caught one little 10 incher, and uh, I just made a mood where I found some fish yesterday evening right before I come in. I caught a big one in here, and 
I seen another big one get caught. So I come in here and didn't take me like 15 minutes and I caught a four plus and I've had two more bites. They just didn't get it. I think just, just probably because of the wind and the cold, but I think they will bite before the day is over. Uh, I'm just gonna glue the chatterbait in my hand, the speed worm and just fish. But I'm gonna try to stay in this area. I think my best chance to win is in here, getting those key bites. I did have another bite right here this morning. It looked like a big one. I just poured him to the top and he come off. So I'm just gonna glue around here and just, just stick. Just stick in here and just keep fluttering it around. Got a lot of hydrilla in here. Got some dollar pads. Really don't have much company. Uh, a couple local guys come blowing through, but other than that, it's been pretty peaceful. I think this is the winning spot for me. The only chance I have to win is in here. I don't know if we caught most of the fish when me and Kyle was at. He's in a special place. I was more just like in a boat lane, but I feel very comfortable in here. I got to get four more bites, and I'm perfectly content with that. One key thing that Gerald said there I think is so important. You have to pick a location on Lake Okeechobee. Right. And you hopefully go. you pick the right one, but you just have to pick a good location and, and stay there and just dissect it and use different lures. Uh, understand that the magic window could be 1 p.m. It might not be at 8 a.m. You just And, and like I say, you, you have to hope that you made the right decision on a good area. Because if you try to run around and just fish for an hour or so and you know in South Bay and then go to Tin House and then go to Monkey Box, uh, it, it doesn't seem to work out for you very well. It certainly did not for me. Come on right now. How you feeling about the day so far? Well, it's uh I got one bite already, a one eight, you know, a pound and a half, but um, I just literally now just got in the area where I got all the big bites yesterday. Wind's totally different coming out of the north today. Yesterday it was coming out of the south. Um, not enough light to tell really if the water's got dirty or not. It doesn't look like it. it doesn't look like it's in very bad shape. Um, so I'm not discouraged yet. It's uh, it's still early. I didn't start catching them big ones yesterday till around noon. Um, and we all know in Florida it's all about a timing deal, but we also know in Florida that they hate cold fronts, and that's exactly what we got today. You know, yesterday I think it was 87, 88 degrees. Today I don't even think the high is gonna make it to 75. So um, we all know Florida bass hate it, so we're gonna just stick it out and see what happens. As a competitor, Davey, the, looking at a guy like Brandon Cobb, looking at a guy like Bill Owen, that both had monster bags yesterday, does that almost mess you up a little bit going into the next day? Like Cobb mentioned it, he's like, it's a four-pounder, it's a good fish, but I'm not getting that excited because of what happened yesterday. Yeah, I, I believe it does somewhat, but this front, I, they, they're both experienced anglers, no doubt about it, and they understand that. 20 mile an hour north wind and the and the temperature dropping 10 or 15 degrees changes everything in Florida. So mentally, I think it actually helps them because they know that today should be different. Now, if they, you know, were struggling this morning and the conditions were the same, then that's when it really starts messing with your head. You start thinking, I, I got to go somewhere else. I got to do something different. I need to be catching 30 pounds. So mentally, I think both of those anglers understand and the whole field. Hey, today is a different day. It, there probably won't be a lot of 30-pound stringers called today. Dollar Bill Lowen was, got that nickname because he was always in the cut. Never got the win, but he got that two years ago on Pickwick Lake in Florence, Alabama. And, man, it was a special win. You know, very few wins where you just see all the pros around the state just happy to finally see it happen for him. Yeah, exactly right, including myself. Bill Owen, a great career, a good person. His family supports him very well. Everyone wanted to see him win his first event. And, man, it was absolutely incredible to see him finally raise that blue trophy over his head. Oh, Nancy. Oh, baby, stay on. Please stay on. 
Oh my gosh. Please stay on. Please. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah! Woo! Look at the size of that one! Oh my gosh! It is big, folks at home. It's giant. Holy moly. Oh my God. Just in case you ever wonder what can make a grown man scream like a little child. An eight pounder on Championship Sunday, and that's exactly what Bill Lowen had. And that initiated Team Scream to get very, very loud at the way in, and with good reason. We're a long way from Championship Sunday, not really that long, but a lot of fishing ahead of us here today. Brandon Cobb still stays top of the leaderboard. Who in that list stands out as somebody you got to watch to make a, make a move? Uh, Tyler Rivette, he should be immune to this win. I think he's going to make a move later in the day. Well, we'll be following it all day long. Don't go anywhere because Lake Okeechobee's heating up. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Got a big weigh-in happening this afternoon, our semi-final Saturday weigh-in. We're weighing 50 anglers and whittle it down to our top 10, and they'll want to load that Yeti hot seat for the Sunday weigh-in, but our Yeti hot seat right now being led by Brandon Cobb. I don't know how hot the hot seat is right now, <laughs> Davey. It's a little chilly out here. Yeah, a little chilly out here, and still a lot of fishing to go. It'll be interesting to see how the wind continues to affect the lake. Fish are biting fairly well this morning. A little, not quite as good as yesterday, but still fairly well. Here's some scenes from yesterday's way, and it was a parade of bass pandas. And there's young Cooper Gallant, Elite Series rookie from Canada. The G-man, Gerald Swindle, found himself inside the top 10. It just seemed like big fish after big fish. Absolutely incredible. I, I think it surprised a lot of the people that were at the weigh-in yesterday how many seven-plus pounders were weighed in. Patrick Walters always seems to be in the mix. You know, so he has always a great start to the season. I mean, these southern fisheries work out great for him. Another guy in that book, Drew Cook. Yeah, absolutely. Drew Cook and Patrick Walters will probably be in the final mix for Angler of the Year this year. They're both great anglers. They're always in the mix and, and looking for that first AOI trophy. Tyler Rivette, wow, did he put on a show on live on the stage yesterday, but no bigger show than the C-O-double-B Brandon Cobb, 32 pounds, 15 ounces, the VMC monster bag of the tournament. And the thing that stood out to me when we saw Kendi holding up his fish, he's got one in the boat right now, bigger than either of those fish he held up yesterday. Yeah, a great start for Steve Kendi. You think about Brandon Cobb's limit though yesterday, over a six pound per fish over six pound average for largemouth bass that's absolutely incredible that's stringer of a that's a stringer of a lifetime on any day let alone a bass master elite series tournament day and fishing around a lot of other anglers it wasn't like he had a big area all to himself how does that happen when you know we've heard anglers talk about having 30 anglers in one spot when somebody stands out like that is are they in the right zone? Are they doing something a little different? <laughs> Usually both. You have to be in the right area, first and foremost. You have to be around six-pounders to catch six-pounders. But when when you're catching, you know, I'm out of shape. 20 fish and, and, you know, the six-pound average versus anglers around him, there were some anglers that fished around him yesterday that only weighed in 11 or 12 pounds. So he certainly was doing something right also. Really shocking that Ravette's had a slow morning. Yeah. Like at dinner last night, we were talking about. I just 
couldn't see a way that that doesn't happen, and I still feel that way. I feel like it's going to happen for him today, but why would those fish be affected? I mean, it's the deepest fish. I mean, the average depth in the lake is 9 feet, and he's fishing at 22 feet of water. Why would they be affected? Well, they, they, they really shouldn't be. The, the key, he, he's on one area. I didn't want to go into this too much day one and day two, but he's fishing the river, and he's fishing, a, you know, a, a big stretch of it, but he has one key spot that uh, maybe by day three it just hasn't replenished, and he's on that spot right now. But And you see there are some fish there. You see there on his yeah. forward-facing sonar. That's him scanning, looking for those fish, but... Uh, a big part of his success has been on basically a one cast spot, and uh, I thought it would reload, so to speak, and more fish would move in there, but it doesn't look like it. But there again, Florida fishing, and we've seen it looking at Bass Track the previous two days, there's certain windows that you can catch those fish, and, and hopefully he'll have a couple of those windows when those fish are active. You see there's still fish there. It's so rare and so amazing what he's doing when you think about it. He's doing some, something that not just nobody's doing in this tournament. There was another major tournament here last week. Yeah. And I don't believe anyone was doing it. Like to, to have cracked a code that at this point hundreds of other professional anglers didn't figure out. I mean, kudos to him. That's why I love watching these. Uh-oh. Bassmaster Elite anglers go to different bodies of water. You know, we've been to Lake Okeechobee for a number yeah. of years, but you have a new group. Here he is hooked up. Yeah, not big one. That one. Oh, we've barely hooked. Batty. Pretty. I didn't see nothing. Like, I was just doing it, and nothing was there. I turned around, there was a big dot right behind it. Three, six. We got three already, right? Yeah. All right. This is four. About nine one hundred. Yeah. Two down. Two three. So that is fourth fish, one short of a limit right now. And as we were talking right before that, I don't think that's. I mean, he's gonna. I think he'll he'll do well, but but today we talked about this this morning a little bit. Today's a day with a 20 mile an hour north wind. You just need to, you know, Brandon Cobb, Tyler Levette, Drew Cook, those guys, Steve Kennedy, just a solid limit to make it until Championship Sunday. Here's a great story: Clark Wendlet missed the last two events of the year last year because he had an eye injury, basically, back on the Elite Series and right back where he likes to be in the top ten. Yeah, Clark's a great fisherman a very versatile fisherman and a lot of success here on lake okeechobee one pounder unfortunately for him the area he's fishing and has had so much success the wind is you know not his friend there today he's blowing directly in on the I south bay I'm area Clark is certainly one of those guys. If he can get a 15 to 17 pound limit today, I think it'd be a win for him. Make make the final day championship Sunday and see what happens. Supposed to he will the wind's supposed to calm down and turn around and come from a different direction. At least I hope not. One more pound than what you had. That's true. There's always a bright side in there. Let's just uh, let's just get them all pulled out. Big one. All right. Then you're doing something right. Let's move from.
Clark Wendland, a former Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, to a former Elite Series Rookie of the Year. Jake Whitaker having a great tournament here this week to kick off the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. Oof. Oh, what a... Oh. Remember earlier when I said that was dreams? What Steve Kennedy did? That, that's the nightmare part. Yes. Let's see if it gives him another chance. Well, he might not have to relive that nightmare, but <laughs> this is Bass Life. Of course we're going to relive it and yeah. watch it back. Oof. Great camera work there. That was a big fish. The big ones always get away, but truly, that, that was a big fish. Oh, that hurts on a day like today, especially. Wow, that that's right there is why, you know, that Kendi catch was so celebrated. You know, seeing it when it yeah. happens so because it can go so wrong so easily. And Steve Kennedy, you know, we saw him catch a couple of really nice fish that one eight pounder, but he was very patient, had a couple misses and he'd be patient until the fish actually got the frog. There's your leaderboard and lots of fishing ahead here today. But Brandon Cobb still atop the leaderboard. Tyler Rivette kind of closing in on him. And as you said, Clark Wendlip, we're going to keep an eye on. And who else? Look at Logan Latuso. How cool is that? His first Elite Series uh, event. Absolutely incredible for him. So many great stories. But don't forget about young Cooper Gallant in 10th place at his first Elite Series event. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Hey there, anglers. I'm Fox Weather's Craig Herrera, and this is the Bassmasters Site 1 Elite, and we're looking at weather out on Lake Okeechobee in Florida today. Today, our pros can expect highs in the mid-70s, a little more clouds than sunshine, and a whole lot of humidity. High winds around 20 miles per hour could make it difficult for casting lines, and water temperatures, by the way, are average for bass fishing, coming in right around 67 degrees. On Sunday, temperatures are going to warm up mid-80s, and we have more humidity. However, as we go through the afternoon, the stiff winds will have died down quite a bit. Good luck to our pros out there. Hope they catch some hogs. And don't forget, you can download Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Craig Herrera, everyone at Fox Weather. We, you know, the weather's a big part of the story today. Z, we got way more wind than we had. And you can see we had sunshine two days. Now it's cloudy. Always love when Craig Herrera brings it for us, but yes. uh, actually bringing in water temps this time yeah, around. That's, yeah, stay uh, in your lane, yeah, Craig. Right. Wait, 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 no, no, we like that. We, don't we like that? <laughs> no, I love Craig. He does yeah. a great job. Yeah, and one thing, you know, really listening, <laughs> listening to Dave and Davey, we talked about this actually, the opening of this tournament on Thursday. Always talk about how Florida bass, they like the, the lighter winds, the high skies. We knew today was going to be, and listening to Dave and Davey, this is a survival day in it. But with that being said, being a survival day, it opens that door for guys that were way behind down in 15th to 30th place. We're seeing some movement uh, that corresponds with what you just said there. Mark Zona, as we look at our unofficial leaderboard on Bass Track in a few minutes, we'll take a, an assessment of that. But uh, Yeah. Well. Someone has done a nice job. Yeah. No doubt about it. Your BMC on point really looking. Yesterday, so many big topwater fish for Steve Kennedy. BMC on point, definitely going to be this right here. And if you look at a lot of his explosions, they have been in areas, holes in those dollar pads where a lot of these females are either coming into or setting up to spawn holes in the pads. 
side of it is good execution yesterday and today so Stay far for Steve Stay Kennedy. On Stay on there. See Steve Kennedy executing on a big eight pound or better large mouth here. How you land the Saw young Jake Whitaker <laughs> missing a giant right before the commercial break. BMC on point. Oh, God. Steve Holy Kennedy. smokes, look at this. Bowed up. Eight pound, one ouncer, and I think currently Such is still the Phoenix Boat's big bass of the day, maybe? Come no, no, it. we got a bigger one. Cody Huff has put an eight pound, five ounce fish on Bass Track, Ron. Wow. He's trying to <laughs> climb inside our top 10. He's got a tough road to hoe. He started 39th. BMC on point, Steve Kennedy. Mm hmm. Steve, but that would cut the, cut his deficit to uh, Cobb and Rivette in and, half. And if basically. you watch his cast, see where his frog is right there, a little popping frog, not fishing a standard frog that we see, you know, other times on the Bassmaster Elite Series, visualizing where those spawning beds are, and it kind of gives it away from the surface. You'll just see like a, looks like a basketball, a beach ball circle, where those bass could be spawning, and it could be it could be a 10-inch male with a female that size or bigger. Actually kind of tipping one thing that Craig Herrera was talking about, 67 degree water, actually being serious about this. Yesterday we got up to 70 to 71 degrees after about midday. And that's when this lake absolutely exploded. You wouldn't think it if you don't bass fish a lot. Just a, a one degree spike in, in the spring is such a huge difference as far as the activity oh, no. level of these fish. I told you to tell me about that zipper. <laughs> All phases of the spawn going on right now and have been for a while and will be for a while. Somebody's going to notice. <laughs> and normally, Z, you're talking about water temperature. Normally, we're on lakes where it's 15, 20 feet deep. And water temperature, what we read out on our graphs, is just a foot or two under the surface. But these guys are fishing two I to four feet of water. So that ago, is the entire water column is that water temperature. It's not <laughs> drastically different. <laughs> uh, got our first bag over 20 pounds on Bass Track. Logan Latuso sure. with a six-pounder. He's got two five-pounders there. He's wow. topped. 20 pounds, he's up to fourth place, started 20th. One of our rookies from Louisiana, Logan Latuzzo. Got some word from veteran on the Bassmaster Elite Series who is fishing today, Greg Hackney, lives near Logan Latuso, said he is the real deal. Oh, really? Absolutely. Okay. He finished sixth <laughs> in the <laughs> opens three times. Oh, come on. When the, when the top five qualified for the elites, so barely missing it multiple years. His dad knocked him out one oh, year, God, too, Ronnie. <laughs> well, he is the currently leading the rookie of the year. Uh, rookie of the year race, the Falcon Rod. I wore rookie these the same race. pants day early days. yesterday. I thought they were in the dirty clothes, but apparently my wife washed them and put it on top. And Another big mover today, Australian Carl Jacobson's up to fifth place from 22nd. He's got a couple five pounder in, in his uh, five fish limit. Peel off of Steve, Steve Kennedy here. Talking about rookies, let's talk about a rookie who started in our top 10 today. That is Cooper Gallant. A little slower for him as it has been for so many of us today. Yeah, and the interesting thing really that's gone on in South Bay, this area was dead. Not a lot of big stringers on day one. Absolutely exploded yesterday on the south end of Lake Okeechobee. And we're seeing, definitely seeing some bites down there today, but not the big females little that guy. were caught there yesterday because they got throttled between Cooper Gallant, oh. Clark Wendelin, no Lee Libacy caught his fish down there, and Bill Lowen. Not start growing. That's 12, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's 12. I don't even... It's been pretty slow as far as big bites go, but 
still early, it's only nine o'clock. Getting bites, so that's good. Just wanna make sure I got five so I don't make any mistakes here. I got five. That's my limit. And just for perspective, a lot of our guys who really knocked it out of the park yesterday started with a small Ooh. limit of five fish. Look at that boat tour. Yeah. You ever been in one of those when it goes They're up They're very land? subtle and quiet too, Tommy. They don't <laughs> yeah. spook a lot of the they shallow water. They slank around. around. They, they don't sure. well, way to think. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely slank around. Beautiful alligator tour. Love that. It's a different world down there in South Florida. So different this fishery than any place else these anglers will visit during the you course of the season. You remember the movie Wild Things with Matt Dillon? I do It not. was actually taped right here. <laughs> On Lake Okeechobee. It absolutely yeah. was not. It was not. It was not. <laughs> and that's what I was it's a great movie. Trying though. to tell you. Tommy, you yeah. fell for that <laughs> one too. It's too, too easy. Zona was cover pulling our legs. <laughs> Brandon yes. Cobb started with the lead today, still on top, but we got so much more yet to come. <laughs> Tomorrow, the 2023 NASCAR regular season gets underway with the Great American Race. The Daytona 500, tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Give me a pick, Tommy. Come on now. Well, I just, <sighs> yeah. Joey Logano, maybe your friend, I, I maybe your I, buddy. I, uh -huh. I don't know. Martin Truex has been strong so far, but I think Joey Logano saw strong, strong pick for tomorrow. I don't know because Kevin Harvick said he's going to end all of his debtors this Ooh. season in his final year, so Logano may I be his first him target. 900 times in a row. Well, he hasn't really no, has I'm not, not saying to win. I'm saying I he might take time. out some of the picks. We're going to take him <laughs> slink on back yep. down to the south yeah. side of Lake Okeechobee right now. A little bit of action down there. A lot of smaller male bass being caught. Get back out of the water with him. An Angler of the Year on the Bassmaster Series, Clark Wendland. Put your poles down right now. Y'all put your poles down. You can stay right there and bump on me. I don't care, but just don't go any farther. One right there for Clark Wendell. Listen to what he said right there. Put your power poles down to his camera boat chasing him. Clark said, when you got a bite, and we have seen that the last two, we've seen that the last two decades here, Wherever you get one, one bite, just saturate that area. I didn't, I didn't lose that one. <sighs> huh? I don't know. What happened was is that the bait got hung at the same time the fish hit, so I can't tell. And I thought I was just hung, and then all of a sudden I kind of feel it, you know, kind of pulling. I don't know. I'll take that, though. Well, we're going to be with Clark tomorrow, aren't we? It looks like There's it. There's no doubt about it, yep, friend. Yep. Well, now I just need three. <laughs> One of the best all-arounders there is. Universally respected in sport of fishing. Celebrate. Surprise. He's sneaky, when too. Fish, <laughs> when, I, when he jumped first time, what I do you was mean? like... He doesn't want, want to let out how he's I mean, catching them for the <laughs> final day. That was a nice one. Yeah. One of the reasons that area's got so much pressure the last month on Lake Okeechobee. How big do you think he was? Oh, he's at least five. I know that's why I said I'm putting him at five. Yeah, put him at five. That's good. I like your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I, know he's, I know he's not five. Clark in our top five now. 
good day yesterday, solid day, put him in the top 10 to start this semi-final Saturday. Clark's AOI win came in the craziest year of bass fishing ever, 2020, where had a long extended break with no tournaments, and then we had a bunch in the fall where he dominated. Clark say, even though the wind's blowing, be very, very methodical, saturate these little irregularities, just small depression, small ditches on this flat. <laughs> 20 pound fluorocarbon line, swimming worm, Ronnie, take it away. Well, Clark is one of those guys that maybe wasn't a high pick. He missed the end of last season with an eye issue, but he has gotten that taken care of and back better than ever. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. We're at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and I wanted to talk about Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. If you're new to Bassmaster or this is your first season playing fantasy fishing, there's a couple things to look out for. When you look at your roster, you can select five different buckets, and these guys are kind of bracketed based on their angler of the year points. So we're going to have 20 or so anglers per bucket, five different buckets. And when you think about it, do you go with the chalk guys? And I'm talking about the high percentage, the one that the rest of the fantasy fishing players are selecting. Do you go with the home favorites? Such tried that this week, and we'll see at the end of the week how his team fared going by the highest pick in each bucket. But looking at our top five after two days, these guys have kind of separated themselves and if they have a, a decent day today, they should make the top 10 and get plenty of points for their teams. But looking at the percentages, these guys, for the most part, were very low percentage picks under the radar. It could be based on what bucket they're in. When you're at the top bucket, bucket A, like Patrick Walters and Drew Cook were, those guys are the top performers from last season. There's a lot of good options to choose from. The percentages can be skewed. Meanwhile, when you're Steve Kennedy, who is a notorious top tier pro, but had a tough season and was in the lowest bucket, bucket E, coming into this event, 17.8%. He was one of the more highly selected anglers. I think only Hank Cherry beat him in bucket E with 20%. 17% is quite a big percentage, but it's paying off this week. Uh, and then for Tyler Rivette and Brandon Cobb being in bucket B and C, they are very low percentage as well. The one thing to look out for is you can never bank on who's going to catch the biggest bag of the tournament or the biggest bass of the tournament, but those bonus points can help pull away big time at fantasy fishing. If you had Brandon Cobb on your team, you got the biggest bag yesterday of the tournament and the biggest bass. We'll see if someone can break 32-15 for the bag or 8-12 uh, for the big bass. We'll see about that. But if you do want to log in and start next week, we have back-to-back -back elites to start the year. You can scan the QR code to play Fantasy Fishing or go to BassmasterFantasy.com. I will not tell you, Tommy, how good or bad my team is doing until tomorrow because oh, what? What? I'm a little disgraced at my performance. The king of fantasy You're the king is, of fantasy. What I, I always come slow out the gate. I have a terrible three-point stance the first 10 feet of my season which is the first event always my worst 10 king feet, likes you know. to do that come slow out of the game yeah, yeah and you gotta you gotta i want to run through the line as fast as possible at the end but i just swapped up things came to the opposite side of the river away from the wind and i mean first cast i just missed one there's a couple swimming around there oh Lot of the anglers in the field, a lot of the folks that are covering this tournament on TV, online, thought Tyler Rivette's deal that he found to himself in the Kissimmee River was going to be bulletproof, not proving that way so far here today. Much slower than the first two days of this tournament for Tyler Rivette. Four small ones in the boat for Tyler. Mission to all these anglers find a couple of big females or more if you can manage it. It's been the key to success so far, but Ron Cobb, Tyler Vett, Steve Kennedy closing the gap. Behind those two a little bit right now. Logan Latuso, the big move of the day up in the top four. Pretty incredible. Clark Winlet, we saw him just land a good one. He's settling in on a special place. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hustler! No way! Yeah! 
You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Bassmaster Live kicking off our 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series here on incredible Lake Okeechobee, this giant natural lake down here in South Florida. Vegetation is one of the main things these guys have got to work into their plan. It's where they find the structures that these fish can be found on. If you find the right one, you've done well. But the weather can affect things. Davey Height is going to spill us in. He's out on the lake to tell us how the anglers prepare. So it's, it's really neat seeing something so different. We, we see this forward-facing sonar. The technology has come a long, long way. But with Megalive, uh, I'm able to tell exactly what Tyler Rivet's doing. He's having a great tournament here this week uh, in the Kissimmee River, uh, doing something very different than most of the field. He's using his forward-facing sonar, and he's, he's going down the bank a lot, uh, just casting a swim jig, keeping his eye on the, on the forward-facing sonar. And you can see fish like you see right here. Those are bass. You see right there my forward-facing, only about, only about 10, 12 feet away from, from the boat and about uh, 14 feet deep. Those are the fish, instead of just going down the bank, using his uh, swim jig, catching those fish that most people fish for, he's able to see those fish that are out there in you know, 12, 13, 14 feet of water, throwing a jerk bait um, and, and some different baits out there to those fish. So it's really incredible um, seeing these fish. And a lot of them are, as Tyler would say, sockelay, crappie, crappy, white perch, you know, a lot of different names for them. And he's caught a few of those but a lot of them are also bass. You can tell the bigger ones are bass and, and kind of the way they act and the way they respond to a bait. There's, there's another bass there out, out there a little, little bit deeper. Most of those fish here on the Kissimmee River don't get fished for very often. They don't have baits around them a whole lot because people fish the targets along the shoreline. So really, really cool what he's doing. I, I've been able to see these fish with the hummingbird mega live. It's absolutely incredible. Our sport is changing and uh, I can only imagine what's going to happen five more years from now. Happen five tournaments from now with real time mega live. That yeah. should be fun, especially a lot of the venues when we get up north. Going to head back across the river from where Davey Height was at right there with Tyler Rivette. A little bit slower today, trying to fill out his five bass limit, but definitely have lost the size so far for this Louisiana angler. What's that? Well, I'm gonna be honest. It sucks. <laughs> it's uh, not what I really expected. Um, I figured, you know, cloudy. The wind was blowing, similar to how I found them the first day for what well, the first time. Yeah, first day for practice. It was just windy, and uh, I think it was actually sunny though. Um, but they're just, they're there. I mean, they're obviously still there. I just got to get that bite window. I'm really just trying to get some two, three pounders right now just to kind of calm me down. Uh, it's a lot better than when you got five fish in the boat. I know we could catch it. I just got to, it's just so hard to sit there all day and I don't want to keep showing them the bait. Just got to wait till they turn on, I guess. Just try to get lucky, catch another four pounder. Like I did yesterday doing this, but hopefully we'll get to the point where I could call it again. That was nice. So, so far, I mean, it's slow. I got three fish for eight pounds, maybe nine pounds. I don't know. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty slow, but yeah, I still think there's fish in here. We still got good water. I was worried about the water. The water still looks great. So I think there'll be fish in here later today. It's just the one thing I'm a little worried about is the sun pulls them up. I mean, that's what it gets warm. They pull up in here. They start getting ready to spawn or finish spawning to come back out, things like that. And we don't have sun. So 
It's one of those things to where, yes, it's not that good in here right now, but the other areas I know with some clean water, it's probably the same. I know fish are coming in here. I know fish are using this area. So I'm probably gonna give it at least a, most of the day or a few hours in here to, uh, to try to see if they start biting. Cause that's the way it's been every single day. It's been kind of slow, kind of slow. And then when they start biting, it's, it's obvious. I mean, I start catching them. Everybody around starts catching them. So it's kind of one of those things. Do you run around and try to find them biting somewhere or wait on to potentially start biting where you are? And it's kind of always the curse in Florida. You can, uh, as somebody told me one time, if you pick your trolling motor up once, you might get a check. If you pick it up twice, you're going to finish last. And that's just Florida fishing. And uh, so I'm just, Gonna buy my time, fish slow, cover every inch of this place, different baits, and uh, wait for some to start biting. I still think there's some fish in here, but it, uh, I think waiting on that window may or may not come, but it's got me to where I am, and I know there's plenty of fish in here, so we'll see what happens. Brandon Cobb waiting on that window. Boy, when it opened up yesterday. It was, it was something. Oh, man. It was uh, about a 90-minute flurry of a beatdown. Your marathon peak performance, not of just yesterday but really th this entire tournament this was a one cast spot okay marathon peak performance brandon cobb who has not fared very well in the state of florida got to tape a show with him a couple weeks ago and he said do not put me on your fantasy team Nick okachobe <laughs> is not nice to me well he has exercised those demons in this tournament and really what he called this small sweet spot a one cast spot if you look right there there's a little pig trail coming into that clearing he said, I don't know if it was a hard bottom. There was a little scruff of hydrilla, but all of these giants coming on one key cast, a zoom fluke stick with a 3 8 ounce weight and a chatter bait when that wind got up just a little bit, making a ripple. But what Brandon Cobb said, he said this was a stop sign. A lot of these bass, what he felt were either leaving from spawning or coming in to spawn. He felt like he was on the stopping point before they would funnel into those lily pads to actually make their beds. Your marathon peak performance, 32 pounds and 15 ounces, Brandon Cobb. I think 2% of those fantasy fishing players just must be avid Brandon Cobb fans to go against his will and still put him on the team. All sure, Cobb, I'm glad I took Cobb family members. <laughs> yeah. And Neil Paul. Yep. <laughs> Good signs. We might have sun breaking through this afternoon a little bit. It's gonna warm up too. Yes, sir. Ugh. That's real nice there. And move off our leader, Brandon Cobb, right now. Get over to Steve Kennedy, who has put a giant in the boat today. He has, and if you really notice the common theme, whether it's Tyler Rivette, Brandon Cobb, guys like Steve Kennedy, so many of these giant stringers coming in such confined one acre, not even one acre areas. Not today. In a sense, it doesn't matter when you catch an eight pounder. If Steve Kennedy caught that eight pounder today at 2 p.m. or 8 a.m., it doesn't necessarily matter. It goes to his bottom line. It's a huge help in Florida, but the impact of catching an eight in the first hour and a half of the morning just frees him up to know that he doesn't need, he doesn't need a Hail Mary at the end of the day. He just needs to fill his limit, no, maybe call once or twice with four pounders, and he's right there on pace what he needs. The other thing, we have covered Steve Kennedy for years, and whenever you're in a big weight tournament where he knows, I only need five Racing bites. If I can rings. execute on five bites, I will fish a style. If I connect with five, I will blow their doors out, and that's exactly what he's doing with that bait right there. And as you informed us yesterday, this use of the frog on Okeechobee is, is, a, is an anomaly, right? Yeah, you know, I talked to Steve a little bit about it. Is is it's a 
popping frog, which you, that's the cup lip on the, on the front of that frog, it, it, it's a definitely a deal here. But we've never, the, the years that we've had tournaments oh, yeah. on Okeechobee, Elite Series tournaments, it's never been a primary player to get you to Championship Sunday. Oh, exactly right. Yep. That is a sign. It is that time of year. A lot of spawning bass, a lot of spawning grebes. Now, what, uh, well, it's the first I'm one we've seen sure this on that week. One. That is the first one. Hmm. I think we have seen some grebes. Nope. Maybe. No? That's no. it? Okay. Be on the lookout. Keep the eyes peeled. Not Tommy Z has spent his whole life studying. I understand. And we just can't jump that. in and be at his level exactly. well, I mean, I'm just, off the rip. Okay. I'm just trying to be a contrarian. <laughs> Brad Watley just uh, completed his limit. He's third biggest of the day, 15 pounds, five ounces. He's got a 6-4 in there. He's jumped from 38th to 13th. Looked at the map where he's fishing. Looks like he's fishing on the, on the uh, in Clewiston, right on the expressway there, it looks like. He's way back. He gained a lot of points. I think he was in the 60s outside the cut after day one. So if he ends up, even if he doesn't make the top 10, if someone moves from 60s to top 15, you gain a lot of points. Yeah. Tyler Bet trying to get the wheels back on the bus. Slow going in the Kissimmee River for Tyler Rebet. Still in all, he's only trailing our leader, Brandon Cobb, by ounces. Less than a pound for Tyler Rebet. We'll be back to catch up with him and all the rest. Site one Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee. This is semifinal Saturday. 50 anglers have made it to today. Only 10 will advance. We have got an incredible field we're watching here today. When you look at our top 12 right now, you see three rookies, a great rookie class again this year, and two uh, progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year winners, mm. representing three actual wins in that category right there. So it's a, it's a rough crowd. They're very, very good, and they are ready to go. On this one, Brandon Cobb has done better than anyone else, just by ounces. Ahead of Tyler Rivett, Steve Kennedy, Logan Latusa, one of our rookies, and Clark Winlet, one of our Angler of the Year, former Angler of the Year champions. Let's take it out to Tyler Rivett, second place right now, waiting for things to start popping size-wise. At that point, yes. At that point right there yesterday, but I mean, they were chasing, just not, not a. Uh, they're not eating yet. And that's so not a big I'm bass. I figured I'd come try to the bank mm -hmm. with no wind. But catching five and bass today, you could sure. tell, should calm Tyler Rivette down just a little bit. Fishing a suspending jerk bait looks a lot like his roommate Hank Jerry's design, kind of. Try to get more information. I got like tomorrow. two, three and a half. And that, that's it. And all of them are like this. That should. Oh, it says five. it right there currently <laughs> in first. It should get him in barely, barely ahead of Cobb, but he does have a limit now. Cobb's still on three. Rebecca said on day number one on his front facing sonar. If he would mark three or four of them in a pod, yeah, I thought a little I was gonna wolf pack pull of them. Up this morning, it would just be on fire. They were there. Every time those bass would commit quickly, they would get it competitive with that jerk bait. But when he would mark those rogues, those individual giants, those were the hardest ones to catch yesterday and day number one of this tournament. Had, had to leave them for a while. Too. Yeah, they, they, and they I think require that, resting up. Yeah. You, you know, don't don't get them conditioned to the jerk bait. Let them kind of reposition on those little sweet spots, and that's kind of if you watched, he's met, he's not pressed those areas hard. Swindle having a great tournament. That's three. No, 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 that's three bass. That's a pound and three quarter. That's number three, though. But that's a pound and three quarters. He ended the season so strong last year. The Mississippi River had a shot to win his first Elite Series. I mean, he's won so much in the sport. Didn't get a win last year. This could, we always say, every year it could be a swindle year. We'll see.
Well, let's look at our Yamaha midday report, show you what we've seen today. Might as well start right here with our two-time former progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year champion, Gerald Swindle, vowing to make a run at it this year. Yeah, exactly right. A Zoom Mag Speedworm and a Jackhammer Bladed Jig. Really, Gerald Swindle said he got to watch the beatdown from Brandon Cobb yesterday and finally just said, I had to leave the area. <laughs> I was getting my teeth kicked in and bailed, but has definitely stayed in this event. So he thinks he might have found a spot that should get him to Championship Sunday. Started the day in the top 10. He's just outside of it right now in Ooh. 11th place. Let's get over to our other former Bassmaster Progressive Angler of the Year, Clark Winlet, won it back in 2020. It looked like he kind of got into a little something special. Yeah, Clark Wendelin has two good ones in his live well right now, one over four and one definitely over five, a swimming worm on a 316 ounce weight. And the one thing about Clark Wendelin, he said, I think I have the bait and I think I know exactly where these big ones are setting up down in South Bay. As we said, so much pressure the last month, the last 40 years. Clark Wendelin getting it done. We're gonna get back up to the northwest side of Lake Okeechobee where Steve Kennedy fishing around a big crowd, pretty much locking one bait in his hand, popping frog and still getting big bites and most of all, executing them, getting them in the live well. Went through so many fish yesterday and then got into the big ones, made a big difference. Steve Kennedy looking for his fourth. That's that a big bass, series, man. Oh, Tyler Rivette still waiting for some size to show up here. Certainly got uh, less wind to deal with where he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to two-time champion with Bassmaster Classic. One of Tyler Rivette's roommates, Tank Cherry, said, man, this, this, he's a great fisherman. Tyler's a great fisherman that needs a break. He needs a break today. Finding a couple big ones like he did yesterday still. Definitely in the mix. As you said, Ronnie Primo just kind of squeaked in the lead right now. And there we're going to head back out on the northwest shore. Brandon Cobb. Definitely not the big ones that we saw yesterday with Brandon Cobb, but slowly getting to his five bass limit. Brandon with almost 33 pounds yesterday. Just a phenomenal day. 33 pounds. Something no one was predicting. You just see a bass like that today with Brandon Cobb, and you're like, oh, it is just so terrible out there. <laughs> it's <laughs> miserable. Yeah. I think the best time of the day is coming. We get a little bit of sunlight. We're supposed to get right after noon today. That's let's your see. midday report. And let's, we're going to go back Rav to Steve Kennedy right now. Ravette is leading by about three ounces right now on Bass Trek. He's led for about 10 minutes. Somebody has answered. Brandon Cobb has answered both times. He has taken the lead. She is. Oh. He's still in there. I'm not feeling a head shake. Ice a begging. I'm not feeling anything, but last time I, every time I pulled on it like this in the first two days, I got nothing. Oh, she's still there. She's still there. Where is she? Where is she? Come on, baby. No! I got her. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But yeah, every time I pulled on that the first day, I'd pop it loose. That's another probably five something. Oh, come on. It's five and a half. Five eight. I called it. I called it. Come on. Take it, man. Good job. I still don't have five. But we're we're doing it. Oh. That's awesome. That's what we needed. Great. I told you she wasn't over here by herself. Awesome, awesome oh. camera work. Jake Latondra's right there. That is, you. that is bass I fishing. It. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Boy, and if you're one of those other boats, when you see that happen, not once but twice, you're like, wow, dang it. 
A lot of people have been in that position during the course of this tournament, having to watch. What does that give us? Guys lean on them hard. It's like 18. terrible, but it's also great. You're like, there's still big ones in here Absolutely. and coming in. You're right. hope, you know, hopefully they're not all yeah. males. But that he said it's not even his limit. He's four, but he had a five-pound deficit of five and a half. He's now in the lead. He's the leader. So someone Seven answered the call when Rivet took the lead. Watch this. There she is. Still in there. You get to hear that sound of that braided line Not cutting those pads. Shake. And really, that the one thing That's that you can game. see that he's done different is going to Not all of these anything. fish, all of these That's big something. ones. Every Day one, he made the comment he pulled out of a lot days. of them, trying to horse them out yeah, of those dollar she's pads. Still she's still there. That is awesome. A heavy line, heavy tackle. It's still not a kick in. Big bass, getting these big things stage, out of there. big dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Where is she? Where is she? Come on, baby. No. Have we seen him lose any <laughs> yesterday and today? Yesterday. Did we? Oh, them up, was there? That's yeah. awesome. And he, he yeah, talked about it. Every time I pulled on that the first day, I'd oh. pop it loose. That's another. I don't know if we saw him. Five something. Wow. That is so great. That will warm you up in late winter. <laughs> Steve Kennedy. Do you like that better than forward facing sonar catches? Tom? 17. Yeah, so let's be honest. I, okay, I'll have, let me think about that. 17 million percent more, yes. <laughs> Steve Kennedy dealing with the changing conditions so far better than anyone else that started in our top 10 today anyway. And Steve Kennedy with a lead by ounces ahead of Tyler Rivette. Brandon Cobb hanging in there as well. We got some more fishing to show you. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power pole. Skeeter boats. Progressive insurance. And by Rapalon. Nine stops, nine big events comprise the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the best of the best. This is the kickoff event here at Lake Okeechobee, and we are fast approaching the halfway point in day number three. It goes by very, very quickly. And things have happened quickly today. Brandon Cobb started the day mm. with a lead. Him and Tyler Rivette a good ways away from the rest of the field. But Steve Kennedy, representing the rest of the field, has gotten it done this morning so no far. No doubt Tommy Sanders. And you know what this next music is going to mean. Steve Kennedy told us he was worried about the cloud cover. A lot of these big bass would go into a, a darkness retreat like we've seen Aaron Rodgers do so often no, this time of year. No. That has not been the case today, <laughs> Tommy Sanders. If you look at Steve Kennedy not getting many bites today, but the ones that he has gotten, number one, they have got his bait and he has got to them. Easiest power pole replay of the day ever. Steve Kennedy, 17 pounds and nine ounces unofficially, and that? is only on four bass. How about that? Yes. Got room to grow. That is a fact. We look at this giant. You ever seven. been on a darkness retreat? Uh, no, no, no. Not I back in college? I, I never have. No, you can be honest. <laughs> no, I, if you live in the darkness, why do you need to retreat to it? Yes. <laughs> Sensory deprivation. All right, this one's a reach, but we're going to talk about the mercury move of the day. Okay. Well, <laughs> actually, with all of those north winds, a lot of the anglers going down to South Bay taking the rim canal, taking the canal around the west side of the lake, which is going to cost them a little bit of time, but it's not going to beat the fire out of them. Mercury move of the day, guys like Clark Wendelin, Cooper Gallant, Bill Lowen, Lee Livesey, all of our anglers getting to the south end of the lake, not taking the beating. That's going to be your Mercury easy ride. Mercury sure. move of the day. Smooth ride move, it is. move of the day. <laughs> Get out to one of our rookies here, our high performing rookies to be sure, Cooper Gallant. Starting the day in the top 10, currently in 10th. Just got sunny down in South Bay. Looking nice. Such nailed it. We are going to see some sun, which always helps Okeechobee. Big one, I think. Nope. 
God. Got me excited. Hooked in the corner again. jig most of this tournament. These guys practiced in some adverse conditions earlier in the week, kind of preparing them for what they're a little taste of what they're facing today. Pretty much 20 to 40 mile per hour winds almost the entire practice, which I think that obviously lowered the expectations of that was what, what it was. Yeah. And then very, very warm nights, which is so huge this time of year and anywhere. Warm, warm nights, warmer days, a lot of sun. Definitely a big push came in, especially you could see that wave of bass came yesterday mid-morning. Logan Latuso is at it again, a four and a half pounder. He's up to 23 pounds, three ounces on Bass Track. He's within three pounds, three ounces of the lead. Suit and something to be said about Logan Latuso. Obviously, we're going to be called, he will be in our top 10 tomorrow. He is all by himself. There is not, not a competitor within five miles. Steve Kennedy watching a little group yeah. trip. Party barge. Mm -hmm. that, that, that group's been there all week. Spring break and he's dancing. Uh. He's feeling it. Let's see. The spot. Let's get that kid well, dancing. <laughs> Let's get that kid dancing again. <laughs> Maybe Logan's dancing. He's got a five five, yeah. five two, six oh, four eight, and a two and a quarter pounder. I'm in a boat. <laughs> Seeing Cooper Gallant, it does, it's, it's crazy. We have so many young anglers. Looking at our top 10, we have six anglers that fished in college or the high school series. The other four have a combined four elite series wins, three angler of the years, and multiple are over the million or $2 million mark in BAS win, winning. So we have the, the young guns of the sport and some of the most wily veterans in our top 10 on camera today. Tommy, who's gonna Goodness. win the tournament? Who's gonna win the tournament? Steve Ooh, Kennedy, Steve Kennedy wow. is looking good. <laughs> I got him on my fantasy team. So oh, no, Steve we Kennedy. can't do that. that oh, we got to do that, that way. No. Absolutely. Can't hear that Those later. Well, we have seen some great <laughs> stuff over the past two and a half days here. Today, a little bit more challenging, but that's part of the game, watching how these, the best in the business, deal with change. We are spoiled when we say today is challenging after yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, awesome it's still morning great. Absolutely. Terrific morning of fishing. We've got a weigh-in coming up at 3.30 on Bassmaster.com. And our coverage continues on Bassmaster.com. After we leave, we'll see you right here tomorrow, though, at 8 Eastern. See you then. job. I didn't get any help from anybody else. Um, the leader could stumble and then the second place guy have an average day win the tournament. The leader didn't close it out. I want to I want to close it in the uh, Bassmaster wins that I've had. I've, I've been able to close them strongly every time. So um, it, that's part of experience. That's part of time and how, how you look at things. And but you know, there's guys that say, yeah, I'm right where I want to be. Well, you're in 10th place. And I'm like, well, <laughs> okay. You've hit the 10th place guy here will have a chance. Oh, they will have a chance. Then maybe guy. that's the point. I'm right where I want to be, which is I want to have a chance. Yep. Yeah. Just having that opportunity. You know. Yeah, this is, a, this is a place that, you know, even if you're having a bad day, you know, as Bill Owen didn't have a fish at 1 o'clock, you can run into a 20, 30 pound bag. So you have to stay, have a positive mindset throughout the entire day and 
just remember that you can roll up on them at any point. Did you uh, did you tell yourself that over and over? Over and over until over and 5 p.m. when I checked in and. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to give you, I got a feeling you're going to catch them. And I know you will. I mean, the, the, you you get here, and last year's crew that, that's here now, which Alex is part of, is probably the strongest first-year class the Elite Series has had. Absolutely. And so the, there's there's got all these guys are going to catch them. And we see that, and even the standings. got Cooper Galan up there. you got Logan Latuso, uh, you know, and a, and a few other, Will Davis, uh, I mean, you know, Never watch little Will. Will's salty. Yeah. He's as young as he is, he's salty. He's had a lot of experience. Well, and and that we, you know, the the good thing about the way that the qualifications are coming for the elite is is that a guy that's coming up is 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 ready, and and there's even though there is a two year grace, he's still prepared and ready, and then you know the game. Yeah. Yeah. And and you didn't get here by fishing in Connecticut. Did no, you? I did not. <laughs> no, you did not. And you know, and that's that's a that's a big thing to me when I talk to a young angler like you. I'm like, man, it's like almost talking to a Japanese guy, because he did, we don't fish any Bassmaster events in Connecticut. I mean, you know, I mean, I know you have to travel and everything, but you don't go out your back door to Lake Okeechobee or Gunnersville or or some of the places that we we visit too often and and. Uh, being able to figure out new fisheries is is really the key. Yeah, and you know, and then you get into the minutia of how you figure out day to day what Okeechobee could provide or true. will provide, Very what true. the weather is going to do. But I will say, Steve, that this group that we're starting with with 104, I've been here 32 straight years at this level. This is the saltiest bunch of anglers I've ever been around, and most of them under 30 years old. That's what's amazing. The youth have come through with the college bass. Um, it has just absolutely made a difference. They're getting those experiences early. It's building better anglers um, for the Elite Series. It's an amazing thing to see. So I, if, if, I, if, if I'd been in college fishing, I'd still be a second-semester sophomore. So um, I, I'm, I'm just amazed at these guys, at what they can do, and, and how versatile they are at such a young age. I had to learn coming along. I had to oh, no. coming along during, I started at 26 in, in Bassmaster competition, and I, I'd never fished grass. I'd never fished right. gin clear water. So I had to learn as I went. Well, These kids come in with that knowledge. In the first segment, we talked a little bit about one-dimensional anglers, which 30 years ago, one-dimensional anglers could, could dominate. Be, could dominate. Mm. But today, that angler has to know a bunch of stuff. But And we're going to, we're gonna, I appreciate you guys coming on, and, and you've really enlightened me in a lot of ways. and. And uh, we're going to continue with Live Mex. After a word with our sponsors, we've got a couple of old guys, not quite as old as Menendez and Thank me, you. but uh, a couple of classic champions, Jason Christie and Hank Cherry coming up. So stick with us, and we appreciate you tuning in. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Mincota. Power Pole. Eater Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalot. Hi. Welcome back to the live mix. This is the classic hour. <laughs> we got the last two, three classics champions. Jason Christie, most everybody, everybody knows Jason. Everybody knows Ch Hank Cherry, and and uh, I'm just thrilled to have both of you on at the same time. Uh, Menendez said I was going to have to sit here like this and, and keep you all from uh, jumping across at each other, but I, I know better. I know you guys respect each other a whole lot. No, he's my best friend. He's the one that handed me a trophy. I did. There That's you right. go. Yeah. Right. And he, um, he eased the pain when we were in the – in the lot because I didn't think that I had a chance to win and I thought I had like 16 and he looked at my fish and he said um, I think you got more than 16 <laughs> so uh, yeah he was he was but he's the only one that got to see my fish too you know yeah. well so that was uh, obviously special moments for both of y'all and y'all kind of uh, ruled the last three years and it's just fantastic and seen both of you come up and, and just incredible so but now we're seeing new heroes today. And we're going to talk about 
one of them specifically <laughs> who is who is your little protege yep uh donna rivette i mean he's just a few ounces out of first you got steve kennedy up there in first kennedy hadn't doesn't have a limit yet but he's got an eight pounder uh tyler rivette has got a limit he's seven pounds out of the lead and he doesn't have anything over four pounds yet which is totally foreign from what we've been seeing out of him but we also feel like that uh, i feel personally that he's he's kind of in the catbird seat he kind of is but tyler tyler with what he's doing especially with that forward facing and throwing that jerk bait um he kind of knew today coming into it, clouds were going to hurt him. I don't know why it is in this river system, but we found out in practice that this, the higher the sun got, the further they got away from the cover. And that's the, that's the key for him with those bigger bites, those pre-spawn fish. I think they get up close to the bank in that low light and they wander off. You know, he's got some hard spots picked out. Um, and I think throughout the day he's going to pick up some fish doing that. But he, I told him today, he just got to battle through the day. Stay up there at the top. The sun's going to shine tomorrow. The wind's going to be light, and that's going to be the day he's going to excel. Right. He's got to understand, you know, you gotta, you've got to win all four quarters. Right. And, you know, just stay in the game, stay in the game. So, I mean, he's, he's doing it right there, and he, he's having an exceptional day. Even though he hasn't caught any big ones, he's still having a better day than half the field had right. in two days. Right. You know, me and Jason both really just, I guess we never, I never got the clue really this week to what was really going on. I mean, I knew that, but. There wasn't enough for both of us to go do that, and he said after his crappy fishing day of practice, I know it. I, well, I, mean, I, I found you, him crappy fishing. I found so him crappy fishing. Part of the deal that we've been talking about on every segment before is is how you guys look at clues and and put together this and do that. I mean, you're looking for you know you're a detective and and uh, you know don't think that Tyler just fell into this. I mean, he figured this out. I mean, you you still have to you know figure something out and and even if it's you're heading to the bank to go to the restroom and learn something i mean you know every part of it is a learning process the one question that i have for you jason is that you know i know how good you are shallow and i know how good you are with you know a moving bait whether it's a frog uh, a, a spinner bait especially but possibly even a chatter bait where to, to walk us through a little bit of where you may have made your miscues. Well, for the people um, that's never fished here, it, TV watching live makes it look so easy. Um, you know, you're just seeing Kennedy right now throwing a frog, and, and I'm so jealous. So when, I, when I watched him catch the eight pounder this morning, I literally headbutted the side of the house that I, I was mad. Um, but if you, there is miles and miles and miles of this stuff. And the issue for me this week, and typically in Florida, is there's not that much with good water clarity. There's a lot of boats around. Uh, I mean, every time you see one of these guys fishing, you look in the background and you see seven or eight boats. And for some reason, that just, it just wigs me out. And, you know, I spent two days of practice um, fishing not the mud but kind of the semi stuff trying to find something that to myself and everywhere these guys are fishing including tyler i was in and practice i went the last day in the Kissimmee river and spent four hours in there and i never uh i didn't see what he saw you know uh on live scope i i uh you know i spent more time up on the bank you know just trying to figure out something but you know to go back talking about tyler it's the new norm I would, I would pretty much bet on moving forward the rest, the next, I mean, while fishing exists, you're always going to have somebody in the top 10 that's looking at them on live scope. Wow. I mean, that, where, where does it not play? You know what I mean? It's just, I mean. Sabine River. Uh, I, I, I'll say <laughs> I no, I'm not, I'm not going to say. I, I, I mean, I can't say that either, yeah. but I mean, that's, that's more of a, more of a, uh, of a hunt and peck kind of so when I won fishery. when I won there I could see them in the bins of I got you you know I I wasn't fishing for them looking that way but you know I knew that the clusters of fish was in the bins of those little creeks um, right you know a lot of them were spotted bass that I wasn't messing with but uh, 
I'm not saying I was looking at them, but it's it's just it's it's just the way it's going to be. And there's going to be tournaments where there's going to be five or seven, but there's always going to be one guy that's going to figure out how to uh, catch them looking at them. I just miss the boat, you know. It's Ooh. I spent a lot of time uh, moving and fishing, uh, but I just did not settle on an area, and. Uh, I just, I mean, I just chose wrong, and, and at the end of the day, I just took a buck kicking this week. And you're going to do it if you fish long enough. Well, and I, and I will remind you that early last year, before you won the Classic, you took a butt, butt whip yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So, and I mean, you know, it, it's part of the game, right? Yeah. I mean, we all, you, you all have to take that yeah. at some point. I'm one of those guys that makes me mad. I mean, I, you know, I, I feel like I did a pretty good job preparing you know, given the circumstances that I had the off season, you know, I was really busy. But I, you know, I spent a month fishing at home. Uh, but this, like, as soon as I leave here today, like, I'll be in my boat, and and I'm just, it makes me mad, and and I don't know, I, I just, it's aggravating because I always, I start, we start in Florida, I don't catch them, and I spend the the rest of the year trying to, you know, fight for every little point that I can get. So. It's actually Hank, less than what we've had. And, and I'm not picking on you. But um, but if I would have called you two weeks ago or a week ago and said, hey, somebody's going to win this tournament on a jerk bait, what would you use? There was no doubt in my mind. Tyler caught a couple nines and a seven when he came down here to pre-fish. Oh, he knew in his so head. He knew what, there was a jerk bait He, he knew in his head what he was going to do. He just didn't know where that was going to be and it, it, it you know years ago you thought it was just a uh, one time a year kind of bait and it's right. just kind of what right. the live scope is advanced for but if the fish's feet don't shad and you get it to him it's just an, another option to throw um well i know jim bitter used to used to wear them out on a jerk bait but not i'm not so sure that was the case at the whole at okeechobee yeah but the whole ironic thing about this is 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 how it even came about the whole me and Tyler and Brock thing is we were at St. John's and had those windy days three or four years ago. Ooh. And Tyler's in the parking lot. Oh, there's a good butt. Missed Dang him. it. And uh, he's like, you might want to go fishing? It was when Robin was down. I don't know, Tyler. I was like, I'll go with you. And he looked at me like this little kid. He's like, really? <laughs> so I grabbed my jerk bait and some flip stuff. He's, he said, I'm going to show you how to punch. I said, well, I'm going to show you how to catch one on a jerk bait. And he laughed at me. <laughs> I proceeded to catch a couple big ones jerking. Tyler started investing in jerk baits. Flash forward, now he's a bigger jerk bait fiend than I am, I think. But when I come down here, I, I tend to overthink it. I'm like Jason. I, I like to kind of get away from the crowd, and you know, going into it, if you don't find, <gasps> get him. Did they get him? No, he missed him again, didn't he? No, he's got to have him. Yeah, he's bowling good. through there. He got him. So Jay jealous. Jason's salivating over there. Yeah. How, how uh, let me ask you, Jason, how, how mad does that make you? It, I mean, like, it just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's, it's uh, oh, it's, I, there's no words. Um, it's aggravating. I thought it was bigger. You know. I really thought it was bigger. You know, not only is he catching them on a frog, he's doing it, and he's just giving everybody around him a lesson. All right, that's a good, solid keeper now he's got four in the box you know it's so funny i'm just saying half pounder yeah i'm sitting here looking at his frog when he's working it i don't know and hank can probably you know attest to this as well you can tell by the action of his frog how much confidence he has in the bait right now you know what i mean like he's just he's he's making that thing look alive and there's days you know when i'm out there throwing a frog and i, I actually caught my biggest fish the first day on a frog of the event which wasn't near big enough but it was my biggest fish whenever you're whenever you got confidence in that thing it's probably the same way with the jerk bait i mean the more confidence you have in a bait the more you just i mean you make it look alive and and i can i can just tell by the way his frog's coming through the holes that he has the utmost confidence and he's not slowing right. down on it well he I knows mean, you know in his mind right now he knows the rhythm he knows the pace and that's yep. why it's coming through it yeah Oh, he's culling. I thought that he only had. So he just culled about a pound and a half, maybe. So. But this place, it's very, you look at this, like Jay said, it looks like it's so easy. This place is the most 
misleading place you'll ever fish in your entire <laughs> life because one bite doing the wrong thing can send you down a rabbit hole here and yep. it just destroy your whole week yeah and that's what happened to me the first day of practice i got on a stretch that was pretty dirty you know and i just put the trolling motor down and you know i had five big bites in a couple of hours and and i just i thought man i don't have to fish around people i can come down here and fish by myself and and uh like you say there's not every bite that you get is the right clue right so one of the things that uh that from my listening to y'all then when i say y'all i'm talking about the whole collective group of of, of elite guys and watching this deal is, is that it seems like these fish are uh, you, you go to this area and you get five good bites and you go back there and you don't do so well. But these fish move so much more than you would expect them to move in that kind of cover. Well, look at that picture right there. You know, he's catching them in the holes right now. That fish has got to move six feet to that mat. He never sees that fish. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's not that they move miles, uh, you know, and, and I've, I've talked to a lot of Florida people down here over the years. You know, the big thing is a lot of these people believe that these big schools of fish live out in the lake and then they come in. I don't agree with that. Uh, uh -huh. I believe that they live in the thick stuff and then uh, they move out to spawn in the open areas and then they move back. I don't know why a bass would want to live out in the middle of that lake. It's, it's chocolate milk, but yeah. I may be wrong. So, but they, I mean, t they can move just a little bit and get you off of your deal. And, and here's the thing, where Steve is, it's a quarter mile to the hard line and it's a half mile to the outside edge. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's a, it's just a, a lot of places to hide, yeah. more or less. Which is good. I mean, yeah. if you're, if you have confidence like he does and you're in the right area, that's good. You got more area to fish. But if you're like me and you were clueless, it's not good. All right. Well, I think we're in the right area right now with Kennedy and and the other anglers, and I'm sitting in the right area between uh, Jason Christie and Hank Cherry, and we're going to take a break here so we can showcase some of our sponsors, but uh, we'll be back with these two giants in just a few seconds or minutes, so stay with us. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Okay, welcome back to Live Mix. This is the Classic Hour. We got Jason Christie, a reigning champion, and the last two years before that, Hank Cherry. And we we just watched these commercials. And so my question to both of y'all is how cool is it you win? You want, it's one thing to win a classic. But the other part of that is, is every time you turn on the television and watch Bassmaster or watch Live Mix or watch a fishing commercial, there's one of y'all holding up a trophy. I mean, it never goes away. I mean, you got to think that's pretty cool. <laughs> what are you hitting me for? <laughs> I was gonna let him go first. Oh, you're gonna let nah, him go. No, it's just I mean that's what we that's what we do it for. That's the end game, that's the goal, that's the Super Bowl. You know, and you wanna get to do it and then you see it on there, it's it's not so much that for me it was highly unexpected because my career was a totally different path than Jason's. I mean he he's won national events is dead now there I just got bits and pieces here and there. I never really got the big chunk and then when I won it once it was kind of, I think it kind of shocked everybody. And then when I won it twice, for me, it was kind of like, okay, this is valid. I actually won an accident. I know what I'm doing. But just to see that, it's cool because my kids get to see it. And I'm kind of like the, even though I'm not a very little guy, but I'm just like the, you know, if you don't give up, keep trying, you know, stuff can happen. You never know what your limitations are. Don't put limitations on yourself because you don't know how far you can go. I mean, I think with Jason, it was just like, it was coming a matter of time. It was coming. It was just a matter of when. Well, you feel like that? It was coming a matter of time. I know you. Well, do. for me, I mean, I got goosebumps right now talking about it. It just, you know, like Hank says, it kind of validates everything. You know, my daughter texted me uh, last night, and I think the words were, Dad, you really suck this week, but, hey, you won the Classic. <laughs> um, 
and that that's the way it is and and for me personally you know over the years all the experiences i had fishing the classic the couple of leads that i lost and stuff there was just so much pressure building up on myself that it was it wasn't much fun you know what i mean like it right. it was there was just a lot of pressure there and and after winning it it just took all that pressure off you know i used to spend a lot of time thinking about the losses and now i don't it's just all about the one that i won and and what's crazy is and hank probably knows this and he probably has a better story than this but once you win one gosh it, it makes me where uh i want to win another one you know it's right. all the attention and you know the love from the sponsors and the fans and stuff like that like um i'll be on my a game Come at every me. classic you know there and you that's go. and that's and that's am i saying that i'm going to win no but like i'll have everything triple right. checked before that event well yeah, both of y'all mentioned something that 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 i think that the rest of the the world probably don't quite key into and and i and it really it moved me but both of you said when you mentioned your children and what it means to them because all of a sudden it validates you being away from home yeah. right yeah and it and it but it validates you in other ways in the eyes of your son mm. and your daughters of course you both have daughters but uh it's just, that's just really cool that uh yeah. they get that well and you know my parents have been my biggest supporters over the years and you know for them to be at the classic both of them you know still healthy doing great uh to watch me win and and uh that that's what meant you know the most and like you said the family i mean my kids gosh hank and i and and the rest of the elite field you miss so much of those special moments when your kids are growing up that you know it and i know even though your kids say hey dad it's i know you're working i know deep down that they uh they question that but mm -hmm. this is you know this is my job and and when you win something like that, you know, they're, they have the same last name. They're proud. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud for them. And honestly, like after this week, I'm embarrassed. You know what I mean? It's the, it's vice versa. Like I, you know, I, I want to call and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. Dad wasn't on his A game this week. You do that, Hank? I do, but the, my kids and Jacqueline, they're to the point. They're just like, you won two classics. Hmm. Get over it. <laughs> Nobody's gonna feel bad for you. Yeah, there's nobody here. That can, <laughs> there is nobody in this town that feels sorry for us two sitting here. Not no. a person. Look, and I got uh, I got three roommates, and they could say, "Oh man, I'm sorry you didn't make the cut." It, look, we're all buddies, but I know deep down, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it puts a different target on you. It doesn't matter. I mean, and you know, and, and you, there's people stereotype you because. Jason's kind of got that stare, and he's got that quiet thing, and I'm supposedly this big, bad, mean guy. But, like, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're just competitors, and when things don't go our way, you can't expect us just to be happy about it and okay. Because if we were just okay, we would both be done fishing right now because we won what we got, and it's okay. It's, it's not okay to be bad. I just, I, this week, it was just an off week. I never really picked up the puzzles to put anything together. What I did, I, I lost one fish in a mat. And when you lose a fish in a mat, you really can't complain. They're all tangled up, coming out of that junk and stuff. So it, it is what it is, but it still doesn't mean I'm happy or I enjoy it. But I just do enjoy being a professional bass fisherman and getting to be a role model, especially for like the kids and the boys that I coach at home in baseball. And just being an inspiration to people all the way around because you don't know what somebody else is going through. And just right. a simple stop and talk. Jason Christie, Jason Christie Classic Champ, he talks to somebody. He doesn't know what kind of day that guy's having. He could have been having the worst day of his life. And Jason says, hey, to him, he just cheers him up. So right. we both have the opportunity to do that, and that's a great part of the sport. Yeah, y'all both done that for me. I'm having a bad day. Both of y'all say, hey, <laughs> cheer yeah. me up. I need, to be, really. I need to be inspired today. You know <laughs> what I mean? Hey, Jason. Hank just said, hey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. One classic it. champion to another. So. Uh, no, I really appreciate y'all giving us some insight into that, and that's, that's special. Y'all have no idea. Y'all just probably gave a, uh, a lot of folks listening. Uh, you lifted their wings. Uh, you know, and, and I want to bounce on, you know, for the people watching, the, the kids watching, the, you know, that, that inspired a bass fish. If you would have told me in 2000, I mean, when I was 15, 18, 19, 
If you would have just told me that I would have fished in the classic, I would have passed out. But if, if I, you know, if you, if, because that opportunity wasn't there, you know, I didn't think that I would ever, for one, be a professional angler, and then two, that I would be able to beat the guys like that we're looking at on TV right now, and then three, just, you know, to win one. I mean, it just, it blows me away, uh, and that's the thing. You know that I don't take for granted. I, I still get to go fishing. I, you know, I'm, I make a dang good living doing it. I love it, and uh, you know, I, I just wouldn't want to be anywhere else. There you go. Well, there's another guy right there we're looking at that. Uh, you know, he's he's been he's had the 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 test of fire and uh, ran through the storms and and all that, and uh, you know, and I've been watching him today and he's just kind of patiently picking his way to maybe staying in the top 10 i mean he could be he could get that special moment what's the year that what was the last year that he won angler of the year 2016 17 15 15 so swindle that year had a look about himself and in his eye and he's got the same look this year. I want to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. He just he's got that. I mean, he, I, and I don't know how to explain it, but he's just got that look that hey, uh, I'm here this year to mean you know I'm I mean business this year and and uh, he's he's due. I mean, obviously he's very due to win one. But I think it's kind of like dunking a basketball. I think when he wins, I think you're going to see him win two or three before he's done. Yeah. Right. So I mean, you just said you just touched on something and we can sit here and we can talk about you know the flat reeds and the pencil reeds and the, and the hydrilla and the penny uh, dollar pads and the penny wart and all the stuff that's out there and, and how you break apart that but I mean there's and Menendez said something in the last segment but it, all of it doesn't matter as, as much as what's happening between your ears and you know walk us somewhat through get dig deeper both of you on the mental aspect of what he's seeing right now and what he's got to do and how important that is to come into this event and not waver from that because i mean even though because next time at seminole he may not have caught him and you may be there so that mental part of that that look in the eye what what is that tell me what 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 you're feeling because i've seen it from both of you i mean there this look and this this persona that you have and that you just kind of dig into that how do you do that i mean you still got bills to pay you got cops pulling you over and line <laughs> breaking and things like that i mean what t talk to me i mean do you, is it really a shell i mean both of y'all are wanting to be quiet because i know i'm digging into some secret stuff here there's no secret i, I think when you look And this is going to sound this is going to sound wrong but when you look all the way across the board back say 10 15 years ago there were only a select few that you would say you look at and say they have it right what i mean it that competitive sports play mentality get the job done no matter what it takes right so you look at it flash forward today and what he's seeing there and what you've seen in jace what you see in me is you see that like this is it mentality it's not like a turning back. We got to figure this thing apart. We got to go. And he's at a point in this tournament where this is it. It's one step closer to him, right? And he, everybody says monkey on the back about winning. And you ask him, he'll say, I don't think about winning. We all think about winning, right, Jason? Yep. You think about winning. And winners win. They make the cast. They're not afraid. You cannot be afraid to fail. And that's the biggest thing. You look at the guys that are most successful in our sport. They are not afraid to fail. And that that's my biggest, I mean, like, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it bother. I, when I say it doesn't bother me, it kills me to be sitting here today. But I have to take risks to be able to win. I just, I just feel that. You know, I, you know, if I pull into that dirty water yesterday and it, and I light them up and I'm by myself the rest of the time. Talking about Swindle there, what he's doing, the difference between him and me this week. You see how he's got his head down. You know, he's experimenting. He's got a lot of confidence in his area. He's trying to figure him out. He's not looking at anybody else. I was in a different area. You know, I got guys fishing around me. I didn't have that much confidence in my area. I didn't have that much confidence in what I was doing. 
and I, you know, I'm looking at this guy, and you know, I see Hank catch one over there, which I actually saw Hank catch one. Um, you're like, gosh, I wonder what he's throwing, you know. When when you get that, when you get in that groove, like I was at the classic last year, I didn't care what anybody else was doing because I felt like what I was doing was the best thing. And whenever you get that feeling, that's when you win tournaments. That's when you win Angler of the Year, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's the deal. Uh, you have to have confidence in what you're doing. Bass fishing is just like anything else. Um, right. It's between your ears. Right. Well, right now we uh, we would like to say we're not we don't care what these other guys are doing, but we do, uh, and we're going to go to a break and we're going to come back and break down this in the last segment about what some of these guys are going to have to do to win uh, from the cheap seats. Okay. So come back with live mix and Jason Christie and Hank Cherry, and I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it as much as I am. Uh, live mix. I'm here with uh, Hank Cherry and uh, Jason Christie. They're no strangers to winning. And uh, of course, the, the focus today and uh, with live mix in, in some regard is to figure out how to win. And we got 10 guys here, or well, maybe more. I mean, we got, you know, 50 out on the water, but I mean, there's probably 10 players there. What, what, how do you all see this thing playing out? Give me a, give me, give me a little insight. And what needs to happen or can happen because we know this tournament's not over today is anyway because there's always been this afternoon bite. Will we have an afternoon bite like we've had because even with the temperature not coming up or you know the wind seems to be actually dying so that kind of thing. I mean, what get walk me through? Tell me tell me how this is going to go. Um, there'll be an afternoon bite. There always is in Florida. Um, okay. My thinking is. Uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit during the break is if I'm in that top 10 or if I'm in that top six or seven, I just want to be within five or six pounds going into the last day. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Tyler's only got 10 pounds right now, but he's still in position tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a day and, and Florida's different than everywhere else because, you know, if you're at lake of the ozarks or something like that you know you're two or three you can't get seven or eight pounds back here this place is different because we can see 32 pounds has been weighed in and mm -hmm. it would not surprise me if somebody caught a bigger bag than that uh so it's it's still wide open i think that you know we have the top 10 right now i'm going to say that that top 10 changes a decent amount before three o'clock today but if I'm in that top 10, I just want to be within four or five pounds because even the dude leading, whoever that's going to be at the end of the day, you know, it's not it's not like, I mean, a four-pound lead here is like a four-ounce lead anywhere else. I got you. Tell me what the mindset of and Tyler's been in second last night, yesterday, and today. Tell me what his, uh, tell me what needs to happen for him. Tyler being in second is, is a great place to be, in my opinion. I'm, I'm like with Jason. When I'm on the body water, I'm looking at this. Like anybody right now that is, say, five pounds out of the top ten is one bite away on this place. And if you're in the top ten going tomorrow, you think about it. If I'm six pounds less in, I'm perfect because on a place like this, you are one bite away. Tyler doing what he's doing, considering it's different than everybody else. He's not in one of these big community holes. He's in this river system. If he holds par and the sun shines tomorrow, you have to say even if he's second, third, fourth, place he's probably got the best opportunity because one he's not doing any damage on the day two there'll be more pulling up tomorrow three it's going to be a pretty day on the weekend shiner boats are going to be out in these areas which they rightfully can because it's open water they can go right crappy fishermen are going to be out there and he's not going to be have that much trouble now he is going to have to buckle down and understand and realize he cannot win it in one swing can he catch a 10 pounder yet yeah, you still can't win it in one swing of the handle so you just got to keep chipping away steve throwing his frog look he's as he's still watching him he's as comfortable as anybody i've seen fish since i've been watching this all day he's half hapless carelessly just throwing that thing around like he knows what's going to happen when it's going to happen and having a great time doing it but you can't let the moment get bigger than you are and that's what tyler's going to have to understand look he's in second he hasn't been in this position ever Right. So you just got to stay in the moment and just fish it and enjoy it. Because these are the times, these are the stories you tell your kids about. These are the stories you talk about. I was in second. I mean, late great Aaron Martin it was the king of second place right. forever. That's a great place to be. But what, what you always want to know is the guy leading, 
is always paying attention to who's behind it. Right. And everybody's got to know. If anybody jumps him, they know that 25-pound bag Tyler caught. They know that 29-pound bag Tyler caught. And they know by looking at those weights today, his fish didn't bite. And they're not going anywhere because that river's full of them. Right. But the other part of that, and I think that that's, uh, you know, you were talking about how calm and cool and collected Steve Kennedy is. and He's, he's been there. Uh, been there. Bill Lowen has been around around that. But you and I know, both know and, and love Tyler like a son or a younger brother or however that is. And he's excitable. And and if he's in the lead, then he doesn't sleep. You know, he 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 can he can spin out in the lead without even making the first cast. How how, how does that happen? Did you ever do that, Christy? Spin Mr. out, Mr. Cool and collect. <laughs> no, not spin out, but just talk yourself out of it the night before or or the night of you know because no, I've, I've talked myself out of it throughout the tournament day. You. It all depends on the situation that I'm fishing. You know, if I got an area, uh, you know, that I feel super confident, and I know now if I have a feeling that over the first three days I might have kind of got a little bit lucky, then, it, you know, it starts eating at you. But, um, yeah, it all depends on the situation. And I just I, I'm going to reiterate, we are in Florida, and, and that, that top ten that I'm looking at right now is not going to be your top ten at the end of the day. <laughs> Okay. And there is nobody, I'm going to say, that's even going to be in the top 10 that's going to be out of it. Because it's just like Tyler. Tyler went 24, 30, or 24, 29, and then 10. Somebody, the leader could do that tomorrow. It's not just that somebody can catch a big bag. It's just as easy to catch eight pounds here as it is to catch 30 pounds. It's all relevant to what's around your yeah. bait. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you know, what, what, what you're basically telling us, especially is, and a lot of these places will go, and, and you run out of fish. And, I mean, you know, uh, there, there was uh, some questions yesterday, and you got Cobb up there just wailing on them and, and, and Tyler wailing on them, and they're like, well, shouldn't they be saving some fish for – you can't save them in Florida. I, I've learned yesterday you don't run out of fish on this lake. It okay. just doesn't happen because we, we spin around, you know, there was eight or nine of us that spun around in a three-acre, five-acre patch yesterday. And you start to tell yourself, hey, these things, we, we've done damage to them. And then a shiner boat pulls in in the middle and shows you, you that you anything. didn't even do, you didn't, you didn't even, touch them. No. <laughs> didn't scratch the surface. No, their floater was just every five seconds. <laughs> well, it has been an, really interesting. And in, in what I have described to friends and and even on on uh, earlier segments of one of the weirder more temperamental fisheries in the country one, one thing i want to say about this fishery is the i've never unlocked this fishery like it's still it's 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 still just, a mystery yeah for, for me but gosh how much has it changed in the last 15 years since i've been here I mean, it's a totally different lake, and I'm not talking about the fish. The fish are still here, but I just, I mean, like, it's just a totally different. I mean, I this this tournament, I made new trails that I've never, you, you've never been able to run. You know what I mean? Because the water's, not only is the water high, but just so much vegetation is gone. Just running out of here used to be like you're running into the wilderness, and now you're running yeah. into wide open. Yeah. Right. It was just Matter of fact, uh, crazy. I think the last time we were here running out of the river into the lake, uh, Jesse Takarani caught like a 30-pound sack on day one right there. Yeah. And then uh, when we went out of the lake on day one, I'm like, what happened to yeah. that place? It's not there, you know. Yeah. Uh, and but and Kobe Krieger the earlier uh, in the day had talked about, I mean, it's not just changes that take place that, that you notice year to year, decade to decade, which is y'all's case, but it cha every two weeks mm -hmm. it's something different, you know, and that makes it that makes it interesting. And it's my belief now that you know one thing in common that you see a lot of these guys fishing around that's catching them is the dollar pads, and I think what's happened is we've lost. 90% of the hydrilla and, you know, all of that stuff. I think these fish are using these dollar pads now as the grass. You know yep. what I mean? Like, that's where they live. Then they move and then they spawn and stuff like that. But 
I think that's the new hydrilla on Okeechobee now. You know, that's the only thing that's, I mean, that's, it's kind of one, two punch where the clear water is, you know, these, these pads kind of filter it and stuff. So I don't know. Yes. I, I finished almost dead last. I don't know if I know anything. <laughs> and that's one thing I didn't spend any time fishing. No, there, but that that was the that was if you found dollar pads, you found boats. Yeah. So I ran from that. Well, you you could I mean, and it was amazing to me uh, going down the lake. You'd see you know twenty five boats in one and spot, and then nobody for five miles. Right. And then it'd be all pumped, and it wouldn't be twenty five elite anglers it would be four or five elite anglers and 21 shiner boats or crappie boats or or yep. whatever or camera boats and that kind of thing so i mean we we shell shock these areas and sometimes but they somebody told me that florida fish are just used to that you know but i uh, i think that it's interesting though that that Cobb yesterday, you know, pretty much sat in a spot and the fish came to him. Ray Hanselman had a big sack. He sat in a spot and the fish came to him. And uh, from what I could see, you know, they're they're struggling, you know. So, Something fish. about the clouds in Florida. Well, Tyler's hooked up. That is well, not a bass. That is, I was fixing to say, he's got something tail hook. That is a drum, I think. See, you reckon he'll eat that? Nah. <laughs> he eats a lot of stuff, but I don't think he'll eat a drum. <laughs> he probably knows somebody that would eat that drum, though. So, obviously, and I, I so I got to ask. Jason, but because I know who um, Hank would like to see win this tournament. It's his roommate, Tyler. Who's your favorite that's up there now? Oh, you, I don't. I mean, we're in Florida. I, I, would, I would just be throwing darts if I were to say a name. Um, I, honestly, I don't have a clue. I like, I like the guys on the north end just for the fact that. You know, they we got some hard north wind this morning, and, and I think that may kind of churn some stuff up down there. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, there's any possibility. I don't even know who's in the top five here. We got Kennedy, Rivet, Cobb, Logan Latuso, yep. Clark Winlet, Jokinson. Logan's got biggest bag of the day. I'm gonna Jake say. Wicker. I'm gonna say. Steve, Tyler, Brandon, Logan, or Clark. One of those five. <laughs> yeah, one of those five. No, I, you know, Brandon's got a good opportunity, and I think that uh, it's hard to bet, bet against Kennedy right now. You know, just because. Oh, it is. Because it gets flat tomorrow, and there's, a, you know, a lot of those boats out of his area, and he can throw that frog around. It'll be hard to bet against. Well, today will looks like it's going to boil down to a big bass tournament, and then tomorrow's going to. Uh, ten guys are going to go to a knife fight, and whoever yeah. shows over the biggest knife. Yeah, that's where you'd rather have it. Yeah. yeah. Well, as a fan too. Oh yeah. Hey, dudes, I, I really appreciate the fact that y'all came and hung out with me for. A the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury. Nitro Boats and by Bass Pro Shops. Thanks for being with us today on Bassmaster Live for our first flighters. Well, they're into the second half of this semi-final Saturday moving day. What you got to do is land in the top 10 at the end of this day if you want a chance at one of those elusive Blue trophies, you only get so many chances during the course of a career. It's so great when you can make that top 10. We'll have all the coverage of that for you tomorrow. But right now, we are grinding it out on Lake Okeechobee. Been a little more tough today for our anglers. Slower, different conditions, of course, Mark Zona. Yeah, exactly right, Tommy. Taking a look at Lake Okeechobee. Our takeoff right there on the north side, just out of Okeechobee City. 
See Scott Driver Park right in the Kissimmee River. One of our anglers, well, several several anglers in there today. One of our top performers, Tyler Rivette, seeing the northwest corner, though, always a big player on Lake, Lake Okeechobee. That is the case this time around. Well, let's start out our back half of this Should show we? with uh, Toyota Midday Report. Oh. We'll start right there with Gerald Swindle. Gerald Swindle fishing very well this week. No yeah. Kachobi making it into the top ten. Got to hear Jason Christie say he has the look. Mm -hmm. The look you have when you feel like you could chase down yet another would be his third Angler of the Year trophy. Swindle starting with a nice four, four and a half pounder right here on a bladed jig. Said a lot of his work with a Magnum Zoom Speed Worm bladed jigs. He really thought yesterday afternoon he had to get out of the area where he watched the Brandon Cobb show and found a little pond that he thought was going to fire this morning. Not the case so far. From there, we're going to slink on down to South Bay. Clark Wendelin, another angler that felt he had the right lure. An area down in South Bay that has been really throttled the last couple weeks here on Lake Okeechobee. Getting it done with a swimming worm. We're going to talk about that worm a little bit more tomorrow. Clark Wendelin said, please, please don't tell everybody today. I don't want anybody to know. Well, I told him his competitors, they're not watching Bass Live. He said, yeah, others are. Well, <laughs> Clark Wendelin. <laughs> Well, he's moved up. Keeping it, it real. Listen, Just keeping it real. Clark has a familiar, sneaky way about him as <laughs> some anglers we have covered in years it's past. It's worked. Love. It's it worked. Does work. Has worked. Brandon Cobb. Over 32 pounds, almost 33 pounds on day number two. Still getting it done. He's up pretty good. A couple of solid ones in his live well. Started with a four-pounder four early this morning, but definitely a little bit slower. Will that yeah, sunshine it. later this afternoon help sitting with unofficially just under eight pounds for three bass? Yeah, he'd like to upgrade from that for sure, and he's going to be patient. Wait it out. He's been patient all week long. Out to Tyler Rivette doing something completely different from from right out of the box in this tournament and really surprising a lot of folks. Yeah, and I have heard the comment that he's been the only angler in this field really to find that forward facing sonar bite in the Kissimmee River. There's a little bit of it that leaked out a week or two ago mm. from Tyler Rivette. Hoping Tyler kind of turns the ship around yeah. here. Really the story of the day so far, Steve Kennedy fishing in a crowded backwater, getting it done with a spro popping frog. Cool story, I actually sent Ron Moore a picture of that bait, maybe we'll take a peek at that later. Throwing a popping frog for these oversized Okeechobee slouches. Yeah, well, he sent me a picture of that popping frog. And you know how they have a belly weight? Right. Kind of weighs them down the water where you can get distance with it. He said he was backlashing yesterday for about 45 minutes until he realized his popping frog was so beat up, the internal weight actually fell out of the plastic. It took him an hour to figure that out. That is your Toyota Midday. I noticed him having a few episodes of that yesterday. Um, anyway, it's been a decent morning. They're biting pretty good. There don't appear to be as many fish in here as there have been. It's, it's harder to get a bite, but but when you do get one, they've been pretty aggressive. But but yeah, we got five in the box. I actually caught a few more. Should have low mid twenties again. We're we're one bite away from a really good bag to me. But but not upset with what we got so far. That one eight pounder <laughs> really makes a difference. But yeah, let's do it again. We got what? Still got almost three hours to fish, so. Need one more big bite, and then we'll take one more after that, one more after that if we can get them. But I picked up a actually picked up a glide bait and started playing around. The first cast, I had about a five pounder come up. I see a wake. Had about a five pounder come up right beside the boat following. But I didn't catch her. Anyway, it's a fun place to fish. That's all I can tell you. Really watch Steve Kennedy the years that Nothing we've covered like him on the Bassmaster Elite fish. Series. He is so good at targeting individual bass, looking for obviously a little different here than other wins he's had in the past, but hunting 
individual big bass looking for little water movement, stuff like that. And you really look at, outside of Tyler Rivette, you look at a lot of the anglers, as much pressure as Okeechobee got in the last month, a lot of the anglers, we saw a little bit of plinking that excelled on day one, mm -hmm. close to the boat, stuff like that. A lot of our anglers that have really risen up the leaderboard, long casts. These fish have been oh. so throttled. Long cast, get your stuff away from the boat. That has been one common theme in a lot of your anglers that are still fishing today and probably oh, wow. tomorrow. Check that out. <laughs> Steve Kennedy Jay. looking for his fourth Bassmaster Elite Series win. He can pretty much win anywhere. He's proven that. Unidentified craft. Oh, oh, yeah. A couple there. identified. Pretty mean looking. Absolutely. His first win oh, came yeah. 2007 when he set the record for four days of fishing. That right there was his, uh, that is where the addiction to swim baiting started and continued for the better side of a decade. Yeah. That's when we covered Steve Kennedy, there's pretty much a swim, swim bait in his hand every single tournament. <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. West Point Lake, Chattahoochee. You remember the storm that came in at oh that way in? Toad Tom, Strangler. Oh, oh, oh my God. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> That's where we met yeah, Steve Kennedy in a parking lot. He was throwing a discontinued Bass Pro Shop swim bait. Wouldn't let us look at it or get a picture <laughs> and ran across the parking lot full speed yeah. with his rods. <laughs> yeah. That's when we thought Steve Kennedy was truly a nutbag. <laughs> We had grounds for that. He has been we fun, had fun, fun to cover. From there, Lake Dardanelle. Big victory on a swim jig here. Got to see very similar fishing when he almost won the Lake Conroe Classic. But if you look at all of those tournaments, targeting individual giant bass. Won that one in a little tiny area no one else could find. Super flooded Lake Dardanelle that year. Yeah. Yeah. Place there, two or three of the main areas that won that event are never hardly accessible right. on normal levels. He has been really, really fun to cover. You know, not a Absolutely. guy, not a dude with a lot of sponsors. May not need a lot of sponsors. So he does his work on his own. Super intelligent. I yes. mean, just absolutely has figured out so many things during the course of his career. Seems to get a lot more excited when we're on big fish yeah. fisheries. Yeah. Most humans do, <laughs> so, you know. If you're human, you probably right. do. Like, like Keith Combs, it's been a little puzzling since 2019 Crazy. how not, not guaranteed a classic spot has right. been for him. How, how many tough stretches we've seen Steve Kennedy go down when, we, when the schedule's kind of set up for big, big well, fish places lately. You know, you know the other, I, it was really interesting to listen to Jason Christie and to Hank Cherry. There is such a, and there's so many of our viewers that are hardcores that fish a lot of tournaments, there is such a razor's edge when you're a, a, a Hank Cherry or a Jason Christie or a Keith Combs or that dude right there, a, a Steve Kennedy, there is such a razor's edge of going for a victory and epically failing. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. There, there is not a very... Especially depending on who you are. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's yeah. not a, a, okay, I'm gonna play it safe. Right. Mode to those guys. And the right stuff. Well, he's doing his job over these first two and a half days, 23 pounds and change on day one. Same thing on day two, and he's right there, same spot right now, 23.11. With plenty of time to fail. You don't know which way to go, do you? <laughs> uh, so, not much has changed. Still terrible. I still got three fish. I'm starting to debate running somewhere else, close anyway. But as it's kind of one of those things, I know the fish, I think it's just the weather today. They're not pulling up great, and uh, I don't have a lot of faith in a different place. Been moving around in here, I've seen a few fish get caught. Some guys are catching them a lot better than I am. I'm not just not having a great day, but it's uh, typical Florida, man. I mean, some days you get bit, and I mean, we got three fish. We get a seven pounder. It's a whole different ball game, and that's kind of the way it goes here. So, 
kind of weighing in my mind whether I want to stay here, try to get a couple bites. I know it's not phenomenal, but I don't think it's gonna be phenomenal anywhere. Or try to go somewhere else, see if it's a little bit better. So, uh, I don't know, kind of at that point. Water looks good though, that's the one thing. Usually I don't abandon my area in Florida unless the water starts looking bad. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't look bad, it actually looks better than it has which might, might have just spread the fish out or something, and that's the reason it's not uh, seeming as good today. But no, I hadn't really missed any or anything, just not getting any bites. Brandon Cobb, you heard it. He, he's three, two fish to a limit, so things could turn around very, very quickly for him. Got to spend a lot of time in the boat with Brandon over our break. Awesome to, to fish, fish with. Really fun. Yeah. Really fun. And and an amazing guest to as far as to break down what we were doing and stuff like that. Really, really sharp, man. He's a college fishing coach. And a or was, I don't know if he still is. He's an assistant. Assistant, okay. And that's what head coach Drew for Lander University, posted yesterday, shared his 32-15 and said, add a boy, assistant coach. So he like, Drew likes to keep him in check that he's not uh, Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. Drew, come on now. Tommy's give, given me a little of that business <laughs> yeah. throughout the years. I could see Win that one for the, for the, he's got yeah. those the underclass. Yeah. Okay, come on. Amen. <laughs> and really take a look right there at a lot of these areas, what these guys are concentrating on, so many of these big ones kind of get on those highways, those clear boat lanes as it gets into like little ponds and backwaters. A lot of those highways have been really, really critical on some of the big ones throughout this tournament. Uh oh, wow. Oh, we got Skeeter Boats Big Fish Alert. Brandon Card. Six pound, four ounce, he's jumped into our top 10 in 10th place. Incredible. He's got a couple one and a half pounders. Now he could really uh, upgrade and, and stay in there. He's in this region as well. He is in he this is spot in with Whitaker, yeah. Whitaker yes. Kennedy, all these guys. I haven't seen Bernie unless I've just missed him in this region. I don't know if he scrapped it or adjusted, but yeah, Card dealing with viral meningitis the last few months and then Bell's palsy. Incredible. Yeah, what's Ah, man, the day, has, to uh, the day hadn't been bad. We've had the bites, but we just have not been able to capitalize on them for whatever reason. They just are getting away from us. But uh, um, it's definitely, definitely a different day. Uh, the weather, this little bit of cold front has, uh, I don't know if it's really knocked them in the head. There's still fish here, but uh, they are not biting like they, you know, had been, so. We're in a little area right now where we've had several bites this week, so hopefully, or maybe we can uh, get us one or two of them. It'd be nice. I mean, there's there's still big ones to be caught in here. A couple six pounders would go a long way. Get rid of a couple of those little ones we got and then uh, see what happens, but it's, uh, all in all, it's been a good tournament. I've had a lot of fun. Yesterday was one of the best fishing days I've ever had in my life. And I have nothing to complain about. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Well, he does like slinking back to that area, that giant that missed his frog earlier. <laughs> that is the exact corner. Almost 28 pounds yesterday. Something to watch, we saw it from most of it from Bernie Schultz's boat. Well, oh, he had a gorilla this morning right there. Oh. We've had a, had a few drop out of our top 10 who were there to start this day. We've had a few move up, that's to be expected. Is that going to continue? Are our original leaders going to reassert themselves as we move into the final three and four hours worth of fishing? Steve Kennedy 
though, has moved up to the top. Tyler Rivette, Brandon Cobb in pursuit. Those two just about neck and neck. Logan Latuso, the rookie, the only rookie we've got in our top 10 right now. Clark Winlet, Jockinson, and Jake Whitaker. We'll be back. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. So uh, the key baits was one punching and punching the uh, excite baits that we can't design. It's the sucker punch. And the key to it is uh, talking with everybody else. They're using ounce and a half, two ounce weights. And uh, with this bait, I'm only using a three quarter ounce weight and I'm getting through the same exact stuff. And I think that's a key player when I'm trying to get a bigger bite later in the day when the sun's up. But other than that, I'm just sitting there kind of just scoping them out and jerking. You just go around, You've, you'll see about 60 to 100 fish before you catch one. It's, it's just a patience. So that's the main deal is patience. Tyler Rivette getting all set to fish his second classic in four years of fishing here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Seems like that jerk bait's been a bigger player than he was letting on yeah. right there. <laughs> Sorry, just caught a five bass limit on patience, if you know what I mean. Absent. <laughs> Same thing, not good. Uh, hopefully it changes in a little bit. You got the sun coming out. It obviously didn't work with the clouds, so we know what happens when the sun's out, so that's all we could hope for right now. It ain't good with 11 pounds, probably won't even make top 10. That's crazy. Um, I just know how quick them bites came the last two days, so. That's all we're gonna hope for is we could turn it around pretty quick. Uh, the bad news is I just saw that Shiner guy that's been trying to get in on me. He headed to the other spot right now where I did most of the damage. So hopefully, let's just hope he just passed it up and didn't stop and maybe we could catch a few here. Definitely sort of a different. Yeah, a different vibe. A different vibe. That's a yeah. good way to put it today for Tyler Rivette, but that could change. That could be turned around. This could be a good sign. Will Davis, who's further up the Kissimmee, just landed a five pounder a little while ago. He's up from uh, well, 23rd to 12th. He's got about 14 pounds on the day. You see things like that. And what we know is that oftentimes <laughs> we see more big regions. Ones. It'll just all ignite. Yeah. Or Maybe. Well made. Possibly. Astute observation, I'd say. Man, it's sitting here around noon and, and I've got to four fish. I've only got one good quality fish, caught him early. Um, I really seem to have a lot of trouble getting bites. I keep trying to make small adjustments. I just caught one slow reel and a half ounce swim jig just around the base of this stuff. Even the few bites that I've missed, they're not super aggressive. So I'm hoping that with a little bit more sunlight, the temperature is warming, that we could have a little feeding frenzy. We haven't had it yet. I knew it could be a grind mentally, so I was prepared for it. And I'm just gonna keep covering water as slow as I can, as thorough as I can. And make, and make good adjustments. If nothing else, it keeps your confidence up when you make adjustments, it keeps your head in the game. We don't just get out here and start wailing around. You're fishing with a purpose, and that's what we're trying to stay in the game, because it only takes one or two bites, and you're right back in it. Right back in it, and I'm ready for that. Got a feeling we need to be a touch bit deeper, though. Just got a feeling a deeper bite, three or four foot bite out there on that outside reeds may be the juice. Sometimes I think them fish in three or four foot is not affected by the cold front as these back here in two foot. That's a perfect cast right there. And I'm is that a BFA? Big fish alert search? 
False alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any chance we could turn the volume up? <laughs> <laughs> that's on me, folks. That's, oh, that's uh, great. It's a phone mishap. See, no one would have known if you didn't bust yourself out there trying know, to work. I know, I did, but I'm just that way. flat right there, just... <laughs> yeah, people would have understood hey, if I'd yelled at you, Ronnie. They turn your like TikTok well, down. I'm just crawling it around. while since we have checked in on Drew Cook. Yeah. Drew Cook has been kind of off to himself this entire tournament. Very little company. Well, we have uh we have done circles around in here this morning and uh caught nothing but little ones. Um but it is my wife's birthday, so first off, I've got to tell my wife happy birthday. Um, she's down here with, with me uh, this week, so it looks like we're gonna spend it in the truck, driving home, getting ready for Seminole, but we've uh, we caught a fair amount of fish. They're just all little, little, little. Um, I don't know what, what the deal is. The water level in here has dropped a little bit, and uh, the wind has actually blown a lot of these big mats um, in, into different places and covered up some of the banks that I was catching them on and, and you know, took away uh, the other banks that I was catching them on. So it, uh, I was hoping that we would be able to get out here um, on this outer moor stuff that's a lot deeper and and get some bites. And we have had some bites, we just hadn't had any, anything worth, you know, writing home about. They're all really small, like pound and a half pounders. Whereas the past two days, I've been catching a bunch of two high twos to three pounders. So we need, um, we need some more of those and then a couple of those great big ones to go with it. Uh, if we want to have a shot at making a top 10, but uh, made a little change yesterday to a chatterbait with a big bite swim on on it and caught some better fish. And I've thrown it around a lot um, and just caught little ones today. But really, we're only fishing for two bites. So if we get those two bites, we'll still be in, uh, in good position. Yesterday, about one o'clock, it really turned on. So um, hopefully that happens. If not, I mean, I can't really complain about this week. I, uh, I really and truly did not know if I was going to catch a bass after practice. So to make the cut in itself was, was cool. But whenever you get these opportunities, you know, you're pretty close. You, you really want to take advantage of them because they don't come around often. But I, just, I don't have anything else to go on, really. I'm just going to live or die in here. Before the tournament started, a lot of the advanced blurbs were, hey, this tournament's going to be won by somebody who finds a place all by themselves. Yeah, and other people go, nope, it's people who know how to fish in a crowd that are going to prosper here. Little bit of Day both. one, it was the, the, the lone hidey ho. Yes. Not so since then. Bring it. Bring it. What? No. Starfish. Yeah. That's a big one. Everything but bass. Oh, he's about to go crazy. Oh, he is going to go nuts. Oh. Come get it! 
Come get it. Nose hurt. Can't get it enough, bud. Open. There we go. <laughs> I was about to lift it. I'm surprised he didn't just flex that. I don't think that would have been a yeah, good swing idea. Took off. Yeah. <laughs> Forty different native species in Okeechobee and a whole bunch of invasive species in there. Rookie. Weird looking fish mm -hmm. living there. Rookie Will Davis back at it again, a four pounder. He's ninth place right now. Almost 16 pounds on the day. I need that because then I can talk highly of my team and I don't, I don't want to talk. I need don't, all of them to don't have get ahead before. of yourself. Yeah. I know we have a camera with Bill Lowen down there on the south end of Okeechobee. Have not seen much from Bill today. No, not today. Pound and a half, as Clark Wentland does. See if that one helps or not. Well, well, uh, well, well. How about ask, that? and you shall receive. Yeah. Mm, indeed. Bill Lowen, a lot of his work with a bladed jig and a swim jig. A lot of those deadhead reed stalks. Said where they would make good clumps would remind him of a stump elsewhere. Said the slower he could work a bladed well, jig or a swim jig. Very As you critical. know, it's been going really slow. I got like, I got two little ones, but my problem is, is I got a ditch coming off the main lake right here behind me, and it has kind of clouded my area up, and uh, that's never good in Florida. Um, but I'm in the area right now where I had all my big bites yesterday, just trying to make something happen. And up to this point, um, it just hasn't worked out yet. So we're just gonna keep grinding. We're probably gonna have to leave around two o'clock to make it back. So we gotta run around the lake instead of straight across today. So all we can do is just put ourselves in an area where we think we can catch a big one and just keep grinding. It has not been easy. Well, he was confident that that Northeast wind wouldn't trash that area. Sounds like it's. It's good to have Bill on camera as well. Kudos to him. We talked about Scott Martin losing some weight in the offseason and getting fit. Bill Lowen said he had lost, I think, over 50 pounds. And All right. <laughs> I knew there was one on there. Hey, I'm just happy it was a fish because that shows you there's life here. Mega bag! Pull taken, pull taken. I mean, you can. I mean, look at that. Uh, that's not even a. It's not even a quarter pound. Let's go, dogs. Catches 20 pounds two days in a row. Gets excited about a 12 incher. I mean, let's go. <laughs> Limit for Patrick Walters, not the size he wants. But he was excited. Yeah. See him over here. I'm really trying to catch one on the frog for you guys. I had an awesome bite on it earlier, and he just never did get it. And sometimes that happens. It stinks, but it happens. And we've caught a few small ones on it, but I want a big one. You can see, though, looking at Jake Whitaker, how clean that backwater has stayed, even with this wind. Water's still really stable in there. Bernie Schultz, who obviously was in the area's days one and two, 
said there was a really big wall of eelgrass outside of the mouth of this backwater that kind of filtered it out before that mud got to the key areas that Kennedy's been in. We got another rookie doing pretty well, Joyce Fuente is up to 17 pounds, 19th place today. Cooper Gallant's 12th rookie, Will Davis 9th, Logan Latuso 4th. Pretty good rookie showing, four in the top 20. Yeah, five made the cut total, uh, if you don't count Hallman. Like five of the 11 actual rookies, Bradley Hallman made the cut as well. He our does average not count as a, as a no, he doesn't, money rookie. Because yeah. he fished as a former elite anyways. But, oh, that's right, yeah. Um, our average last year was four or so. Most events, I think the lowest we got was one made the cut, and that was Harris Chain Jay Shakir when he took the big lead in rookie of the year early yeah. in the season. And then I think the most we had was six of our nine rookies. So, at about average, make the cut. Get ourselves a little uh, bonus coverage here. Oh, we haven't had much opportunity for that today, but I think it'd be a great time to check in with the the leader in the Falcon Rods Rookie of the Year race right now. Early days, of course, and that is one Logan Latuso. Logan, congratulations on such a great day. Can tell us, kind of outline for us what you've been doing. Yeah, the morning started off good. Uh, just fun. I think new fish have come to the area, cleaned up a little bit, and. Right. Yeah, we'll just watch a while. Yeah. We can't get the audio from Logan, but we can, Logan, we can sure can watch get, for a minute. We, or, practice. <laughs> Broken Cajun is even harder to translate than regular Cajun. You know what I'm saying? Minute. The accents and stuff. That I caught him, son. Five, 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 two, six, zero, oh, and a four, eight. Very big bag of the day. Caught him. Very cool story for Logan to even be auto. on the Elite Series. He had an abysmal five or six pounds on day one at Sam Rayburn. Dropped all the way to hundred and second in the tournament. Law dropped way out of the points race. Caught thirty-two pounds almost, thirty-one and a half pounds on day two at Sam Rayburn to take the lead from a hundred and second. Gained those hundred points back and moved all the way up into qualification. So. Man, you know, if you're you either want to be really consistent in the opens, or you're gonna to have to have a magical day and everything go right. And on his last possible day of the season, he busted the biggest bag of the week. Well, as Mark Zona told us, what he hears is that he is the real deal. So Absolutely. Obviously, it's showing. Right, okay. he got third best opens limit that day. He's in the record book now. He's third best in the opens. Oh yeah. And I think the other two were when we had the highest weight Bassmaster Open in history uh, at the Kissimmee chain that Swindle won. I think there was 30 pound bags in that one. That would be Yeah, top. Whitney Stevens, 32-12. At the Harris chain, okay. Lake Toho in 11 was Will Evans, 31-15. Awesome. Oh, it takes a, a big performance to win Rookie of the Year anymore. I mean, you've got to have a year. Now, well, there's our rookie of the year watching Cooper Gallant now after, on top. After yesterday. After Oh, this is after yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Not current. Okay. Cooper Gallant on Who's top. Who's your guy the there, Tommy? Who's your what, guy there? In, in that one? Yes. I, I'm, lying, I'm with Ronnie. I want to see how Will Davis do. I want, okay. I want a better look at him. I don't know if he's my guy, but curious about him. We'll be back. Bassmaster Elite Series Site 1 event on Lake Okeechobee. First stop of the year for these 104 anglers. 50 of them left on this day out here. You got to, well, you're the chairman. You're in charge of your of your team, which is you, basically. And you got to be your own weatherman as well. You. And, and you. And you have to you have to plan accordingly. Now, Mark Zona, you touched on this. You, we, we get you, back to more the, uh, you. the weather like yep. we had before tomorrow. Yes, How long does it take for, to, to sort of recover the condition? Now, well, hold on. Jake Whitaker, the good one.
Come here. Come here. Boom, baby. Yes. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Pulled out the swim jig. Heck yeah, dude. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Oh, man. Awesome bite. I got a mess. Ah. That's a six. Or better. Yep. Six and a half. Yes. Yes, sir. Get in there, you big girl. Good one right there for Let's Jake see. Whitaker. What was it? Green? Or blue? Green. Heck of a trade right there. Heck of a trade. There's big ones here. Oh, man. Six and a half, and he got rid of a one and a quarter. Mm. Up to fifth place. So weird about that backwater that Whitaker and Kennedy's in, and they've obviously outfished everybody around them. It's just like you don't know when one of them pumpkin heads is going to show up. Finally. Needs this one, Rivette does. I believe this will be his limit fish. The call for sure. Well, better. Mm. Please all be hooked like that. Bass for Tyler. Comes around, huh? <laughs> These are baby guns. <laughs> These are baby guns. So let's see. Time. Tommy, we talked about it. What would be the cut line for the top 10? Could 20 pounds a day? Would you need 60 to make the top 10? We have half of our top 10 right now have eclipsed 60, but kind of drops off. Hold. It kinda, I'm say it hold. You do think? Yeah. One piece of cotton picking grass got on that thing. Much, but it's number five, that gummit. Not much, 10 pounds. We got that. I got a pound and two ouncer. I got number five. But I got a reason to keep trying. Granddaddy said if at first you don't suck seed, you keep on sucking till you do suck a seed, and that's what we're doing.
wind should start laying down a little bit the next couple hours before weigh in with Dave Mercer. Tomorrow should be fantastic. The heaviest winds will be in the morning coming, turning a little bit more to the east and then back to the south. It should be pretty much flat calm I from mid morning on tomorrow. Better, better deal tomorrow. Yes, Thank better deal tomorrow. Oh, oh, choke. That's a choke. <laughs> Fast track is small as a two nine. Close. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he helps me. Two five, two six. I don't remember what I got. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I'm skittering it and he totally missed it and I whiffed. But then he comes back. Jake Latendris is correct. 2-9 is Kennedy's smallest. Also has a three and a three supposed two. To work. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh yeah. Slip on down to South Bay again. Bill Lowen, Clark Wendelin, Cooper Gallant. About the highest skies we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Six clones right there. About a pound and a half out of the top ten as it stands right now. So he's the one who could benefit the most from a kicker right now, other than guys without limits. Yeah. Just a nice solid limit for Cooper Glant. Nice one there for Jake Whitaker. Mm. Got Ronnie so excited he started videoing it from the Washington video no center. Kidding. Well, Kyle gave me a heads up; it was on the way from the water, and so uh, I had to send him what it looked like from uh, from the view. Kids are That's taking working as a team. It's teamwork, position, Tommy. Teamwork. Kyle's my eyes on the water. Yeah. My eyes he wants sky. you too, pumpkin head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we got more to come. Still plenty of time for a lot to happen. We will be right back. Yeah, the water! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Time is passing, and the weigh-in is looming. There's all oh, those gear, the right there. Fire out of me, the, those things. The thing, the Mercury right Move of the Day, I believe, coming what? up here. That's that's what that is meant to signify, right there. Yes, it you is. You see the wind blowing pretty hard back there at the mm. Okeechobee County there, Okeechobee City, Okeechobee County, our host organization. And that's a move. That is, that that's is the Mercury wish. move of the day? Uh, well, <laughs> oh my God. Unofficial. That's an unofficial. <laughs> yeah, that's a representation. Again, of let me throw it. We had one earlier. Again, a reach, a reach that worked. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> It's Turned a great time to, to right pub if you want to. If you want, if you're uh, in Okeechobee or around the lake, go to the expo. You'll meet some of your favorite pros. You'll be able to see the way in, get a spot early. Same thing goes for tomorrow. Good things, yeah. Good things happening. <laughs> I understand. Dave Mercer set to do some of those moves at the wing. There he is. At the cooler. I guess it's not too dirty, is it? Pound and three quarter anyway. 
<coughs> boat stopped about when the boat was going forward and then we stopped. I'm like, all right, I'm going forward. Why y'all so angry? Why can't you be four pounder? <laughs> Jake Whitaker's gotten himself above that 60 pound mark. No, no, no. How about you? Inception of frogs. All right. Get PTSD. I'm sure this little stretch has been fished about 50 times today, but you never know what might pull up on one of these little reed clumps. is right about that. This area has been throttled. Oh. I mean, just hammered. You could have, if Brandon Card, who jumped up into the top 10 on Bass Track and has now fallen out slightly, if he makes it, you could have four or so just in this small area fishing tomorrow wow. within maybe nine pounds of the wind. So one, one giant and they're back in it. It is. I mean, that water clarity looks good there. It's, you can see why people are attracted. I asked him on the phone last night if there was any uh -huh. wind direction that could mess it up, and he said, Gosh. no, it's the most perfect, protected, wow. every ingredient you need. It's, oh, won't help. I don't think it'll help. I don't think that'll help. I hope not. <laughs> Gas Trek has his smalls a 1.6. Might help. Gas Trek could be wrong. There's 112 in there as well. A couple three pounders. Pretty sure uh, this one was 112 too. Yeah. Been a while since we had a big bite. We 
did catch one a few minutes ago. Not a giant, two and a half pounder. No. Just got to put it in front of the right fish. And the easy ones have been picked off already. Kennedy down to South Bay again and check in on Clark Winlet. Clark from South Central Texas, Lake Travis here. When you look at what you were talking about, looking at a lot of the anglers that were picked for an angler of the year, you look at a lot of the lakes that we're going to. Yep. Sets up pretty good for him. Northern swing, no doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Dang it. All the way through North mm -hmm. Carolinas, do good at Seminole. Mm -hmm. and a lot of you'll be in the in the mix. A lot of lakes that set up pretty well for Clark. Mm -hmm. Not a big one, but he'll help, I think. Uh, definitely. I think I said blue. in that oh, South Bay area where these anglers are fishing. Might have been put him in at two six or something. Give me another swim jig bite. Dare you to bite it. Clark's fish went in as a two seven. Heard Ronnie talk about during our FS1 broadcast how many dazzling, sparkling college anglers that are in the Elite Series now in our cut today. Yep. Tommy, as we embark on the NFL draft, we're on the cusp of it. You get to start talking about it. Well, what I like do you feel? Segue. I can yeah. feel you were going with this. Well, I, I trade down, trade down. We have a Hall of Fame quarterback, already Hall of Fame quarterback <laughs> on the Bears. Running back. Wh who do you go with? 
<laughs> I can, I can yeah. bark back at you right now. Uh -oh. uh, yeah. Who yeah. do you go, who goes number one this year? Is no. it Bryce Young? I, I'm saying yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it should be. I agree. But it depends on who tries to trade with the Bears, if they like C.J. Stroud better. Right. And there's a viral photo of a NFL reporter, female, oh. standing beside Bryce Young. You can't see that she's wearing four or five inch heels, but they're very close in height. And it has everyone worried how short Bryce Young is, but I don't think he's The production that. truck is asking, how long do you think the Cardinals coach will last this time? Um, <laughs> normally, ballpark, ballpark I mean, they time. all rent the right. same house. They don't buy a new house. They just, they just you move in there and stay yeah. for a year or two. But no, I think, it, I think, we're, I think we got a level-headed okay. guy. So here, here's my question. Strong Robert. voice. The the, the 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 Bulldogs quarterback who got himself in a little predicament a few weeks ago, <laughs> well, Stetson, Stetson, yeah, yeah, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. He's in the going to be in the draft, correct? The thirty-two year old, the thirty-two year old, yeah, right? Yeah, he's going to be in the draft. You look at a Brock Purdy who did nothing, right? Well, I mean, the he was only just, thing that that Stetson dude, well, he won, man. Yes. I'm not saying he's all a, he can do is win. You put Brock Purdy on Georgia's team and not Iowa State, Brock Purdy wins just as much as he did. Because Brock Purdy was brought Iowa State. Him and Matt Campbell as coach like a lot from of our nobody. Viewers, I mean, come Ronnie, on. Ronnie, like the Georgia Bulldogs. Evidently, you don't. No, I just think I... that. I mean, I mean, <laughs> you put a normal quarterback in a great offense surrounding him or a great team surrounding him. I, I mean, if I'd you know your, I knew I'd get it You going. know your defense is going to give up you should be 10 a points a game? I mean, come on. On that stuff. Yeah. So about Kyle. <laughs> yeah, it, tell me more about that turf that they've got going in in. It's not Arizona. the same field we play on. <laughs> it's different grass. It's the NFL. This is it's Willie the groundskeeper, I think, has invented yeah, that scheme the, that they've got there. Probably. Well, the production trailer is just on it. They are on it. Uh, they're not saying yeah. anything in my ears. They okay. are. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Good okay. stuff right there. You know, we come up short in a lot of ways in Arizona, but you know. Are you one of those guys that sits and watches the entire NFL draft? Absolutely. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I watch party. Have a watch party alone. He's the only alone. one who saw Brock Purdy get drafted. <laughs> a actually, watch party alone. <laughs> I, I, will, I will tell that. you. I will tell you. I mean this. When the Bears jumped over Patrick Mahomes to get Mitch Trubisky, this is no joke. I was watching that draft and. Myself and my children thought Mitch Trubisky was an offensive lineman. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Had no idea he was a quarterback. Who is this? He's not. I tried to tell what? you he no was a big phony. Big phony. No clue. He's definitely a fourth rounder that got wowed and dazzled by his size. And <laughs> that is arm. such a Bears move, too. Yeah. It really is. Well, we hope you're not watching this event alone. We, there might be something wrong, you know, if, if, if that's the case. But if you are. Hope you're enjoying it. This was a two-man race coming into today. That is not, not the case. Oh, not look the at case that. anymore. Yeah, the top Absolutely. five, top five are all in this thing. I think. Yeah. Uh, depending on how quick everything cleans up tomorrow, what is going to happen? Man, oh man, we got still more fishing to go today. That is for sure, and a very important day. Have to be in the top ten at the end of it all. Three thirty. Weigh in. Write it down. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by. Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Well, a couple of hours from now, the weigh-in will start cranking up here. Everybody's having fantastic. fun. Fantastic. Okeechobee County, that's our host organization. They're a fantastic host organization. And of course, uh, now until weigh-in time, it's Saturday's a big expo day. Lots of stuff oh, to yeah. see, lots of stuff to take in. If you love bass fishing, this is like heaven. Being here in this weather and not quite as warm as it was yesterday, but man, oh man. He's a good boy. To, oh, he is. Compared to the rest of the world, it's, yeah, it's I'll very, take very nice. 74. It was 31 degrees here when we woke up this morning. Yeah, I'll take yeah. 74. <laughs> we'll take it. We would take it. Our TH Marine Weather Watch, as we say, 72 right now. We'll be uh, back closer to 10 degrees or warmer to, than that tomorrow. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Dave Mercer is going to be running things at that weigh in. We look forward to that. And of course, a big day. Top 10, making that top 10 so important. Boy, you've got your season off right if you can make it in the top 10. It has felt a like a go. fronty day today oh, looking at and that. Looking at like, yeah. TH Marine weather watch. Gonna yeah. be 
big, we, we opened up with Bassmaster Live for the season and said the X Factor was going to be today with that major shift. Don't like north wind on this lake very often. Mm -hmm. Definitely see that switch around and get back to beautiful temps, beautiful weather tomorrow. Westerly, southerly, maybe even a little bit by the end a of the A little bit of east in the morning, then it's just really going to lay down critical bass right here for Brandon. Co not good. Oh, no. Don't think it was a big one, but should lay right down tomorrow. Jake Whitaker with another one. Boop. Not a giant, but he'll go. Let's see what he'll go. What do I do with my right there beside me? Got to beat 114. Oh, yeah. Two and three quarter. Not a bad one. Almost a pound upgrade. Not big, but not bad. I'm here, little fella. Oh, yeah. One, two. It's actually a really good call right there. Cool. Come on, give me a begging. Let's get a begging. Jake Stilling for his first victory at the Bassmaster Elite Series. You said it, it could come in this state. He's he's always starting off on a strong note. Almost won in 2020 oh, oh, when I'm Paul Mueller won the St. John's. He was in the top five there. I'll push you off the back deck with it. And then the Harris Joust. chain last year, he was third going into day three. <laughs> Four he really likes fishing those Doug Canals there. Yeah. He likes the tight quarters. Works, works good for him there. Different story here. I did a story with him last year, Ronnie, on getting off to a hot start because he's had it go both ways down there. He's had a bad oh, start yeah. and a great start. And he knows you try to make it up in that second event and you just can't fish like that. How about Carl Jacobson? Third five pounder. 21 pounds, 12 ounces. See him try to. You see him try to stab his cameraman right here what? with his fishing rod. Watch this. Oh, yeah, exactly. oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh, oh. He was Ooh. the high school fencing champion. He's a nice dude. But <laughs> no, unicycle. 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 <laughs> That's right. What's He's a nice difference? dude, but you could tell that was totally on purpose. <laughs> Better yet, the unicycle fencing team. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't? Can you skip a dock on a unicycle, Tommy? Oh, Whitaker I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I could be thrown off one and skip under a dock. We got to see his alma mater succeed this year. Shane LeHue kind of paved the path at UNC Charlotte. Jake Whitaker followed it up with a great success in the championship. Louis Minetti went in the college bracket and yeah. won team of the year with his teammate Michael Fishing Figaro. Classic, yeah. yeah. Classic, and he'll be a part of our Open's EQ field for all nine this year. Watch his face. What? <laughs> Hold on. Come get it. One more time, Middleton. He said, You want it? Oh, <laughs> come get it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, you uh, can tell we're off FS1. Yeah, yeah. You you can, it, it gets. That's the mercury move of the time. <laughs> Enjoying the freedoms that we get yep. sometimes. Hey. And abusing them. I, I've been known to do some crazy stuff. I mean, I can ride a unicycle, so, I mean, a little jousting action might be in my future. <laughs> Just be part of the circus, why don't I? Just gonna take and slink around the corner. One of those little reed heads over to Steve Kennedy. Sitting on a very solid stringer. Nope. It was a bite, but it wasn't very big. Well, it was supposed to lay down. It has not done no, that no, so I think far. It's got, I, think it's, Tommy. I think it's ginned up a little bit in the last 30 minutes. Yeah. You guys want some unofficial trivia? 
Wow. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sounds like different. Steve Kennedy's big bag at Clear Lake when he caught 122 pounds, 14 ounces, 2007. Victory set the all time record at that point. What was his big bag? Day three. Was it? Do you want some choices? I got uh, 39 one, 40 pounds, one ounce, 40 pounds, seven ounces, 41 pounds, one ounce. I'm saying 40 pounds, one ounce. 40 pounds, seven ounces. I didn't even uh, hear the options. <laughs> well, you should listen. I wasn't listening. 40 pounds, 7 ounces. He finished it up. He got within 3 pounds of uh, Greg Gutierrez. Remember him? Oh, yes. Fireman, Fireman. from uh, yeah. Redding, California. And Call then he a, finished up with 32. That day. He would have blown it out of the water even more so. He had to let go of that 9-pounder right. that bit it outside the mouth. We've heard different numbers on how much he spent on swim baits there. <laughs> it's over 10,000. Boy, if we're almost catching 33 pounds yesterday, Brandon Cobb, mm. it has mm. slow. For only f four fish, I'm amazed he's only less three and a half pounds or less down to Kennedy. Seventh place right now. Fifteen pounds. Come on, stay hooked. First time you've seen Clark change from that swimming worm to a bladed jig today. Your top three right there. All right, last cast. So, long, so many days straight, and I could tell. And it's blown fishing. out. I guess we're going to the river. Hopefully, it's not blown out, but who knows? It might be crystal clear. It's not as clear as down here, even when it was clear, but. We tried hard. Brandon Cobb in here. a punt. We failed. Yeah. <laughs> Had another small bite. Jamie's in my best spot. Where I caught both my big ones. We're just roaming around looking for a bike.
top two anglers after day one fell on hard times. Day number two, and that's what has happened so far to our top two anglers from day number two. Much closer race. And any fears of a runaway have kind of been, at least for now, taken off the table. Now you look at guys, though, like Steve Kennedy and Logan Latuso. You can throw Carl in that mix, but you catch over 20 pounds today. Oh. You've done something. Oh, no kidding. I was going to ask you that, Z, who's most feared, the guy who is catching four to five pound average fish or relying on seven, eight pound bite? I mean, they're both dangerous, I mean, if it happens. Well, yesterday it was the guy that was catching four to five pound fish with a seven to eight pound bite. <laughs> yeah, well, um, three sevens. Kennedy's obviously dangerous just because he is going to stick with this, and this is a my gosh, if you do get those five bites, and he's got a lot of time to still even upgrade from there. Get rid of that two and a half pounds. Yeah, but I've, yeah, I've looked at, at, the, at our mapping. That, that area that Kennedy's in, besides the Elite Series competitors, there, obviously there's a, another big tournament going on. That area is getting hammered, coming off of a hammering a mm -hmm. week ago. I just wonder if there are three guys who make it out of Kennedy's area to the top ten tomorrow. They haven't necessarily for sure too. Like yeah. they, you know, they've had the ability to move around. It's not like they are confined to a certain spot. They can move around, but now they'll be able to move around tomorrow a little quicker. They don't have to just sit on a spot. Maybe maybe they find some the fresh highway that Cobb found yesterday coming in the area. That's what makes anybody who makes the top ten tomorrow dangerous. Is that you could have seven of the right bass swim into your area and you intersect with them. Dang, yeah, so Fuentes here. and Card are right in that neck of the wood. Right <laughs> oh. No, there's one out here somewhere. We make it tomorrow, I think. We might be able to catch him again, because I think it's supposed to be no wind. Steve Kennedy mm -hmm. trailing our top two by a good margin to start this day. Has had the best of them today for sure. So far. I don't think he's done yet today. Oh, that's the biggest uh, one I've got all week, I think. I got her. Today I'd pop it loose. We're doing it. He is doing it. Steve Kennedy with the lead, two pounds, 10 ounces ahead of Tyler Rivette. Brandon Cobb, tough day so far. He's going to change spots here, see if he can get something going to wrap up his day. Jake Whitaker, the man on the bubble right now. Drew Cook, currently in our top 10, going to do whatever he can to stay in there. He needs some fish as well. we got to, to take a little break here, but we'll come right back. Yeah! Hook order! No way! Live coverage of the Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Well, less than a couple of hours away, the weigh-in will crank up, and that will be time for these anglers to, well, the first flight anyway, to, to take their boats out of the water and uh, face the music, see if they make it into the top 10. And Mark Zona, we've, uh, you know, we knew, we've said it from, the, you, you said it from, from day one, certainly, that this was going to be a survival day. Some of our anglers, three from our top ten, are now just outside the cut. That's Drew Cook, Cooper Gallant, Gerald Swindle, 
right together under that. They've, they've got time to get it done. But well, uh, man, oh man, you got to you got to get something going. I think one of the really cool things that definitely transpired in this tournament, we got to actually see uh, from calling this event to everybody that's at home watching this tournament. If you were with us yesterday is you got to see one of those true Florida waves happen during actual competition. You always talk about it. And, and you can dissect it as much as you want, but you got to see yesterday on camera one of those waves pushing in to a lot of those guys fishing on the north side of the northwest side of Lake Okeechobee. On the adverse side of that, you also see how instantly, instantly a weather change can dissipate that push going into those shallow bays and those coves. It'll be very interesting to see going into Championship Sunday, and Ronnie nailed it. Can one of these guys that's, you know, not within three pounds of the leader, can one of these guys collide with one of those waves with another weather change that we have coming? But you've really seen the tale of two faces in this tournament being a giant push of giant bass, and then when that front hits, how it just goes, and it is done. All right. Ronnie Moore at the screen of knowledge as we try to anticipate what's going to happen today. What do you got for us, Ronnie? Yeah, I wanted to load up the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge with a little bit of Opens EQ. The St. Croix Bassmaster Opens for 2023 are hotly contested. We have 175 anglers signed up for all nine. And yesterday I mentioned these guys are all working to be where our Elite Series pros are right now. Day three of the season at Okeechobee. They would love to be in this position next year at this time. And looking at the schedule to fish all nine, you kind of have a bunch of opportunities at the Classic. If you fished a normal division, you can still sign up for one division of the Opens if you wanted to. And if you win one, you could still make the Classic. The only thing, you cannot make the Elite Series. You have to fish all nine. That is where the EQ points race will come into play, going with a couple stops in Alabama. You have Florida, uh, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Missouri, Virginia, New York, and Tennessee all represented in the schedule. A little bit of a diverse new schedule, but the competitors, we've seen these guys across the country at different tours, different places, and they're all going to merge at the Bassmaster Opens EQ this season. A couple familiar names. I can make a notables list of 60 or 70 anglers that have had success either on the national level or in the Opens level or the college level that are going to be in our field of vying for those nine elite spots. But a couple guys trying to make it back to the Elite Series. Ish Monroe, Bobby Lane, those are some notables there. James Nigmeyer as well. He was on the Elite Series uh, you know, about half a decade ago and was is, is trying to make it back as well. And then we've got some young guys, whether they've been on the Elite Series in the past, like Garrett Paquette, uh, that have been kicked out and relegated back to the Opens and cut from the field. Those guys are going to be piling into the Opens as well. Guys also Harvey Horn, Dale Hightower, Dustin Demarion. A lot of those guys, Shane Leinberger, that were on the Elite Series just a few years ago are back. And then we have a big rush of the college contingent. We had Lo Logan Parks almost make the Opens, almost qualify for the Elite's last Open season. Very close there. We'll have Lewis Minetti representing the College Series as our bracket champion this year. John Garrett, another former classic bracket champion, also doing it. There's a bunch of college anglers making a push as well. So you're going to have a mix of touring pros that are making the decision to change their careers for the better, hopefully. And then also you've got the next wave of guys and you've got guys who have been there and done that and are trying to get back to do it once more. So Ronnie, who's your Bassmaster you. Open Angler of the Year oh my champion? Goodness. Go Why not? Do, I mean, do, we, do we have fantasy? Geez. Uh, we don't have fantasy for the Opens. I could maybe whip it up in the next two weeks, but looking at Ish Monroe at Lake Okeechobee, the last time we broke the century mark in the state of Florida, 2012, he did so in runaway fashion. What an awesome event, flipping a big jig, and a, I guess this was the debut of the D-bomb for him as well. Yeah, we were voicing this one over, and this is where that things almost got slipped up. <laughs> That's where it was. Ah. <laughs> Oh, that was that. That was something else. Lost that lead after a couple of days. Got it back. And, I mean, in a big way, came back roaring back. You remember interviewing Ish after one of the wanes? He did not want to take his sunglasses off. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't not remember gonna, why. I mean, he said, nobody, nobody can make me take my sunglasses off. I was like, whoa. Was yeah. that at Amistad? He, no, it's there. Oh, it was Easy. here. Absolutely. Okay. 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 He was adamant. He was going to wear those. Sunglasses and you know, nobody was going to tell him otherwise. Z, you may have been just messing with me, but I will give you give me give me three minutes and I will give you a okay. an opens prediction for EQ. We don't have to be silent for the three minutes. I just was just time wise. It would help. We yeah. can. <laughs> oh, I'm stunned at Tyler Rivette's day today. Everybody thought that 
Yeah. Totally weatherproof. I got 12. Because I think some of those twos are like two fours, two threes. Like, we didn't undershoot it much, but. Yeah. Well, we'll try to catch them anyway. It'll be fun catching them. Even if they're all 13 inches, it'll be fun catching them up here. Yeah. I was just hoping, like, I wanted to give it long enough in there to make sure they weren't going to pull in. But at this point, I mean, they might, but it just didn't seem promising, you know? Right. Feel like they would have by then. I pulled up right here because I got like 150 yards of no trees and I got a little ways of trees and we'll see if, I don't know which one's better. But I did catch a six pounder up here, so I mean, could potentially catch a big one. I mean, I told you I'm a master puncher, my forte. Clark Winlet. One of our anglers in his blog this week, Z said that he was of the opinion that Florida, large men, do not relate to contours. What did he mean by that? Oh, oh, oh sorry. Oh, come on. That's what I needed right there, because gosh. I knew when he bit, he hit so hard, I was like, that's got to be him. Thinking it was yellow and it's yellow. That's a real one there. Dude, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many fish do I have in here? I got I got four on that side. I got one on that side. I am gonna throw this one back. And I'm going to take this one, put him there. Actually, take him off that. All right, he's doing fine. Dude, that's what you needed. That was it. That was him. Boy, caught them all on days one and two with a swimming worm transitioning to a bladed jig with the lower ceilings, a lot more wind down in South Bay today. How about one more? God, what a bite. Oh, I cannot tell you how good that bite felt. Throwing a tungsten thunder cricket, and that one hammered it. Feeling it. Do you know, I brought up that FLW that you covered him in yeah. almost 30 years ago. Right, right. He is literally on the waypoint. Wow. Where he caught them 30 years ago. That's... So you're saying Scott Martin's blog about how spots don't matter. You're saying that. I don't know. That I, I'm not, I didn't say that. No, I didn't I say didn't. anything. You said that, <laughs> no, actually. Brandon Card is having a dynamic day on the water here. We've got a little bonus coverage of him right here, boat to boat, hooked up, and let's see what he's got. Currently in eighth place. Late day big ones right now. That's one of them. Good Lord, yes. 
for a guy who was worried about even being able to fish the elites this season, this is a good on him. Beyond good I finish up. so far. That's amazing. Really is. There have been questions online about what is ailing him, but he's talked about it. He's got Bell's, a case of Bell's palsy and said it could take two weeks, it could take three months to get over. Has part of his face uh, paralyzed, Surprise. I guess. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 To where his eye won't shut on its own. He has to tape it shut at night to sleep or he has to wear an eye patch while he's out there so it doesn't dry out from the wind and the air. But he's, you know, he's gone through a lot of other health things up to this point that that's the least of his concerns other than getting over it. I hope he fully recovers very quickly. Catch one like that in the last five minutes of a big tournament, that just doesn't get any better than that. Win mm. is a seven pounder, Man, he got 21-7 like on the day fourth place. He's the one to watch for the classic as well, Tommy. He's the one who actually knows that part of the oh, Tennessee yeah. River better than anyone else, whether he lives in North Carolina now or not. It's his home. Well, that one pushed Clark Winlet right into the, mm -hmm. right into the thick of it, Four top of the leaderboard, near lead. the top. Oh, it's amazing. It's dead for like two hours, and then all of a sudden you start seeing the shots come in. Mm -hmm. Yes. In well, the, well, South Bay, former Angler of the Year champion. Power pole replay of the day is going to be that one right there. Needed it in a big way, transitioning from a swim worm over to a tungsten thunder cricket. You heard him. Unbelievable bite right there. And there's one guy you do not want sniffing around the lead going into championship Sunday. I knew when he bit, he hit so hard, I was like, that's got to be him. Well, it was him. <laughs> Indeed, a big call right there for Clark Wenland. Starting to see those bags creeping over yeah. 20 pounds. Took a lot longer today than it oh, did yesterday. Way different from the first couple of days, really. Steve Kennedy still hanging in top there, but look at Clark Wenland. That bumped him up about three spots right behind Tyler Rabette. He is right in the middle of this race for the top. Looking great to make it to tomorrow, almost a lock. You could say, Logan Latuso, Jockinson, looking very good as well. Brandon Carr just landed a big one. Ed Lochran and Will Davis running out of our top 10 right now. We will be right back. Yeah! Order! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Into the final hours of day number three, semi-final Saturday here at the Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee. So great to be started up again. New season, new year. 2023 for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We're down to 50 anglers on this day. And a while back we thought, well, there's a chance of some guys really kind of distancing themselves from the crowd. That has sort of evaporated, at least in the top four positions right now. So Which is, we, a, we like that. Well, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done for whoever <laughs> who's going to hold that trophy at the end of the day tomorrow. We'll take you down to our way at the C. Scott Driver Park there in Okeechobee City in Okeechobee County, our host host community here. And of course, that is where the weigh-in at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time is going to crank up and all will be decided vis-a-vis uh, -vis the 10 anglers who will fish on championship. Dave, I think you'll agree uh, somebody's going to have to really excel tomorrow. <laughs> it's not going to be handed to anybody today. That's obvious. No, it's incredible, guys. To watch this tournament, it's weird. It kind of lulls you. Like every time I start to think like, oh, you know, day one, I really, I went to dinner that night with Davey Height and I'm sitting there and I'm like, Scott Martin has this tournament. I mean, it's just so under control. He's not catching the giant fish. He's catching the right size fish. He's got a spot to himself, which is unheard of on Okeechobee. 
And then day two happens. And then you're like, well, I didn't even remember that Brandon Cobb had a camera going into day two, to be honest, just because it was kind of a silent day one. Then day two comes around, you're like, well, Brandon Cobb's got it. But then you see what Tyler Rivette is doing, which is amazes me because, to my knowledge, he's not only outsmarted this entire field and got onto something nobody else in the, t- in the field is doing, but there was a major tournament here last week. That didn't happen then either, as far as I know. So it's pretty amazing that he's got onto that. So you start to think it's going to be his. And now day three, I'm, um, I'm, I'm just confused. I don't know who's going to win this, but it's perfect for all of us because that's what you want. I mean, it's the Daytona 500 weekend. People are excited. There's a lot of great things going on. And it's the start of the Elite Series. So it might as well be Florida fireworks. Yeah, Florida. And of course, this place we're at, Lake Okeechobee is a fascinating place. There's so much that we still are learning about it every time we visit there. And, and you know, I, I think uh, you've got a special guest who can kind of clue us in on the state of the lake right now. What makes it so different? I, I, would you like to bring him on now? Oh, Tommy, you spoiled the surprise. I do have a special guest. <laughs> oh, my God. What have I done? Bass Conservation Ooh. Director. Bang. Gene Gilland is back with me. And, Gene, um, first of all, you got professional this year. There is no tournament jersey. You actually look like an employee. It's in the truck. Oh. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll go on when we get ready for the weigh-in. That way, all of the anglers, they know who to look for. If they've got any questions, if they've got concerns about fish care, any of that, that bright yellow green kind of gaudy jersey just jumps right out at him. And even if a tournament breaks out, Gene is ready to go just like that. One thing I have heard all week, Gene, is we've had several anglers basically make political stands on the stage. You know, Scott Martin being one, Kobe Krieger being one. And it really came from their heart. But we've heard a lot of anglers talk about water level. What is the story behind that? Gene it for me. Dave, the, the water levels in this lake have always gone up and down. Hurricanes, dry seasons, warm seasons, uh, wet seasons. And it's created a lot of problems over the years for water being discharged from Lake Okeechobee, either out of the east or west to the coasts or to the Everglades. And those have created floods. It's created algae blooms. Uh, it's kind of dried up things in the Everglades, kind of. Uh, the iconic river of grass doesn't have a lot of river in it. But last year, the Corps of Engineers passed a new water level management plan that is going to hold the lake routinely higher than it has historically been. The problem with that is when you have high water in Lake Okeechobee, you have dark water, the sunlight can't reach the bottom, you don't have those dry periods that allows the submerged grasses to grow up. And that's what's really the, the problem that we're looking at in the, for the future of this lake. The submerged grass, the, the hydrilla, the eelgrass, those kind of things are what really is the nursery areas for all of the fish out there. And if you don't have that growing, it's not a good future. And so, what uh, Scott Martin and, and the group that he works with, uh, Kobe, some of the other local anglers, are trying to encourage people to talk to their elected representatives, especially at the congressional level, because the Corps of Engineers answers to Congress. And at some point, we hope maybe we can get that water level plan uh, modified a little bit, at least so that it takes the fishery of Lake Okeechobee into account. Certainly, we don't want to flood people east and west. We want to help the Everglades. But the lake needs to be a player in that, too. And it really didn't get a lot of consideration in that dis- those decisions that were made the last two or three years. And so that's kind of where we are. You know, a lot of people are concerned about the lack of grass that we've seen here the last several years. Of course, they've had a couple of hurricanes. You have consistently high water. And that just kills the grass out. And that looks like that might be the future. And that's what we're concerned with. So how do we help? How do we stop this? Well, I think the the first thing is all of the folks that that love Lake Okeechobee need to contact their congressman. Uh, The folks in Washington, D.C. have control at some level over what the Corps of Engineers does. They went through all the public hearings and they did all the official stuff, but the anglers' voices just weren't heard. 
Uh, the, a lot of political powers from the east, the west, and the Everglades really control the day. So that's what we need to do is try to try to make sure that, that Congress is aware that that lake needs to be part of the picture. Why wasn't it? Is it just the lowest thing on the totem pole? That, unfortunately, anglers tend to be reactive instead of proactive. And the bus, Too busy fishing. The bus already ran us over before we realized what was going on and were able to organize enough political power to have our seat at the table when that those negotiations were going on. And, you know, everybody on the national news saw the algae blooms. And, of course, you've got the iconic Everglades that the whole country knows about. But the fishing component, the Lake Okeechobee component, just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Well, act now, basically, and get out and, and speak to your Congress. And is there... There, there's. Uh, I think on, it's. Just, this is the chance to get the Bass Nation all riled up. This is your Hulk Hogan moment. Tell them what to do, Gene. Look in that camera and tell them. Go to Facebook and look up Scott Martin's uh, Save Lake Okeechobee group. They are the the linchpin right now in what's going to be able to to make some movement on this effort. That group, I think, can can organize as a, a group and get the anglers' voices heard. And, and we need people basically from all over the country, not just the ones that live here in Florida, to, to get out there and, and be part of this movement. So get out there and, yes. and keep this incredible fishery better. But, you know, you might not see this on TV, guys, but Gene is quite a specimen of a man. And we saw Tyler Rivette giving the gun show yesterday. Can you, what? Gene, this, I mean, it'd be so, totally off character. People will love it. Will you finish this with a gun show? Come on, a quick one for the Bass Nation. Okay. How's yeah. that? Not what you had in mind? It, yeah, just just like that, Gene. Just 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 like that, Gene. Yeah. Good stuff. It, make sure you make Lake Okeechobee better. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Gene Gilliland. And we we enjoy picking on Gene, but Gene, great stuff. G Absolutely. Seriously, Gene dedicates his life to that word, to conservation. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like a year or two ago people were saying how evil live wells and stuff were see that right. gene's not oh, an yeah. agenda that right live wells aren't that bad now if you know what gene has a very re right. see, reasonable request from gene make equal yes. consideration for lake okeechobee you can't look at this place from thirty thousand feet and say that's not a significant yeah part right. of the landscape here in florida in america no gene does Great a request. ton and does a heck of a job at mm -hmm. what his job is and that's caring for lakes and bass that's yeah. that is the word conservation Conservation has always been an important part of the bass man, the bass anglers sportsman society. It, and he succinctly brought in what the anglers who are emotional at times when they talk about it on stage said, you know, we see a 32 pound bag and then Kobe Krieger comes up and talks about, well, the lake's on the downtrend. It's hard for that to resonate, but when he explains that sustained prolonged periods of this level will have ramifications that take years to come back to, then it all makes sense of why, you know, how can you be negative? It's, it's fishing great right now, but they want to be proactive, not reactive, like you said. Steve Kennedy, terrific day. Over 22 pounds and finds himself in the lead in the latter part of day three of four days of fishing here. feel like Steve Kennedy's just looking for one more big bite to get a little more separation from there. We're going to head north a couple miles. Gerald Swindle, who kind of got off the beaten path from the area he was in on day two. Gerald, just a couple of pounds, a little less than a couple of pounds out of that cut line right now. He's got a, he's got a project for the remainder of this day. This might help. Check it. It's a shame if he does. Be a 
fish and put them on the beam. fishing the bite and I seen them boys right here in front of me just catch a big and weigh it. What? Well, Patrick Walters days one and two fishing down in South Bay decided to call an audible that has not yet worked out. Um, the challenge is just kind of finding the area that really has got them. I mean I know they're they're close by. I mean, they didn't go far. They're probably more on that outside line than anything. But uh, it's just been a slow day. You know, I didn't run to my fish trying to stay on this North Shore, uh, you know, protected by the wind today. Um, it hasn't been the best call as of right a second. You know, we still got time because I have been catching majority of my fish all after one o'clock. Um, but hey, it's fishing. You live and you learn. I mean, you, you go with your gut. Your gut ain't always right. but. That's why we're just fishing away. This front definitely messed with these fish. I know people are still probably catching them, but it's been a slow day. I mean, it's been hard to trigger these fish to get to bite. I mean. As we were talking about opens AOI, Opens EQ, a couple guys that you get, you're gonna have the top nine make the Elite Series. And Tommy, I'll throw a few names out to you for a couple okay, of different reasons. Here. All right. I do think the water dropped a little bit. I think I think Bobby Lane yeah, will be a player. Wind, you know, on somewhere on. in that top I'll ten range. A lot of fish out. I think two young guys, Logan Shaddix from the University of Alabama, fished. But more than anything, I probably when I was in school, stuck with my fish down lake. Made a check in every open I last year that he fished in, but but barely didn't qualify. J T Tompkins. He's been so close to qualifying in a specific division each year, and he won one last year. And then two guys that people may not know of as, as much, but they've fished on a professional level in other tours, Jimmy Washam and Kurt Mitchell. I think those are, they've, they've been around enough to know these different regions of the country. So it's not just all chalk on, yeah, every, every former elite that's trying is going to make it back. I think, I think there's a, a couple handfuls of some demographics we're going to see. Yeah, we're no going to see some. It. Now, that's a big commitment. How many, do you, tell us again, how many people have signed up for this? 175. Oh I, the last time for I all, heard, for, for all, all nine. nine. For, for all, all nine. nine. Which that's, means, and the field remarkable. is like 225. So there's probably 40 to 50 that are fishing each division, just fishing that division. But once you see that number, we could have had a couple more sign up, you know? I, I have no idea what it'll end up being, but... And that obviously may drop down after six or seven events. If you're not in it, you may drop out. But for the people who sign up, I mean, they're committed to nine. I, I'm assuming they're going to try to see it through because you still have classic chances. It's not like it's we do the, the southerns and then the northerns and then the centrals. They're all mixed in, so yeah. it's hard to just pull out midseason. Yeah. Such, do you agree or disagree with Ronnie's picks? Hey, oh, he's good. I was going to mention something else that hacked me. <laughs> Thank you. And Chris, <laughs> they made it back. They said it was the toughest thing they've ever done, the most stressful fall they've ever had to get back in the Elite from the Opens. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hard way to go. What about John Garrett? He was on my screen. Yeah. Was he on yeah. yeah. well, I, 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 He wasn't yeah, in my, my, my what I did right there, but I okay. put in my promo in, in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely it was. <laughs> All right. Some of the anglers are going to start moving pretty soon, trying to get closer, closer and closer to the way in which is looming. That's Cooper Gallant's boat right there. Cooper's got uh, currently, unofficially, outside that cut line, but not by much. Cooper Gallant can make one big, one big fish come to the boat, and he's in there. Same is true of several anglers out there just below that cut line. There's Cooper, one of the fantastic rookies this year. As we say, 10 anglers only will advance today. Number four, Championship Sunday here, and it will all be decided at the weigh-in. Coming up, mark it down, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Bassmaster.com. Bassmaster Elite Series event number one. Stop number one for 2023 here on the Big O. And here's our hummingbird, Unlock the Lake, currently on Lake Okeechobee, how they're distributed throughout this giant place. Yeah, Tommy, and really kind of the biggest surprise is how much of a player, not only Tyler Rivette, the Kissimmee River has definitely been a player in this tournament. 
As you kind of get down around Tin House all the way down to Worm Cove, that's really been I, the, the most consi consistent, at least for guys that are in the top 20 right now. As you get near the Monkey Box into Moonshine Bay, just south of where Steve Kennedy, Chris Johnson, you see him and young Jake Whitaker's fishing. All right, we're going to stop right there. We are not going to head down towards Moonshine. We're stopping right yeah, there. Let's just, let's just take a little. You better no, find that, that your shows place. Look at that just circus. How much pressure yeah. has been around the worm Cove area. And hey, let, let's just face it. Why would you ever pass up Joey Sofuentes? He ever? needs to get that cowboy hat branded with sponsors if he really wants to capitalize. Well, that's it's a very a big good point. That is, a very, that is your Minn Kota Humminbird Unlock the Lake. That was a that was a different Unlock the Lake than it I thought we were going. Ooh, Joey um, Sofuentes is having a good day. 17 plus. Or 17 even, I should say. Born in Florida, lives in Arkansas, deadly up north for the smallmouth swing. So we'll, wow. we should see him. And he's been a touring pro for a couple years now, learned from the general, from the back deck of his boat for a couple years. Yeah. I can't believe I ain't caught a good one on this thing the whole tournament. Right now we have four anglers within four pounds at the top of the leaderboard. Whitaker and Latuso tied 714 back. And then Jockamson is 914 back. Look at him sneaking in the top 10. Those are the only seven that are within 10 pounds of the lead right now. Be interesting to see what Carl's doing. Probably will have a chance tomorrow. Likelihood of that. Nothing's locked in yet. It all comes down to the weigh-in today again. It's longer. Cobb's checking one. Only 11 and a half pounds right now. Gotta look though. If I miss cut by one ounce, I'll be like, gosh dang. He's bigger. He is bigger. Don't even need the beam on him. All right, another two ounces. Another two ounces. Another negligible call. <laughs> Let me use this bigger weight. This feels better than that small weight. Boy, it's obvious there was not a big push in that area where Brandon Cobb was at yesterday because there were several really good bags caught out of there. That was not the case today, pretty much across the board. I mean, I think you had 24-9 from Swindle, 32-15 from Cobb. I think Micah had a... Yeah, Micah had Hanselman. 18 and a half came from Ed Lockeran, too. Pretty cool, that one, anyway. That white one, I'm Swindle needing a big one or two more solid ones to have a chance of cracking that top ten. According to Bass Track, that's all unofficial have to add that. Yeah, we have a handful, maybe five, eight guys who do not have a bass track today. You never know. Yeah, that's right. Yes, they were lower. They were very, very low in the in the standings. Most 30, of them, 35 yeah. to 50, but somebody can make a jump. Somebody goes 29 like Lowen yesterday, jumps up from 80th to 10th. Take more weight or less weight to win next week at Seminole? Huh. Well, what is this? Is tomorrow going to be like a day one, day two, I, or is I, it like today? I don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking you get to that here. 87, 88 90. pound range. Yeah. Oh, Ain't got a bite on it yet. Well, Kennedy is 20 tomorrow. He'll have 90. I think we do. Bigger next week? Yeah. 
Like I think it. we do. Like it. 98 and a half last time, three and a half days of fishing. In your text chain with your buddies, your local buddies down there, do you have a Seminole text chain too? No, no, I don't. I wish. You do not. I wish. There's really not much, not many people. What around, are tournaments taking know. a win around Seminole right now? I have not checked. Well, I got to fish there with Drew Benton a couple of years. It, it, it was good. <laughs> I mean, good. Weather was miserable. Terrible. It was, fun. It was yeah. cold and rainy. <laughs> the whole day. All I remember from 2014 is there was a lot of places to catch them there. Say that again, T. All I remember from 2014 was there were a lot of places to catch them. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it yes. was it was very yeah, cold. Like root jam. Very cold to as start, well. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yes. then stormy at the end. Yes. Big bags, even with the cold temps, big bags early from sight fishermen. Mm -hmm. Then it started to, to roll out to some of the moving bait guys as the event progressed. Oh, Hold see that? Away. Now I'm tangled up. Oh, now I'm caught. Where's that six pounder I caught in practice? Like, honestly, the first day of the tournament, my practice was so bad, I almost just started up here. Because I knew it was easy to catch fish. I was like, should I just start there and catch a few? I'm glad I didn't, but almost did. Man, we got freaking trees again. I don't like the trees. Oh, he has got a handful there. Wow. Take it out. You want it? <laughs> Come get it. <laughs> Can't do it enough. Take in after Tyler Revit there and catching some dinner. Tell it has been slow the last hour. It has been a little bit slow. We got ruined yesterday. Absolutely ruined. Totally ruined. Maybe for the whole season. <laughs> This is a predicament Rivette's in. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Went one branch up. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, it's all tangled. Hey Z, I'm not a much of a knock knock guy, so it's a little different tone, but you know what that tree said to Tyler? Go ahead. You want it? <laughs> oh, well done. Don't get it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's not a traditional knock knock joke there. Steve Kennedy pushing, pushing his time down there today. A lot of anglers starting to make their way back to. How's it going? Okeechobee. City. Been City. okay. Been a while since I've had a good one.
<laughs> Come back in here and do it again. Obviously, I have to see where we're standing. But, but, but no, get in here quick and make a quick pass, try to find some aggressive ones. And, and then somehow I gotta figure out how to catch some fish later in the day. This middle part of the day has been extremely tough for me. There seems to be a window somewhere around, you know, 10 to 11.30 where I can catch some fish. And then, and then nothing. Had a bunch of late baits the first day, but, uh, but I haven't since, so. Anyway, I'll probably end up throwing a swim bait around in these boat lanes. <laughs> I don't see me picking up a Senko. I might even tie on a drop shot. I mean, we got this, we are looking at those fish this morning on that active target. I have no doubt I can catch them. And catch limits doing that, but I just don't know how many big ones I can get. But we watched Brandon get a big one there. He's got something figured out. <laughs> I don't know. Some other fish I haven't been to, I'd love to go check them out, but I just don't see how I get away from this again. Wow, oh, it's going by so fast. The hey, music. we got another event in Florida, and then after that, we are going to the Tennessee River. March 4th, 5th, and 6th is the World Championship, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Toyota. Knoxville, we were there four years ago. They broke the attendance record there. It got broken at Hartwell last year. We're going to see if they can break it back again. This time around, students will be there. They might have a good chance of doing that. They have the biggest crowd we've ever seen for a classic. Fort Loudon and Teleco, the fishery there. and Some of the locals say that's, that's the best time to be there. So. Hey, how can you how can you miss? Well, we got more more to come here when we get back. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Mincota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance, and by Rapala. Hi folks, Tommy Sanders here reminding you that I will mislead you. From time <laughs> no. So, uh, I have got to no. hey, folks. <laughs> re restate the dates for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota. It is March 24th, 25th, and 26th. Those are the correct dates. You've got to keep an eye on me. Good. We've You're had a cameraman show up to a shoot early on a Zona show lately. <laughs> we can get into that. Yeah, okay. cancel that vacation day request. Cancel the plane tickets 24th, 25th, 26th of March for the Classic. Hope to see you there. All right, Ronnie. Thank you for everyone giving us the heads up where they were, they're eager about the classic as well. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. Wanted to give one last fantasy update before we get to Championship Sunday tomorrow, where the top 10 are fishing and the fantasy picture, picture becomes much clearer out on the water. But when it comes to in studio, you know, I could be the king of fantasy overall, Tommy, but I'd rather, as long as I win here between the three of us, Tommy, your, well, or yourself, Such and I, I'm good. I'm happy. Well, we are all within 40 points right now, so I will take it after the first leg matters. of the season so far. That's all that matters. But the best team so far through day three, we will see how they change at weigh-in, is Bassin uh, 209, I believe. He picked a lot of heavy guys for Florida that he won't be able to use going forward because in Mercury Drain the Lake, you can only use the anglers once when you pick them. But if you're going to pick them, they might as well do well. Bernie Schultz, great pick so far this week. He does not have 
Bash Track registering right now. I don't know. We haven't seen him in the area. I'm not sure if he adjusted. We'll see him at weigh-in. Drew Cook, Ray Hanselman, Lee Livesey. Since we're not going to Lake Fork, it's kind of like where do you plug in Lee Livesey this year? He plugged him in in the first event. It's worked out decently well in the 20s right now. Ed Lochran could make the top 10. That's a good pick. Tyler Rivette as well. Scott Martin was a great day one pick. Logan Latuso is rising up the leaderboard. Bastin 209 is in a good spot. He could have four, maybe five of his wow. eight anglers fishing championship Sunday tomorrow. So, But we won't be able to use them later down the road, so we'll see how some of those picks go. It really isn't about how good your best pick is. It's if you wasted a guy on his worst week of the season, you don't want to do that. Uh, if you have not signed up to play fantasy fishing, it's free to do so, but the prizes are endless. If you're a BASS member, you get even more $500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards. I do believe, I think at every single event and the overall, you get to fish with Davey or Zona if you win Rapala or Mercury Drain the Lake. You can do the QR code there or go to BassmasterFantasy.com to sign up and play for free and talk trash to me, lose to me, beat me, whatever you want to do. It's all good. Yeah. You do your share of trash talking too, Rob. Of course. Oh. Just, yeah. well, I, you remind me of that. I get paid oh. to you do You remind me of that old me. saying, it's not enough to win, your friends must also fail. Hold yes. on, what was that? Let me yes. catch that again. Yeah. What did you say? Remember, you, did you for say those you who come paid? at me, for those who come at me. No, you know, say what you just said. I get paid to do this. You guys do it oh. for fun. Oh my. <laughs> wow. Gosh. <laughs> That was, oh, that yeah. is so that was such planet a, nuts. That was such a fun. So, Tommy, back to the. I'm gonna. I'm happened. moving on to the the, the, the classic. The thing. The Bassmaster yeah, Tournament the Classic. The Bassmaster Classic. Who? Give me your pick for the classic. I'm, I'm gonna say Brandon Lester. Oh, what do you think of that? Okay. Ron. I think this could be a Gerald Swindle Classic. Okay. Such. Wow. Only takes one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to repeat. I want to see Jason Christie. I agree with that. Okay. It's low hanging fruit, but I agree yeah, with that. Wow. It's Tennessee River, man. It's March. You? I'm saying repeat. You're, you're, oh, you're I'm, I'm okay. with Sue. You're, you're on with Sue. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Have two repeat winners within oh, five Tyler. years. Huh? Oh, I'll Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Another bet. Big one. Importance wise. Will this reload tomorrow for Tyler, Tommy? It's a boat flip from really. It's kind of the number one question, isn't it? $100,000 question. <laughs> He'll call, I think. Barely, man. Let's see. Two pounds. Number two. Down six, so. All right, we need to catch more. Yep. We need to catch more. We know that they're biting now. Two pounders, man. Eh? I was pulling it away from those yesterday. Yeah. What a day. difference in an 11 pound day versus a 15 pound day as your worst day is just monumental like if he can if he can call up another pound and a half before weigh in huge mm -hmm. yeah this has turned into a tight tournament now. In there. calm down man. perfect it'll be a, a couple guy race of like whoever catches the biggest bag out of these four or something yep. wins yep. unless someone has a, a major awesome day that we get to watch We'll have cameras in the boat with each of our 10 finalists on Championship Sunday. 
Definitely looking forward to that. Give you early notice. We're going to be on same time. FS1 tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern. I mean, just look at, and this was all the way up to 11.15, but look at Bill Lowen going from 30 pounds mm -hmm. to three and a half. That's... And he was one of the anglers that, the fishing down in the South Bay area, he, he was confident that his area would stay clean, not the case today. Happen. And he has already, I mean, he had to run back when Winlink caught his big one because they're in the same region and, and, you know, the first flight, they had to come back at 2 o'clock. Definitely not like it was, like with them all over the place. You think about his swings this week from 80th to 10th to 30th. Wow. Oh. That's for Whiplash. Sure. Kennedy's about got to get moving here. Yeah, he's, he's, he? yeah, you think he's, he doesn't want to, of course he doesn't know where he stands, but I assume he knows he stands pretty well. Don't want to risk any, all or part of that. When's the last time we went into a final day with Steve Kennedy in the lead? Oh boy. Hoy. Going to calm down. I don't know. Was it his win at Dardanelle? Was he? Was it Sabine? I think Mark Davis was leading in that one. That's, I think you're right there. Yeah. Was he? Was he leading at Eat Sabine? It. Please. One Just day he please. was. Wasn't he? Yeah. Please. Maybe not. Oh, I don't know why I remember that. Oh, that was a Such was correct that. Cole did get him an ounce into second place for Rivette. He didn't yeah. move him. Yeah. I wonder yesterday right, when I was catching him so good, wind. if I could have active targeted him in that hole. I know he turned it on. <laughs> what if I could have seen him out there? I feel like there were so many fish in there, you would have seen fish, but yeah, or even bass. Like, I'm sure in three foot of water, all those like, crappy and shiners and stuff would have looked like something. Maybe a Tyler Rivette might would have been able to, but I don't think I would have been able to. Ooh. Yeah, it felt like a bite. Yes, it wasn't. Getting ready to snatch. Did he lead West Point wire to wire? Or Night? not wire to wire, did he lead, I mean, last couple of days? I think yeah, I so. think okay. so, yeah. I think so. Interesting. If Kenny were to hold on and win, get $100,000, he would pass Davey Height and top $2 million in bass earnings. Wow. You're trying to d drag Davey out of retirement, aren't you, Suge? Yes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have it after Seminole. If Seth Fighter would have made the cut today and gotten $10,000 check, he'd, he'd break into the Million Dollar Club. Wow. There's, a couple, there's was... a couple real awesome moves and shakes this huh. year if people win events or do things like Such said. So we'll have a, at Seminole, we'll have a good breakdown of progress okay. of those different tiers. Or tomorrow, I might, I might whip I've it up I've been speaking to Seminole, I've been asked to remind folks that nowadays we do a preview show. Yeah. On the day before the tournament starts, we'll be doing one for Seminole. I think it'll 
probably uh, go out live on Bassmaster.com. 9 Eastern, I think. 9 Wednesday. Eastern, yeah. That right there sums up the day. Not too long, about an Trash hour or less. There's the day. I got a preview quote about Seminole from that cat right there. Brandon Cow was talking to him. He said Seminole could be one of those sneaky big bag tournaments. He fishes it a bunch in the fall, he said. He said, not very good then, but he knows what kind of fish are in there. And so do you, Z. If we hit it immediate pre-spawn, it should be a slug fest. It has been every time. Yeah. <laughs> All the times right. we've been there. Suge, <laughs> right. I, I, that is not breaking. Well, I know it's not breaking. The, it's the, just what the big he ones live in there. Right? He's saying there's a good chance for sensory build. I, really good. I think so. I do. I do. Especially when you hear grass is in good shape and the 10 People day touch it is there. It's, stable. It's nice. What's that? It doesn't seem like other than like where grass is important on lakes, a lot of people touch the grass and affect the grass. It doesn't seem like Seminole gets the pounding. Well, just messed with. People let it let it be at times and let let nature it's let it come. It's amazing how go. good a lake could be if you don't mess with the yeah, grass. Yeah, see? No. No kidding. And it's cool the history. I think Bowman was telling Steve Bowman on site, you see him on live mix with the anglers and stuff. He he was telling us a story, I think, about Jack Wingate's Lunker Marina Lunker. and the yeah. yeah, the the lodge there. And that that desk, you know, was a place that they wrote up different BASS ideas, Ray Scott and some other folks, sure. and did those things. And it was that's, a that's third. who he called when he was trying to find anglers for his very first tournament, yeah. way before the classic. And Seminole was the third event all time at, with, after Beaver and Smith. Yeah, very cool history. Oh yeah, whole areas, awesome. Well, there goes that trivia question. <laughs> what area is awesome? No, uh, yeah. Jack Wingate. And, uh, Does Seminole have big bass? That yeah. was the trick. Yeah. <laughs> when I was there, when I was there with Drew Benton, it, uh, it it was amazing though to still really to see the devastation from the the hurricanes yeah. that came through there. It was that whole area was they got hot. They really were, they were crippled in Which that area. Which one was for, that? It was the. Michael, we just did a feature on Drew Benton and the Panama City Beach yeah, region. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was he not, said no that one. Was a bad one. He said I don't, I don't leave for hurricanes. We don't do that. He said I should have left for that one probably. Mm. <laughs> well, we had a day today that yes, was unlike did. the two previous. At that all. is for sure. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> that is leveled. At least the top portion of our top ten, and only the top ten will fish tomorrow. Now. Who are those 10 going to be? That's the burning question. It will be solved starting about 3.30 Eastern time in half an hour. I think that guy right there is still in this thing. Oh, Clark yeah. Wenham. Yeah, Clark Wenham put himself in this thing. Absolutely. That last good one he caught. That drive back to weigh-in felt a lot better when you put a uh, put one like that in your last you, 10 casts of the you day. You know it. Indeed. Yes. Smokes. That's inside. off your leader, we'll Steve Kennedy, but we will see what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow will be coming your way on FS1, Fox Sports 1. The coverage commences at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on FS1, and we'll have coverage, continuing coverage on Bassmaster.com and the digital platforms throughout until very near the end of the day to weigh in tomorrow. Well, we'll decide it all. So great to have you with us today on Bassmaster Live, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Come.